Live? Yo, man. Yo, come on. Where is it? Yo, where is it? Hello. I see you on Twitch. What's up, baby? What's up, Twitch? How you living? Y'all doing good? Yo, why won't it show up on YouTube? <laughs> Yo, what's going on? Oh, there it is. Oh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Oh, I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen, well, then you're watching the recap. You're going to get an awkward one there in the beginning. Now I see you guys. Yeah, but Chattadonia, if you are watching the recap, uh, hopefully we see you here when we're live because we're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. If you like it, you could drop a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the live. But ladies and gentlemen, oh boy, we're coming off a big CPI day. You just had all of your bank earnings. There's a couple more. Yeah, you did not miss the bottom. That's what I was telling. I got a lot to show you, actually. If you missed yesterday's watch list, you might want to check that one out. Second link in the description. Bro, is, every, is my shit just loading slow today? But, oh, man, I have so much to show you. Uh, even then, where, where the market's at now, it's down about 1%. We are still at yesterday's levels. There was a bunch of different news all the way down from Tesla to even Apple and downgrades and upgrades. And then, obviously, the bank earnings. This one has been a very, very big one. So, Chad, we're going to see what happens here. I think we have a lot of discussion. It's not too bad just yet. Uh, there was more Japan stuff, too, and we're going to hear from that. Uh, pretty much Citibank is expecting by uh, end of this month that, uh, what's it called? Uh, they're going to abandon yield curve control. But there's also one thing out. There's one more thing I'm missing here today. I already told you about the Tesla, and then we'll have to see. Man, my, dude, my, everything's just spazzing right now. Import prices, and we have consumer sentiment at 10, but for the most part, it seems like earnings is the uh, big deciding factor that is getting some people a little bit spooked, even though they weren't that bad. And one thing you'll notice, most of them, I think, except Wells Fargo, uh, moved pretty much in line. So, Chad, I hope you're ready. I hope you're feeling good. And now, good morning. How are ya? Mm-hmm. Chad Adonia, good morning. Citibank was the only one that did good, and Wells Fargo did bad. Uh, it was all a mixed bag. I have the updates here right now. That's actually the first piece of news. Oh, good morning, Data Junkie. Good morning, Jake from State Far, baby. I hope you had fun yesterday. Shout out to Mr. Bliss. Oh, what's up, Lori? Good morning. Oh, what's up, Laker J? Uh, Dinosaur, Arturo, RB, Ashley, Howard, Joni. Oh, man, good morning. Bro, my thing is sketching out today, bro. So, Chad, your chats are coming in here. I need to – let me do a refresh. Everything is moving. Bro, the chat is moving like it's lagging. I see, like, five messages at a time. So, if I'm missing your good morning, baby, I hope you know you're blessed. Oh, bro, this is wild. There it is. There you go. Okay, no, no, no. Is it moving? Alaska. I see you, baby. What's up, Rice? What's up, King? Ricky, Bobby, Noel, yay, yay, Ari, all coming in hot, baby. Let's go. Good morning, baby. Good morning, Vazi, Samuel, Jim Barts. Okay, I kind of get in it. Tom Smith, Greg Cook, oh, Iman, Max Capital, Santiago. Good morning, baby. What's up, Kelvin? What's up, baby? Battleborn, the Forbes, S. Jones, Jex, Triple Three, Better Meta, Dispatcher, and Newman, Picky, all oh, I know we got Charlie in the tree in the house, too, baby. How y'all living, man? Oh, well, GG. BDA Cookie Monster. Good morning, man. Dr. Sway. Dr. Sway, baby. Ooh, Dr. Sway. That sounds so smooth. You know what I'm saying? That sounds so smooth. Pollos Hermanos. Good morning, my hermano. How you living? How you living, baby? So, Chad, let's have a good day today. I think we're going to have a lot to deal with. I don't know how bad or how good it will be uh, because I, let me, I hope this loads up. This better load up for me now. Bro, I'm telling you, Chad, if you did not watch the watch list, this is the, oh my gosh, this is like the most breaking piece of information we are going to go over all day. Wow, I could even make it really big so you don't miss it. Chad, I'm telling you, we are entering a very interesting time, and it's interesting to see the earnings, though, too. I think it's kind of giving a little bit of a reality check to market, uh, to markets, but even then, though, the question is, are they going to move more than they were priced in? So a lot of things could happen, but at the same time, uh, just keep in mind, given the, the run-up that we had, it is very, very big. Yeah, bro. No, I just, I woke up coughing today. I, I got I got my deep voice on today. You know what I'm saying? 
So if you like my deep voice, you better hit that like button. Okay, maybe that's what you could do. You could hit that like button. I haven't even given you anything to like the video yet, so don't worry. But, Chad, let's get to the news. Uh, J.P. Morgan, uh, they missed on investment banking revenue, and they also fell short on FICC and equity sales and trading. Uh, it'll resume stock buybacks this quarter, but they said this year's net interest income will be lower than analysts have expected. Share slip pre-market, city beat on sales and trading, uh, but they missed on equities and investment banking revenue. Uh, Bank of America reported an increase in net interest income and their traders beat estimates, and then Wells Fargo revenue fell short of consensus. Uh, Goldman's platform solution business, uh, that includes the company's Apple Card, lost $1.2 billion in the first nine months of 2022, uh, with the drop accelerating every quarter. Provisions totaled $942 billion. So I know Goldman, they didn't even drop that much, but that was one of the worst ones. And again, Wells Fargo didn't do good, but then Citi, I think they might still be up. And then the Japanese yen is ripping, but Citi's actually coming to break even here. Uh, futures slipped. The dollar was steady while 10-year treasuries rose. Stocks in Europe and Asia advanced as the benchmark of global equities headed for the biggest weekly gain since November. Oil and gold gained. Uh, BlackRock clients continue to pour money into their long-term investment funds last quarter. Net flows into the products totaled $146 billion for the period, beating the $124 billion consensus. Uh, total net flows, which include outflows from the firm's cash management, were $114 billion. The influx of client cash boosted assets under management to $8.59 trillion from $7.96 trillion at the end of September. Uh, Wall Street's leveraged debt machine is all clogged up, threatening a year of pain for banks and P.E. barons as a decade-long deal boom goes bust. Big banks are stuck with about $40 billion of risky debt on their books, blocking the M&A engine that has enriched bankers and P.E. executives over the past decade. Uh, U.S. equities are posed for a fresh slide of almost 10%. To 3,600, Bank of America said, before ultimately rallying to the 4,200 level in the second half. Goldman expects the S&P to end the year at 4,000, implying very little upside from the current level, but they warn investors should still prepare for a hard landing. Investors flock to bonds and cash and out of U.S. stocks before the CPI report, Bank of America said, citing EPFR global data. Uh, Tesla price cuts keep on coming. They slashed U.S. prices on their Model 3 sedan and Model Y SUV as much as 20% to allow more models to qualify for a new federal tax credit and juice demand in Europe. Markets include Germany, France, and Austria saw similar reductions. Meanwhile, Elon won't get help uh, from the head of the Saudi Arabia sovereign fund over claims he defrauded tech investors in 2018. Yasser al-Rumian argued he's not legally obligated to testify. He said, I can write you a check. But anything else, not my job. Uh, the SEC sued crypto brokerages Genesis and Gemini, saying that they illegally raised billions from hundreds of thousands of investors through Gemini Earn program, which amounted to offering unregistered securities. Co-founder Tyler Winklevoss said the program was regulated and the move was totally counterproductive. Digital asset exchange Crypto.com will shed 20% of its workforce, adding to its cuts it made last year. <clears throat> Uh, chart of the day, Tim Cook is getting a pay cut. His compensation will be reduced by more than 40% to $49 million this year after Cook himself requested it. The portion of his stock units tied to Apple's performance will be increased to 75% from 50, while his salary remains at $3 million and a bonus of $6 million with an equity award value of $40 million. Not so bad, mate. Mm -hmm. He's making a lot more, though. He was making like a third of that in 2019. You know, a lot of iPhones, a lot of iPhones, man. Uh, today, 8.30, you're going to get import prices. You already got that. 9.15, Fed Williams is speaking at a Wall Street Journal event. Uh, if it's hosted by Tim Morrow, that, that would be a good one. Uh, 10 a.m., January, University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment. Uh, 10 a.m., Fed Kishkari. 10.20, Fed Harker. Oh, wow, you got quite the schedule today for Friday the 13th. Ah! Uh, 1 p.m. Banker Bank Baker Hughes rig count, and then earnings. Uh, you already had all of them. Let's see what we got. Uh, the U.S. will avoid a recession this year as the Fed controls inflation, giving the stock market a boost, according to Ariel Investments co-CEO John Rogers. The Dow may rally 10% or more in 2023, and the S&P more than that. Rogers said. 
Uh, the debt ceiling is in sight. The government is roughly $78 billion away from their $31 trillion statutory limit, though analysts doubt there is a risk of defaulting until the second half. TD Securities predicted the Treasury's extraordinary measures may free up about $375 billion of breathing room. Uh, the U.K. economy may avoid tumbling in a recession later this year as consumers kept spending in November. Uh, GDP unexpectedly rose 0.1 at the statistics office. Uh, December's print would have fell 0.5 to deliver a contraction on the failing to deliver a contraction uh, for the fourth quarter. Germany's economy probably stagnated in the last quarter, easing fears of a recession. For the year as a whole, output increased 1.9, down from 2.6 in 2021, ahead of the 1.8 consensus. Uh, Czech elections see the first round of voting today to decide who will replace Milo Zeman. Uh, benchmark JBG yields fell back to 0.5 after the Bank of Japan conducted a second round of unscheduled bond purchases and five-year note auction met robust demand earlier. And the yield on the 10-year climbed briefly to 0.54 above the 0.5 cap on chatter about more tweaks to the yield curve control. Uh, Bank of Korea Governor Ri Chi Yong uh, didn't rule out the possibility of a further rate hike after today's decision to raise 25 basis points at 3.5. He also flagged the likelihood that the economy shrank last quarter. Uh, this year-on-year -year plunge in China exports widened at 9.9 last month from a revised 8.9. Uh, President Biden will discuss cooperation on limiting China's access to chip technology to visit Washington uh, in a visit to Washington by Japanese PM Fumio Kishida, followed by Dutch counterpart Mark Root on Tuesday. But no announcement or agreement will come during the visit, a person familiar said. Uh, China's COVID pivot pivot, uh, will boost oil demand by 800,000 barrels a day to a record 16 million barrels a day this year. A survey showed demand recovery may accelerate from the second quarter. Woodmax said Chinese buyers already started snapping up cargoes. China diesel and gasoline inventories dropped week on week as demand improved. Uh, the country is confident and will avoid energy shortages this winter after raising fuel production to a record level, 175 million tons. Power plants have ample inventories of coal, enough for 22 days of use. Uh, oil extended a weekly surge on China's improving demand outlook. Base metals mostly rose. Spot gold traded above 1,900 an ounce ahead of the fourth weekly gain. Corn held their biggest gain since September. Uh, ConocoPhillips is in talks for a deal that would pave the way to sell Venezuelan oil to the U.S. to recover close to $10 billion in debt it is owed by the country. Uh, United Health beat on profit and revenue and affirmed their growth in performance targets. Uh, Delta Airline forecasts first quarter short of estimates, dragging down the carrier share. Uh, Alibaba and Tencent fell as Chinese entities are set to take golden shares in units of the nation's top two internet firms. An arm of the Cyberspace Administration of China took a 1% interest in Alibaba subsidiary that runs the business such as Yoku and UC Web. Talks of a similar stake in Tencent are underway. Uh, Boeing 737 Max returned to commercial service in China after almost four years of absence. The China Southern Airline flight was the first since the model was grounded in 2019. Uh, Goldman lost $1.2 billion in nine months. Uh, United Health beat as insurance unit membership rose. Uh, Bank of America headcount jumps while Wells Fargo falls. Uh, Jamie Freed, Boeing 737 Max makes first passenger flight in China. And then Salesforce cut to neutral at Atlantic, price target 140. Uh, Lisa Marie Pet Presley, Elvis's only daughter and dedicated keeper of the legacy, died yesterday after being hospitalized for a medical emergency. She was 54, and she shared her father's brooding charisma, the hooded eyes and insolent smile, the sultry voice, and followed him professionally, releasing her own albums. Her four husbands included Michael Jackson and Nicolas Cage. Wow, four husband. I, she knows the life. She knows. Yalla. Uh The NFL's wild card weekend kicks off tomorrow with the 49ers against the Seahawks and Jaguars versus Chargers. Uh, the Bills are favorites against the Dolphins on Sunday uh, with City. Wait. And then English football highlights are the Manchester and North London debris uh, with City, United, Spurs, and Arsenal all sitting on top of the five Premier League places. In tennis, uh, the focus is on defending champ Rafael Nadar. Uh, Nadal, uh, Austrian Open starts Monday, and congratulations to Claire Lam Lombardelli, the OECD's new chief economist, a Brit. She's been working for the UK government since 2005, becoming the first female chief economic advisor in the Treasury after starting a career economist at the Bank of England. 
uh, the number of Irrawaddy dolphins in a stretch of the Mekong in central Cambodia has fell to 80 after three have died in December. A combination of anomaly illegal fishing in the lightly policed region and hydropower construction upstream are weighing heavily on the population. About 250 are alive globally with more dams planned. The future isn't bright. No, the dolphins. A new era of spending cutbacks in Hollywood may finally be impacting the number of TV shows in production. According to the head of Disney's uh, FX content, the industry released 599 adult-oriented scripted TV shows, a 7% increase from 2021, but output fell in the second half. Uh, and then on this day in history, the National Geographic Society was founded in 1888 when 33 explorers and scientists gathered at the Cosmos Club in Washington to organize a society to increase diffusion of geographical knowledge. It is now one of the largest nonprofit scientific and educational organizations in the world. National Geographic, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. In 1888, I did not know that, 1888, that sounds magnificent, 1888, so Chad, we got a couple of pre-market movers, uh, I'm clapped, so I'm not going to read them that much, I'm just going to tell you, Amazon down 2.1, Apple down 0.9, and again, I think they're getting, these are all like downgrades, I'm pretty sure every single one is a downgrade, uh, Bank of America, City, that is all earnings, Haynes brand, oh, don't get me, damn it, why did I click on anything? I don't know. Hades Baron, I might want to trade it, but I hope you guys saw that one. They literally gave uh, early guidance to their earnings uh, and very, very good signs. Uh, again, inventory that was killing them. They sold that. Uh, and then they said that their revenue is going to be above the top end of their previous guidance. Uh, Jasper rose 36% on findings of Bricolamanab. Well tolerated in patients. JP Morgan earnings. Uh, NGM Biofarm sourced 14% after they found out their largest uh, shareholder bought 3 million shares. Uh, Salesforce, uh, they're down, I think, uh, 2% after a downgrade. Tesla falls 6% after cutting prices. Uh, Space rises 16% after they said the company planned upgrades of VMH e VMH VMS Eve are completed to the mothership. Uh, Warner is downgraded down 2.6. Wendy's. Uh, declines 1.3 as they're getting a shakeup as their finance chief departs. And then Wells Fargo falls 4.7 after missing revenue. Ba -da -ba 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 so Chattadonia, it's going to be an interesting day. We're going to see what happens here with the earnings. Uh, and then overall, again, China and Europe did good. Seems like we're getting a little bit of a hangover. But the real question is, do we give up the levels of yesterday? So right now, you're pretty much at the first level of lows uh, when we hit the first candles. So we'll see what it is, but we're still kind of high. I think it'll be an interesting one. We might have a range. Uh, maybe I'll go on the SPX and show you. But Chad, get ready for the day. It is Friday the 13th. It's okay, though. You know why? Because I don't want to act all high and mighty. Because tomorrow I might fall down on my face. So I thank you for sunshine. I'm like, okay, hey, I'm going to butcher it with these voice crap. That's it. They, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I love you, Chad. God bless you. Good morning. I hope you're feeling good. And let's have a good day. Let's have a good day. God bless you all, baby. Thank you for rain. Thank you for joy. Thank you for pain. Oh, man. Hit me with it, baby. It is about the speed right, I love y'all. I love y'all. It's more about the right destination. Back. And there is a real disagreement between Wall Street and the Fed on the destination. Now, this week we've heard from Susan Collins, Patrick Harker, Tom Barkin, and Jim Bullard. And while they disagree on the speed, they're all saying the same thing about the destination. Take a look at what Harker and Bullard had to say yesterday. We need to get rates above 5%. How far above? We'll let the data dictate that. And the median dot said the policy rate would be somewhat above 5% at the end of 2023. That's that's what the Fed thinks. But take a look at what the market thinks. The market thinks the Fed isn't going to get to 5%. The Fed's forecast is 5.12% if you want to use the median dot from December. Uh, the outline there is where the market thinks the median is going to be. And that is not the same number. Uh, the market is also pricing in rate cuts for next year. Uh, the battle is going to be over the next couple of months. Is inflation going down fast enough or is the economy turning badly enough 
that we need to see rate cuts. Jeff Gunluck, double line, uh, said there's no way the Fed's going to 5%. The Fed's not in control. The bond market is in control, to which uh, Minneapolis Fed Neil Kashkari this week in the New York Times had this rejoinder. They're going to lose the game of chicken. I can tell you that. <laughs> so this is going to be fun to follow as the year goes on. Well, we'll keep following it. But Mike, I guess at this point, what's the disagreement really over? Inflation? That the market seems to believe that inflation is going back towards target quicker than some of these Fed officials? Well, there seem to be two camps. One agrees with that theory, that uh, inflation is coming down faster and the Fed will not have to react. And the other is that the Fed is going to push us into recession and therefore they're going to have to cut rates. Now, the problem with the first argument is even if inflation comes down, if the rest of the economy is doing fine, the Fed would not have to cut rates immediately. And they don't really want to. They'd like to keep rates higher uh, for longer because they got down to zero for so long and had few tools to fight recession. So if they can, as somebody put it yesterday, normalize. I hadn't heard that term in a while. <laughs> normalize rates to the 3 to 4% rate. Normalize it, happy. baby. I think we've forgotten what normal is. Mike. We forgot about it. So, Jed, give me your place. I'll give you mine. And then we're going to go over something really quick. I'm fascinated by it. I love it. I love it. But, Jay, what do you got here for the morning? And I hope you're feeling blessed. I hope you're ready to go. We're about to end the second week, baby. Outlet. Outlet. What's your first play of the day, baby? What you got? Abby Vi calls. XLV push. Meta push. Tesla short. Drop the beast mode, short silver, SPXS calls, Amazon puts, Tesla puts, spy calls, UNH calls, spy puts, UVXY zero day. Okay, you got it like that. You better get that long term 10%. JPM calls, Etsy calls, child support recovery. That means Tesla. He's talking about Tesla. Okay, come on, keep it serious, but he's talking about Tesla. SQQ, commodities looking real bouncy, still in QQQ puts, Tesla puts, Citibank, watching Tesla, Uber long, short CRF, watching Tesla, Airbnb puts, Google put, UVXY, spy puts, HBI, QQQ, Tesla, monthly calls, holding Tesla 118 puts, he uh, bonds, <laughs> uh, EN and base calls, short Microsoft, get back on D, baby. Let's go. Is the ES scalp going up and down? Scalping, uh, calls on calls. I just realized you bought BBBY. Oh, good luck. Good luck, baby. Good luck. Tesla puts scalp UVXY six six dollars zero days. A lot of zero dayers out there. PDDD BBBY BBBY short squeeze BBBY puts debatable one. Spy puts is the ES going to go up or down? Disney put to protect my Disney lawn. BBBY squeeze my lawn term, baby. Buy weekly paycheck. Watching the bonds. Amen. Tesla lawn UUP puts long on JP Morgan. Peloton short chilling. AAL February puts good morning, Chaz. Amen, baby. Hey, man, Tesla puts, Mulan, Sox calls, Bank of America puts, Boeing puts, Spy 400 calls, He's and CVX calls, nothing at all, nothing at all, TQQ puts, watching the fall, got me my gold shirt, watching it ball, nothing at all, nothing at all, uh, QQQ puts, you wait, yeah, good morning, I'm here for the vibes, baby, let's do it, add into the long term, short the Australian dollar and the New Zealand, uh, I don't know what they call it in New Zealand, uh-huh, amen, 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 amen. Amen. Let's go, baby. Uh, and I think that's it. I think we've only had to reborn one person. So if your chats don't show up, be reborn. We love you still. It's okay. One day you'll show up here ready to go, and it's fine. That's good. I'm ready. And, Chad, this is what I want to show you. I'm 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 fascinated by it. Bro, my computer is, is Friday the 13th out today, man, because this shit is not like, bro, my thing is lagging so hard today. I feel like I'm on AOL dial-up. This is crazy. All right, you see this though? I brought this up on the watch list, and I'm telling you, this is the it makes this is the craziest thing. It's either Powell is gonna hammer us down at one point, but even if he doesn't, I hope you guys get what this chart means. It kind of makes sense to that game of chicken and what the bonds are showing. You've got mail, <laughs> but think about it right here is pretty much even if they don't get to 5%, even if the Fed doesn't get to 5%, if everybody is expecting inflation to really, really drop like we've been seeing, it would literally bring the real rates up to over 2%. AKA, you know that chart James Bullard was showing with about going into restrictive? Yeah, that's what this is showing you, but at a crazier level. So it's saying that if inflation really does drop and the Fed just keeps the rates high where they're at right now and inflation drops, the market is going to bring you in a restrictive, not Powell. It's pretty wild. 
Again, you haven't had a real rate of 2% in a long time. And now the next debate is how long can the market last a real rate of 2% before getting clapped. So I'm telling you, this right here is a, it's like a dream scenario, but not really. Because now the question is, how is the market going to react if it brings itself into restrictive? And now we're going we're gonna to be dealing with something pretty wild. I'm telling this is new. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to think about over the last year or so, we've dealt with so many things. We've talked about inflation, following the rates, following this, following that. But more so now, this will probably be one of the bigger themes that we're going to deal with here throughout the rest of the year. In a weird way, as inflation comes down, we may start to get a different reaction. So it's going to be wild, man. It's going to be wild. And, bro, Luke, you see how slow this is? I pressed go down. I'm still waiting for it. I'm still waiting for it, man. This is crazy. This is crazy. But Chattadonia, you know what time it is. You know how we get down here. You know we got love. I hope you got love. I hope you got peace, man. I hope you're thankful for sunshine. Thankful for pain. Thank you for joy. I think I messed it up already. But Chattadonia, you know who I'm thankful for, man? Every single day. Every single day, it is the veterans of the United States of America, the people who have sacrificed. They've given up a lot, man, even to the families, and it's the least we could do before we do anything, man, is for real. Give a big shout-out to all the veterans, active servicemen, past servicemen, anyone who served this country, man. God bless you and thank you for your service. And to add to it, man, anybody serving their local community. I know all of you could do it in many ways. Some people do it, some people don't, but I just want to say shout out to you and thank you, man, if you are serving your community, whether it's nonprofit, helping people out, coaching a sports team, all the doctors, the nurses, the teachers, the firefighters, the police officers, anybody out there, man, for real, God bless you and thank you for doing what you have done. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Place your right hand over your heart. Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby. Such the Jets! Oh, it's game time, baby. Oh, nah, let's go. <laughs> let's go, baby. Tatadonia, where is that? <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? You ready for a good morning? Oh, you feeling blessed? Oh, man, don't let me yell. If I yell, I'm going to start getting the voice crack. But if I don't yell... I need, I need a, ooh, I need a hello, welcome, 101.5 to call, baby. Oh, I got it. I could do that easy. Yeah, you know what else I could do? <laughs> it sucks, I tell you, my my voice is ready. I don't know, I won't voice it. If I talk like this all day, it would be fine. Here, I got a couple plays. I remember watching J.P. Morgan, uh, City Group, the banks. We got to stop the big banks, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it for earnings. And then Tesla and then United Health, I like it. I love healthcare. We're gonna spring the insulin down. And then Netflix, they came down and met. I want to see if they underperform. And then uh, obviously the end. And then Boeing. Hey, I don't have any cracks like this, huh? It's weird. Thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Are y'all ready? Y'all feeling good? Well, yeah, how much time we got? Oh, wow. Chad, only 45 seconds. Again, honestly, we might make a couple of plays on these earnings, so keep that in mind. J.P. Morgan, City's doing the best. Uh, J.P. Morgan's in the middle. See if they break down. You also have Delta Airlines. And then uh, also keep in mind, uh, what's it called? UNH. I really, really like that one. Mm-mm. mm Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hold on, where is it? 20 seconds, Chad. You're blessed, baby. Welcome to the second Friday. Welcome to the second Friday, baby. Welcome to the second Friday. 
Uh, Bank of America beat, but they didn't do as good. Oh, dang. HBI selling, bro. He was at 870. I don't buy the bearish sentiment. <laughs> Round one. Fight. Yeah, that's why you want to see if they move a lot. Again, I just know most of the banks are pricing in like 5 to 10% move. So it's kind of like uh, what we saw with the CPI. Just some things aren't moving in the same way. So it's like the banks are borderline doing good. And remember what we said on the watch list yesterday. Watch for the bonds to kind of use the any downside for the bonds to kind of catch up because they were lagging over the last couple of days. We're going to keep it on pre-market. We'll see you and eight. Spy down 0.8. NASDAQ falls 0.9. It's a pretty big gap down for the opening, but you're at yesterday's level. And remember, uh, 10 a.m., 30 minutes after the bell, we're going to get a little bit more data. And then don't forget, airlines also had earnings. Let's see. City's coming down. City was green earlier, but they dropped. Bank of America is starting to rise out of all the banks. And then Goldman. I feel like Goldman won't go up. Yeah, Goldman is probably going to be the one that gets dumped on. Uh, I would say Bank of America and then City Dip could be decent ones here if you want to go for them. And then again, UNH, they like they had some bad areas, but overall they beat top and bottom. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 1.07, let me see. Netflix is melting. Oh, my computer is so slow. I'm all, wow, melting up? Was that, is that what you meant? Old drip coming in. Yeah, I don't know. That don't look like it's... I can't even load up a trade even if I wanted to right now. Damn. I don't know what happened to my computer today. It's Friday the 13th. Baba, Baba had a lot of news. China, again, that golden shares thing. Yeah, I'm trying to load up. I already missed my trade. Low key. We are reaching the heart of winter. What does that mean? Yo. No, <laughs> I'm trying. It did this before. It, it like eventually we'll just start working. Will this work? Yeah, look at I press buy on anything. It won't load. They hate me. HD running. Well, the Sig B, I know I like it, but at least the charts are loading up there. Uh, Netflix coming down. I'm going to go back here to the banks. Uh, JP Morgan, not bad. I'm going to check out those options. Again, I'm pretty sure the banks are all pricing in like 5%. Tesla's down 5.9 at open. Apple leading, Baba high of the day. Watch UNH and then a CFA uh, again. I'm going to check Bank of America. They're kind of holding up there. I haven't even checked any of the other tech stocks. Apple's down point, point 0.9. Meta's, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Now they're all loading. So it takes me about three minutes to load up a trade order for now. It's good. I have to heat it up in the morning, you know? That's how we used to do the Honda. You turn it on and you have to let it sit there for a little. It needs to heat up, Habibi. It needs to heat up. Wells Fargo, Meta is starting to go up here. Again, bonds are holding the same quarter, uh, 0 0.7 on SPY and Dow, or SPY and NASDAQ, 0 0.5 on the Dow. Novatum, Glutamine, got FDA tentative non. JP Morgan concludes earnings. Wells Fargo's dumping now. Bank of America is selling off now. JP Morgan's done with their conference call. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Mm-mm. Apple starting to go uh, HBI. There you go, HBI. Yeah, a lot. And then UNH still a little bit on the low. Tesla kind of. I mean, they recovered 2% there. It's so sad. They were ready to go above 124 the other day. I don't know why they're playing with this. Coca-Cola selling off. Uh, check some of the staples. And then XLI, XLU, they're all down. Everything's down. Again, consumer staples are the best. And then energy's number two. And then financials, real estate, and discretionaries are the worst on the day. t Row dumped. Roblo is coming up. KBW Bank Index falls 1.6 at open after first round of earnings. Oh, yeah, for, bro, Netflix has earnings. That's what you got to keep in mind now. Now that bank stocks are over, I mean, remember, next Thursday, you're going to have a couple days here. And then Monday is closed, too. I forgot about that. Monday is closed on the market. Apple is coming up. JP Morgan now is ripping. Yeah, JP Morgan is still down, too, though. Yeah, HBI. He should be at 870. 870, Habibi. Mm -mm. Microsoft flush. Uh, They're doing a little worse than Apple, but not too bad. Apple just recovered half. And then Wells Fargo falls 5.5 after earnings, the most since June. Amdizzle, Navidil. Navidil's holding up. Phase is on the high. JD, Baba, China names are starting to run. And then JP Morgan again. JP Morgan with a big candle. But still down 2%. It looks so big, but it's not. Tesla flushing. NVIDIA is still high. They're they're holding some of their gains. Yeah, Tesla gave up that little high there. Amazon's starting to move again. Uh, Amazon's doing better than Apple. And then literally, we haven't done anything, and then bonds are starting to go. Thank you for rain. So again, this is the low of yesterday, and then the 3955, and then we're going to have to deal with 3960, but you're pretty much in like the middle Low point of yesterday. So this is where you were in the first 15 minutes and honestly the first hour. The market looks pretty stable so far. I think everyone's just getting through all the earnings right now. There's a little bit of an earnings hangover. Manu pop. Again, yeah, 2.7. Dude, this thing keeps going. Yeah, the yen is going crazy. That's nice. Even the bonds too. So we'll take it. Manu exclusive, UTD takeover bids imminent. Manchester United. Apple, not bad. Spy's coming down here, though. Again, real estate, financials, consumer discretionary, and utilities are the worst. Surprisingly, tech is in the middle, but it's still down almost 1%. Yeah, Tesla just flipped that back to down 6 there, big pop on bonds. Interesting. What if we go down and bonds go up? It's almost there because pretty much now, if bonds go green on the day, we'll get it. But, I mean, we did talk about this on the watch list. However, I don't know. We'll have to watch it in terms of velocity because I don't know how it'll how it'll start looking. Because you're borderline about to get the bonds up, stocks down. This is so awful. <laughs> I 
I have no idea what's happening. Vic Slow, Friday the 13th. I'm trying to put it in order. We selling PRV. What's wrong with you today, Jeremy? You just talking out your ass for no you just you out here? Come on, bro. Calm, calm down. Don't put that on me, bro. Don't put that on me. Netflix to the high. Man, some of y'all woke up with that Friday the 13th energy. I don't know what. Everything is fine, bro. What do you mean? Everything been chilling. Okay, I bought 25 shares of UNH. That that took me a long time, bro. That took me a long time. I had to go through shipping and handling. So, again, they had good earnings there. Netflix is rocketing. So, wait, why did it fill me that high? I don't even know what it filled me at. I'm up on it somehow. 49264. Little scammers. 25 shares. Four nine two six four. It worked. I mean, even if there was slippage there, I'm up. I'm already up two bucks a share on it. But then the bid spread very, very big. HKD going, FTSE pop. Again, uh, Asia and uh, what's it called ended up doing good. Asia and the other one did very, very good. Asia and Europe. Yeah, utilities, industrials are not doing good today. Staples are doing good, and then discretionaries are down. Bonds are kind of chilling out. Yeah, you and I already got four bucks a share on that one. That one was nice. And then now it's going negative to positive. I hope it can get a little bit crazy here. Off of the post earnings. So we will see. Nice pickup. It only took me like seven minutes to execute an order. That was kind of cool. I felt like I was back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Where you have to like phone in your order. And like I felt like I was on hold. And then I had to like call somebody. And then I had to wait. And then that's it. Bank of America sees affluent customers shifting to high-yielding products. Hey, yo, shout out HBI, son. <laughs> Bank of America, they're not doing too bad. UNH is starting to run now. Uh, yeah, Humana could be a good sympathy, any of the other insurance ones. I'm just hoping UNH just does its thing now with the earnings. And then SPY coming down to the low, down 0.87 on NASDAQ and even 0.85 on the S&P. And then Dow is uh, only down 0.5. I bought some Hanes. I'm going to go to Walmart this weekend and buy some underwear. Just because, like, their inventory situation's chill. They came down. I said, you know, let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to help them out. They did good. I was uh, very impressed with HBI. I got my cold sweats there. Let's go, baby. Let's go. It's perfect time. Perfect time. The weather, you know, is good for you. It hangs on. Bro, the spy is just in the middle. I don't know. We've seen. What day was this? We saw this not too long ago, I feel like. I think it was right here. What day was that? Tuesday? It looks almost a lot like Tuesday right now. We're just chilling at this level. You spent almost the first 15 minutes doing nothing. We we're selling pre-market because of uh, the bank earnings and then a lot of individual news there uh, with like Tesla going down and then the currencies are kind of all over the place and a little bit of the a little bit of the hangover effect. But I would just say all the bank stocks kind of underperforming or just not doing as good as uh, a lot of people would have hoped. And then bonds. Consumer sentiment, yeah, that's in 15 minutes, actually. I think it's rotation. I think it's a little, it just it's just like yesterday. It's like these moves are still tiny. You got to realize 
anything holding up the top here is decent. So until we get like a fat 2% move, I just think it's nonsense. Everything is kind of just like it's it's kind of testing people, keeping them slow and all of that. Yeah, Disney is coming down. What's your standpoint? Are you bullish or no? I'm still the same way. I'm that's why I like I didn't sell anything out except, you know, we took I'm going little by little taking shares, but I think we're eventually going to get clapped. So, but then at the same time, I think with earnings and everything else, I think it's still going to create, you know, we could go as high as we want until Powell. So, or until we get some sort of update, but really just playing the macro event and, you know, going off what's important. And then, you know, I like my balance here, but overall, I think we have a little bit more bullishness. We're going to get a lot of downside and then we're going to see where Fed futures, bonds and policy is at. But really, I think it's all about the bonds bonds fed futures and this game of chicken uh between the fed and the bond market and i i and then or obviously today you're kind of watching the earnings effect and i would keep that in mind but i i think those three aspects uh just could tell you a lot of this story and we could position accordingly and i i think we're gonna get a uh i think we're gonna get a nice year of another year another year of macro And then keep some money for the long term and then buy some good O's. Buy some O's. Go buy some, uh, you said excited for O. Buy some good, I mean, O is a good one, but buy some good dips. BlackRock, Larry Fink says optimistic about 2023. It's a beautiful day. Eh, 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 eh. Yeah, we actually have a lot of Fed speakers today. But, 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 uh, Monahan, Bank of America, expects to pay higher rates as cycle continues. JP has recovered a lot. Bro, Netflix's earnings melting right now up. So our, what's it called? Our five shares are going to hurt us. We're down 35 bucks now, 37. That, that's doing the earnings melt. Because remember, they're going to be next week. And then we have Monday off, so you're going to come back two days ahead of uh, Netflix earnings. <laughs> Friday the 13th, <laughs> trading fraternity drinking game. One sip every time Josh says game of chicken. Two sips every time he does the Biden voice. You guys are drinking water, right? That's because that's it. I don't. You know, I don't think I've ever traded while drinking before. I don't know. I know some of y'all do that. I don't, or maybe you just try to sound edgy on the internet. <laughs> I've never, I've never done that. I've never done that. So I don't know how that, how that would play out. It's a beautiful day. A, 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 A. All right, man. We're getting more rip here on a uh, damn uh, UNH. That was a nice pickup, bro. We got it just in the nick of time, but it could it could come down a little bit. BlackRock says investors will rebalance into bonds. So again, bonds are going up nice. It's beautiful. So we're break even on the bonds for the day. The yen again, it's still doing. This is actually a way better day in a weird way. I'll take it. Bank of America sees net charge offs move to pre pandemic levels. Mm. Larry Fink is on CNBC right now for an interview. Netflix came down. Futu, Pinduo Duo, China names are running. Tesla. I'm conflicted on Tesla because it's like wh this reminds me of old Elon. Like if you don't remember back in the dude, Tesla used to always do this where they just have like ridiculous. I mean, again, I have two Teslas with free charging for life. So it's like one thing is like kind of what they do with their pricing model. But then another thing where it's like, you know, 
they will be lowering prices for the taxes and then you know you know as everybody is still raising prices you would think some people would be happy about them lowering it but uh, I just think you know I don't know can I relate owning Tesla stock to having kids I feel like I'm getting my experience with child support here and other things 3860 you're breaking above the top candle now I believe the yen is hitting a new high again so that's running great oh wow double double greens bro though we might where's the next range it might chill out here otherwise the yen is going to shoot up to 0 0.8 0 0.008 and then bonds are running now too maybe the spy catches up with it but that's kind of starting to look green good uh, good or green yeah the yen is uh pretty much yesterday uh the it went the yield curve it, the they, the bond somehow traded above the band of 0.5 but then uh everybody's been talking about it now every they're about to abandon yield curve control it's pretty much going to happen as soon as next month most people are saying so they're going to ban abandon yield curve control let the market now trade at a normal range or kind of more market impulses and then it makes sense for people to uh you know, really buy in the yen and then also repatriate other stuff. Trump company sentenced to pay about 1.6 million for fraud. Yeah, Hanny, see what they want for it. I mean, I did it. I didn't look deep into it. I literally, I looked at it like what, five in the morning. I just looked real quick and uh, it seemed the best part is it's off market. So we could do something with it, but that's, and that's your deal, baby. But it just now the valuation and now the higher price properties we got to be a little bit more conservative in the sense that one, it's going to be harder to sell for other people and it's also going to have more costs. But if we get that at the right price, it's money. MGO Global indicated open at 679, IPO priced at five. And drop EC because they were devaluing the yen, but they're stopping to make sense. Yeah borderline that's that's an easy way because it's not as if the yield curve control directly weakened the yen but as a it, it was part of it was a result of trying to control your yield curve right they kept the, you know they remove demand they keep issuing they buy stuff and issue bonds to make sure it stays at a certain bound Pretty much it was them stimulating their economy. And now they're not stimulating if they abandon it. And then that would make sense for the yen to come up. So the beauty is, Jad, if you've been following the yen, we've literally been so ahead of it that all we do now is, is we're going to ride this shit for the rest of the year. <laughs> like, I don't know if y'all feel me, oh, bro. We got to short it from these moments all the way down. We got to go long around this little bubble. And that's it. We're just because, like I told you, it's a safe haven. I mean, and remember we had that one day where I explained the yen where I was just saying, listen, I'm mad I didn't put in a hundred grand. I really am. But if we get one big drop I, and, and things change, I will. But uh, you remember what we said, just I told you when this thing starts running, it is going to be Frankenstein. And that is, is, is that's the thing about the yen. It's a safe haven. And once it regains those traits, oh, it's going to go crazy. Yeah, man. Come on. Yeah. Hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed if you heard about the yen, baby, or show some love. I don't. I was asking y'all yesterday to show some love, and y'all really did, so I appreciated it. So God bless y'all if you're holding it down, man. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the subscriptions, Chattadonia. Let's go. Uh, we've been buying yen futures, uh, or you could go for YCL. That's another play. We're even in that one. I don't know if it's on here. Cause it's a beautiful day. Eh, 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 eh. Damn, YCL is up four hundred bucks now. Yeah, but that one's decent. This is uh, like an ETF. It's a uh, Pro Shares Ultra, and like I even said on this one, it had a lot of upside. But really, you should have been buying. We, I wish I bought more of it on the dips here. I just, you know, I bought in so low. I don't want, I don't want to keep averaging up into the yen when we we we're just we're riding it very well. You mean YSL? You been singing that song, dude. I just love it. Like I just love the feeling of the song, and I just, amen. I just, I vibe with it too heavy, bro. Not go, bro. I was taking the dump, and I was just listening to it. 
on like so there was like a remix and on like that I just kept listening to it on repeat yesterday, bro. It just makes me smile. That's it. And I just I just go finger to the sky, bro, for real. For real. Like it's just like, bro, I don't want to act all high and mighty cause tomorrow I may fall down on my face. So I thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. Thank you for joy. Thank you for pain. That's it, bro. It's a beautiful day. Eh, 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 eh. That's, dude, that's it, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that little Jamaican kid, and I'm mad, though. I'm really pissed off because there's everyone's doing these, like, remixes of it, and you're seeing it, but it's like that mother, like, how are we going to get that kid paid? That kid deserves to get every dollar off of that playback, bro. For real. We need us. Can we find him? If y'all can find the kid, can we pay him? And let's let's make sure, like, I'll get him the lawyer. We'll, we'll copyright it for him. Because you know some stupid-ass mother effer going to be copywriting it and all. Like, that kid needs all of that shit, bro. And that is, like, it is such a banger. YCL. So right when we talk about James Pierre, blah, 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 blah. JP Morgan, he's older now. Oh, is he? Let's find it for him. Someone's like, it's Sean Kingston now. <laughs> that was Sean Kingston 20 years ago. What? That is crazy. No, what? That's really Sean Kingston. Uber. Uber, Tesla. Oh, okay, Tesla. I don't even know. Lil Vicious. His name is Lil Yachty. What? That was Kanye when he was little. <laughs> I want to know. I feel like I just, I love it, bro. I love it. It's a beautiful day. Eh, 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 eh. You're lying. Well, Delta had earnings. Nvidia is positive. Damn. Netflix ghost story is dead. We'll find out, man. Don't worry. Till Thursday. I still like Netflix, but I mean, you know, we're up like 40% since we bought it. So I don't think downside is ruled out of the question. But I guess the, the moral of the story is that you you won't kill Netflix that easy. So it may die, but, uh, you know, and we'll see. But I don't I don't think that's I don't think it's going to happen as fast as people think. Uh, but then again, if they have one more solid quarter, then it'll be money. City's running. JP Morgan's about to go positive, half a percent. Oh, yeah, two minutes till consumer sentiment. Shit. Good call, good call, good call. Borthwick says Bank of America net interest benefiting from rates. NVIDIA's rocketing. So, Chad, uh, we got one minute here till consumer sentiment. I don't know, though. Low-key, I don't, unless, in a weird way, I don't know if the market's going to react the same way. We just had CPI, and it was, unless it's like a big, if it comes in in line, I don't know how big of a reaction we'll get. Bank of America, Clifford, it looks like all the banks are kind of even moving, too. Yeah, but Bank of America looks a little bigger. 45 seconds. They say they expect modest loan growth and increased funding costs. Bank of America CFO. Thirty seconds. So I don't know. Maybe we get a big data move. I want to see something big. We're not really running. We're still down half a percent. I mean, in the whole week, this was actually one of the more bigger gap downs we've experienced. 
So remember that one time we were down, we ended up shooting up on Powell Day. We were down 0.9, but we opened up like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So you were just down 0 0.9, and now we're down 0 0.5. But, uh, oh, yeah, and 5 to 10-year expectations rose from 2.9 to 3, but then one-year inflation expectations dropped to 4%, uh, and then consumer sentiment beat all across the board. Good, like very strong data. So 64.6 versus 60.7. Uh, 68.6 versus 60 on current conditions. Expectations were 62 versus 59. A one-year inflation dropped by 0.3, which is kind of big, from 4.4. But then five to 10-year went back up to three. So I'd say, I would honestly say neutral. I would just say it's borderline neutral. I don't even know how I feel about this in a weird way. I wasn't really expecting too much, but if the market wants to take it positive, they can. But at the same time, you might be able to flip. Don't forget about good news, bad news, but this will, this will kind of be a test. And then Bonds even reacted to that. That's what I'm saying. Good news might be good news, but it could also be good news, bad news. We'll find out. I'm, I'm taking it initially neutral here. But I need to go pee now. It's been a, been a long morning so far. They're talking about Tesla. All right, follow me on Instagram, at the trading fraternity. I love you. It's into the U.S. Trading Day Friday, January 13th. Here are the top market stories we're following for you at this hour. Banks, planes, and cars. Earnings officially kick off. So far, not pretty. Banks drop as it gets harder to make money. Delta warns of higher labor costs. And prep for a hard landing. Goldman Sachs says hope for the best, profit more if you invest for the worst. We're going to speak to Peter Oppenheimer, Goldman Sachs Chief Global Equity Strategist. And happy birthday to Guy. Go ahead, buy a Tesla. Mm -hmm. Tesla cuts prices on cars by as much as 20% just in time for Guy's birthday. From New York, I'm Alex Steele with my co-host in London, Guy Johnson. Welcome to Bloomberg Markets. And Guy, by my calculation, if I gave you $1,000 yeah. for every year you've been alive, you could now afford a Model Y. Congratulations with that price cut. That, that's, that's some complicated mathematics you've been, you've been up to there. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to point out that my birthday is tomorrow, not today. Friday the 13th, probably not the day to have a birthday. I'm sure it's somebody's birthday out there today. Happy birthday to whoever it is. Uh, the markets, um, I think Alex, are having a fairly mixed day today. I, it, I'm sure it's the banks. I'm sure it's the bank's guidance that nobody likes today. I don't think the Tesla price cut is helping though. Uh, yeah, also I have to say the S&P failed at the 200-day moving average yesterday. I, you yep. know, you never like that, and it's a long weekend here in the U.S., so you're not going to want to take on a lot of risk. But all that said, we are well off the lows. We had some breaking data just in the last few. Let's talk about that. My takeaway from the University of Michigan numbers, and I'll be interested to get Mike McKee's take, is the consumers like lower inflation. Mike, give me the numbers. Well, as uh, our former vice president of the United States, Dan Quayle, once said, happy campers you are, happy campers you will be. Uh, it looks like people do like lower inflation and the fact that it appears that growth was reasonably strong in the fourth quarter because we get the Michigan overall sentiment number jumping significantly to 64.6 from 59.7. That's well above the 60.7 that was forecast. And we see that current conditions and expectations rise. Current conditions up almost 10 points to 68.6 from 59.4 and expectations are at 62 from 59.9. Uh, when you look at household finances, 31 percent, an increase from December. Think increase. that they are going to be better. 25 percent. Well, Bank of America got clapped on the CFO comments. The same in the year and more people, 27 percent, think they will have higher incomes. So they're feeling better about their personal financial situations. Now, the inflation aspect of it, uh, this is the interesting one uh, because uh, so much drives their perceptions. But the news has been good and one year inflation expectations dropped to 4 percent from 4.4 percent, a significant drop in inflation expectations over one year. The five to 10 year number is down to is uh, ticks up a little bit to 3% from 2.9%, but that's a, a little bit less worrisome. It's a little harder to see exactly what uh, is, is driving that. Uh, should say that the uh, one-year inflation expectation, the lowest since May of 2021. Uh, the thing that really drives people's perceptions of inflation, gasoline prices, uh, we talked about this mm. yesterday, I think, on, on your uh, radio program. Interesting. So again, I think the data, I don't know, I'm, I'm just neutral on it, considering what we had to deal with yesterday. And then now like this whole 
naturally restrictive to the market. It's going to be interesting. Bonds are coming down now, but I think this is just going to allow things to match up. If we're going to be both, if both of these are going to be red a little bit. Hold me back. Them daily spies calling me. That sound like a rap song. Um, but did they, uh, I have a question. Did you save 10%? And did you put that away first? Because if it's your 90%, do what you want. You know, I'm not here. You know, I am not your savior. I'm just here to tell. I'm the 10% guy, bro. I'm just like your accountant. You know what I'm saying? I'm just here to remind you. I'm like, hey, bro, you could do whatever you want. You made the money, but I'm just saying, did you put away 10% just in case? What happens if your NBA career don't really hit like that? What if you get injured? You know what I'm saying? It's not after tax. It's ahead of tax. Why would we pay somebody else before ourselves, sir? Doesn't make any sense. Uh-huh. That's all we got to do, bro. I got you do that. We good, man. That's all. You know. Okay, we're going up. Tesla's running now. Wow, that's amazing. Bank of America expenses should come down. Again, healthcare is the leader on the day. Bro, we got like 12 bucks a share on uh, damn UNH. That was a nice one. I think there's like another 10 bucks left in it, but I'm tempted to take it. Somebody sell out before me, so it just keeps running. I don't want to do that again. I already know what's going to happen. Let me see how the fun bunch. <laughs> Mm. It's still early. Y'all ain't gonna do it. Oh wow, my shit loads now. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, I'm out. I took three fifty five. That's me right there. I got y'all. I got that was nice, bro. Twelve bucks a share off the open. I kept it small because I didn't know if I could even load anything up. Yeah, the Honda's warmed up now. That's why I was telling y'all it's fine now. It's fine. There you go. There you go. See, not bad, not bad. No, no risk. There was risk, but no time risk. You know, very, very good. That's a beautiful day. It'll come down a little bit. I think it can still go up a little bit more because if it wants to fill all these gaps, bro, I think it could go all the way up to like 510, 518, or no, like 515, 516 ish. But I'm happy with 12, $13 a share. And then healthcare is the leader on the day. The news on Boeing will probably be China, the China test flight. They let puts print. I mean, in general, the thing that's been we're we, we're gonna change we're changing pace. That's what I think the problem is is that we're going from these really big days to now the last couple of days have slowed down. So it's either gonna speed back up or not. But granted, I will say kind of how when you move like this slow and then it speeds up, it's like this is starting to set up in the earning season. Did Uber come back up? No. Well, now we're down 40 bucks on the Netflix. That thing is still squeezing, even off those five shares. 
Uh, Abby Vi, I think they already did. It was like at the beginning of the year. I don't know if they're going to do it. Usually it would happen around January. And then my next deposit is in uh, February 1st. Uh, we will not be streaming on Monday. No, the market is going to be closed on Monday. And then be careful with like HBI too. I know some of you guys are saying you're buying them. Just remember any of the Colt long-term picks, you've seen it. The best way to win on them is get them when they go down. Because if you end up buying it after it runs up, you're going to be at a way, way higher price. So just keep that in mind. Remember, I'm, I'm all about patience here. They're, you know, especially in this marketplace, we've been doing things a little different there. You know, the first couple years of the long term, we didn't even have a cash balance. We just kept fully investing. So keep that in mind is that I definitely think this year you are going to have an opportunity to be patient. And it's going to suck because you're going to have to wait for shit. But you're going to have the ability to get stuff at, at a good prices. No, I'm not about selling it. If you're already in it, I don't think there's any point to sell it because you're not, you're getting one of the best yields out there. And then if it keeps going, their earnings update was great, but I'm just saying you got to be careful of, uh, you know, if you're trading it, don't listen to what I'm saying. I'm talking about the long term, but that's really what you want to be looking at is just if you could hold it, get it at a good price, you're you're going to be great. Yeah, so sadly, I don't think, I don't think they're going to raise the Abbey Vi dividend till October 23. Cuz they raise it every October and I don't think they raised it this October. UNH, I mean if UNH really goes crazy, it could run. I sold out already, but I still I think minimum there's like 10 bucks left in it possibly, but if anything changes but it's good, bro. We got in what, like four ninety two? This was beautiful. Okay, right, let me see. And then is the yen still going? Yeah, they ra I think they raised it last October. Let's see one forty eight. Oh no, no, they did raise it in October or January. But not as much. So they raised it to one forty eight for this year. Before that, it was 141. Before that, it was 130. So, yeah, they did do a smooth, a small raise, only by like what, one cent? And then now we're back to 39.70. You're pretty much where you spent most of the day yesterday. NVIDIA is on the high. Everything's starting to run right now. Hood going. Netflix is going too. Where's Meta? They're still at least down. Microsoft, Apple. Apple's about to go green. And then Amazon is just... It, I'm so mad we didn't get that one. <laughs> they hate us. No, that's what I get for being cheap. But it's good. It saves you in long run. Bank of America sales and tra trading sets new fourth quarter record. Exceeding by 21%. And SPY is running. It's, in a, it's like a slight increase since the consumer sentiment. <laughs> Tesla's running now. Wow, what a day. So now take a look. That little move there from the data. It just it's making it easier for bonds and stocks to match up. Hmm. These puts everything gets scammed again on these days, even with earnings, like I'm sure most of the bank stocks, I think calls and puts got scammed. Even UNH probably got scammed on the calls up until now. But I just if we were, every earnings was pricing in like five percent moves, and then now you're barely like Tesla is moving more than any of the earnings. Like UNH is still only two percent. JP Morgan is one point three. They were pricing in seven percent. Wells Fargo, I mean three percent is decent, and then Bank of America is now down two and a half, but then it went up. So it's pretty crazy.
I'm still in the HKD. I can't say HKD for some reason. I keep saying HK day. But yeah, I still have only my 50 shares. Oh yeah, some of the UNH contracts went crazy actually. On the dailies. So if you grab the 500s when it was at 4 and dude, it went 60 cents to $6. Ooh. That's beautiful. Everybody made money, no matter how you did it. That one was just earnings and timing. Yeah, Bitcoin is running. I'm getting squeezed to death on Ethereum. Not to death, but actually... Oh, no, I'm up on Ethereum. Odd. I thought I'd be getting killed. Well, I'm not up overall, but yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a beautiful day. Eh, 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 eh. 29, that's it. You're just melting up. Bank of America, Borthwick says, rights rise, titans create uncertainty. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think you are about to get another Fed speaker right now. Let me check. Stocks cut outlook as you Mitch feeds the outlook for 25 basis points. That's a headline. Let's see. Well, yeah, 10 a.m. Fed Kishkari and then 1020 Fed Harker. So in four minutes, Fed Harker, we haven't heard anything from Kishkari. From an article about road conditions in Dallas. So, <laughs> not just us. But when we think about some of the, the audio is weird where we are right now, I think we need I'll put whenever I see Harker, I'll put him on. But that's for Harker. No, well, last thing I heard from Kishkari, he said the markets will lose the game of chicken. He addressed the game of chicken that we brought up, which made me smile. But he said we're going to lose. Or he said the markets will lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a direct quote from Kishkari. He said the markets will lose the game of chicken there playing with the Fed. Wasiel, NV, UNH again. Left me my $2. That's another 50 right there. There you go. More melting. Bonds chilling out. Uh, not as big of a gap now between bonds and the stocks. And Dow is doing good. Can I hear him talking? I don't know where. No, it's some lady right now. AMD on the high now. They're actually running. JP Morgan. Uh, Wells Fargo is trying to tick up here. Mm -mm. You hear him talking? Housing. Kishkari or Harker? Why? This is like him at the live economic. I don't. I don't hear him yet. Nor do I see any quotes. Space vertical. I think they got something. Pelosi sold 500k in Netflix stock. 
Is that why he's dropping right there? Space, vertical. Is that a pun? They fixed space, fixed like something on their, like, they did an upgrade to one of their space flights, I think. Did, uh, Wells Fargo already had their conference call, right? Oh, no, it's at 12. Interesting. So there's actually a little bit of time. Bank of America comfortable with real estate portfolio. City. JP do decent. I'm really liking those bonds. Remember, it'll be a it'll be a battle. It'll be a battle. It's fun though, but it's scary. But I'm liking them too. Bonds and yen are. I'm just I'm glad we got them, and I'm glad we got them early. All right, I bought 300 shares of Wells Fargo again. Bro, they're actually giving me good fills. This is so weird. Even then, I think that was a little higher, but it actually moved. Because, again, their conference calls in like an hour and a half. So I'm thinking post-earnings. I bought 300 shares of Wells Fargo, 41.53 for a young flip-flip, as they would say. BBB wide calls. I don't think I'm going to play it ever. I'm just worried about the rug pulls on it, man. And again, it's just like when you take a step back, there's been so many just big hitters that you could get where there's no risk of like them diluting you or dumping on you. Like, I hope you guys have been seeing it. Like, there's just been so many other names where it's like you're just getting fat moves even on blue chips. And then, I mean, I don't know if you're already doing some shares with a little bit of the, the margin on the shares because then you actually know you have safety. You could go a long way. But good good game if you're hitting it. Again, as long as you save 10%, I don't care what the hell you trade. And that's all. Remember, I'm just your accountant. I'm here to tell y'all just save the 10%. Then you could do whatever you want. You could trade anything you would like to as long as you get that 10% secured initially. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all you need. That's all you need. UNG, I mean, I personally, I'm waiting till the end of the quarter to decide to cut losses or to average down, but any anything prior to that, you got to ask yourself, I mean, do you want to sell it? Do you need the money? I mean, it's up to you. But I'm waiting for a little bit. Coinbase, Coinbase. Airbnb's at 100? No. Yes, it's almost there. That'll be beautiful, finally. Triple digits. Get it. Yeah. I think our Ubers are up now, finally, too. Not on the long term, but on there. And then Spy's hitting a new high, only down. Now Spy and the 10-year are matched up. Not in terms of shape, but in terms of percentage. miss any news just bank earnings were kind of soft and then i think all of them are still down city was up and even they sold off then there was some china news uh in terms of like taking over companies and like baba but not anything too big boeing 737 in china first flight in a while 
uh, UNH earnings. We flipped that. Uh, their earnings were good, but they still were kind of a little lower. And I think that's it. And then just go. Oh, and then consumer sentiment was uh, really good. It was actually good news. And we kind of are having a good news reaction. And at the very least, it uh, supported the uh, 25 basis points uh, at the next meeting. Oh, and then Tesla lowered, lowered prices by a lot. And then they got clapped. And then it's a beautiful day. Eh, 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 eh. So, yeah, that's all that happened. MCL play, pays 86. I don't know. And, I mean, so remember, not all high dividends are good, but definitely if you ever see a high dividend, look into it. Try to understand why. Seven point eight, two point two. HBI, look at you. Where is HBI? He's supposed to be at nine dollar. Come on, HBI. Hello. Because the price fell from 52 bucks to 36 So chances are they'll cut the dividend unless they still make that much money, but I'd have to look into it. They're pumping meme stocks. Well, the just make sure you get something stable. Like, I don't know. It sounds kind of weird. You don't think it's weird? And I, I don't know. I feel like these are meme stock returns. Like, even in the last couple of months, it's so, it's still, this was even fast, but we have four long terms up over 40%. All, and these are like decent names. Like, I'd say Redfin and HBI are a little bit more uh, sketchier, but then like even Meta up 46%, Netflix up 53%. And I was like, I feel like these are the gains people want. I mean, it's not 200%, but the, the best part is you're not going to wake up and you're not going to lose three quarters of your money or God knows what else will happen. So I don't know. Come to the, come to the long side, come to the long side, my friend. <coughs> Mm. My HBI was supposed to be at 860. I'm sad. Yeah, you got to be a little patient and have some good buys there, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'd rather be patient doing nothing in a weird way because that's what we did. I stopped buying shit from May till, <laughs> to May till like July, October. I think even beyond July. But it's just like you could get some of these and you'll get meme stock returns on big names if you're Willing to be patient. HBI, I think as the market was down, that's why. So like HBI was doing great last night after the news. And I liked the, the news a lot with it, but it was just, I think the market gapped down and things were looking pretty ugly here in the morning. We totally bullish now? Not necessarily. I mean, we'll see. I mean, if, like I said, as long as the bank stocks don't shake everybody up, by next week, like, let's say, uh, let's say Netflix has good earnings. I mean, mother effers are going to get excited. But then again, it's just like the week after that, all it takes is one scary earnings. But then on top of that, you will be coming into the uh, Fed and then whatever else the Fed says, that's where we're going to have a problem. Oh, on Tuesday, you're going to get Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, uh, SI, and then UAL. Then on Wednesday, you're going to get Schwab, more banks, PNC, KMI, and then Alcoa. And then Thursday, you're going to get Netflix, PPG, Procter & Gamble, 
And then Friday, more banks and ally. But pretty much te that'll be the first tech earnings, and that could get people feeling some type of way, as well as, like, everything else. So if it's good or bad, that will dictate the Fed futures and then any Fed speaker in the meantime. Speaking of which, where's Harker? There he is. I think he's up right now. Is that him? Let's talk about ways to address employees, resources, recruiting. I don't even know what Harker looked like. Yeah, that's him. Thank you so much. And of course, from your NFC East champion. Woo! I don't want to put additional pressure on Why do they have so much fun? Yeah, it's only playing out the right ear. So it was like a panel with Harker on it. My Honda is still slowing down on the on this. Financial field, the sports complex has been uh, a destination for uh, a number of key national events uh, over the years, which I think has helped to position us. And uh, you know, I think it's also a great example of what I would call maybe public and private partnership. In some cases, it's us with the teams working directly with with the city and CHL uh, and the CBD and mm -hmm. CHL Sports, but also with respect to the World Cup, there's Businesses. You hit 3980. You broke out from here yesterday, but then you also broke down from here a couple times. So this is a kind of a key level. Coinbase on the high. Bro, UNH is still running. Oh, the contracts are. Yeah, you're, you're, it should be coming out your right ear. If you only hear it on your left, you're wearing your headphones the wrong way, sir. WWE, I'll turn it up for a second. Hold on, please. As big is similarly as big. We got a whole weekend of events, including the uh, two nights of the Summer Slam in 2024, um, and that, uh, according to the WWD in Dallas in 2022, had a, had an economic impact of an excess of 200 million dollars. So, you know, those are just two events in the coming years. You know, add that to all of our our concerts. We had three nights of Taylor Swift, which he sold 100. And, you know, 80,000 tickets, you probably could have sold 500,000 tickets uh, uh, if her voice would hold up that much. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's robust activity. You just blamed it on her voice and not Ticketmaster? Just to make everybody <laughs> understand, we've got kind of questions we're going to go down for everybody. But if any of you wanted to jump in and follow up on things that have been said. Don, can you get us Taylor Swift tickets? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping somebody would ask. But I, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> And Chris, since you jumped right in, um, wow, uh, most aggressive growth plan ever. Kind of announced that, going through that. Uh, can you tell us the goal of the plan, any updates since it actually was announced and made public? Yeah, so uh, we did announce that. Typically, we don't talk a lot about growth, but we entered this decade with 900 stores. We will close the decade of plans from distortion with about 80. So obviously about... 55 years to get to 900 and tend to do the next 900, a lot of growth. And, and really, when you look back at our history and decade, we do step changes in terms of organic growth. We, we were 25 We just want Harker to speak, because again, he was mad bullish yesterday. Really the time. Well, and he's a voter. From our perspective, when our, our business took a hit during COVID, but was resilient, rebounded really effectively uh, to our newest market in Florida, 10 years in now, has performed really spectacularly. So that's given us a lot of confidence that we can leap and continue to grow and, and implant a brand that people really um, like and make part of their every day. And convenience, the notion of convenience, our industry is alive and well post pandemic. So when you put all that into, um, you know, a, a planning process. Uh, us, it's, it's playing out of one ear and I have the audio up at 10. Growth company. We like growth for a lot of reasons. So we've announced the Midwest. So Just try to meditate on it, Indies, you know, Tennessee, and like tune in those states and like Wusa, breathe in. Uh, we will have some adjacent elements of the strategy. So a 
effectively and eventually you know, try that. connecting the, the mid-Atlantic to Florida market. So we'll come up into Georgia, we'll move out into the Panhandle, into the Pensy, Pensacola. There's a chance he just says everything that he said yesterday, too, though. And really, you know, those two strategies, we're, we're heading out western PA. The nice thing about the next decade, this decade, is He's the growth is still going to be in our core markets. So as much as there's new and exciting lead markets that are really to set the stage and plant flags for the following decade, 500 of our stores will still be, believe it or not, there are still being koalas in PA and Jersey and Florida, so much more to come. We're excited about it, but, uh, you know, for us, it's, it's still every transaction. Don told me he wanted to ask if we could all get Wawa gift cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we we'll get Eagle. <laughs> yeah, see, this is working this well. Is all about. We're making connections here. <laughs> uh, just follow up quickly. Has it been especially challenging because you're also expanding your footprint across the country, as you said, in a time when the economy is is challenging, as Dr. Yeah. Parker and Laura pointed out. Yeah, and I think any good business is going to make sure that they're tight and focused during an economic downturn, as we will. But our planning, as you just heard me talk, is, is really decade focused. As a private company, we enjoy and, and like to look long term. So for us, we look through economic uh, cycles. Another fun bunch. Take advantage and prepare. Prince all. Welcome, and baby. And, and come out of one strong. So, you know, I, I would say we're growth oriented. We have an ESOP, our largest single shareholder, mm. is our employees and employee stock ownership plan. And for them, that's a retirement vehicle. We think long term because their interests are long, aligned long term. And so for us, growth. JPM's almost positive now, all the banks. Through those economic cycles and pulling back when we need to. Our ability, um, our business it has a unique ability. We just pull back on capital spending a bit. If there's any ill, it, it, it heals itself really quickly. Well, there's another IPO today. Dr. Skyward. Carter, you touched it on it in the kind of the opening. Heard about so JPM, I think they're going green now. Interest rates. They're about to 0.16 Payroll away. Stayed relatively healthy. I don't think I know what I'm talking about. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to all of it. <laughs> but how do you kind of balance the Fed balancing the need to bring down inflation, uh, that Laura was talking about, but also Ooh, bad. That economic or Airbnb? Yalla. Yeah, so we're unique. I forgot the names. World. This is Harker. A long time ago, so that we have to balance those two off. And that's what we're in the process of doing. So for me, for example, when it comes to policy, and I've been pretty clear on this, I think we need to get rates slightly above five and then sit there. We don't need to keep going. Because it does, because who, who gets hurt the most in this situation? It's low, moderate income families. Inflation hurts them, but also, Unemployment hurts them. So it's that balancing act between those two. And I actually still think I'm quite optimistic that we can execute some sort of soft landing. It may be a little bumpy. <laughs> it's been bumpy for a while, uh, so a little turbulence. But I do think that that is possible, and the probability of that happening has increased as we've seen inflation starting to come down. Now, as Laura said, it's going to take a while for inflation to come down. You're not going to hit 2% for several years in our forecast. But we'll get there, and I think we are committed at the Fed to get there, and I, I we can pull this off. Yeah. Mark's just sitting there quietly. You didn't ask for Eagles tickets. You didn't ask for Hawaii <laughs> tickets. It's all good. Uh, the survey that we were I talking about, the member <laughs> survey, showed that there are some pain points. There are some challenges as it relates to attracting and retaining talent. Um, that's what you guys do. Uh, so what are some of the major trends that you think will impact the workforce as we go into 2023? That's a great question, and Happy New Year, everybody. Um, so I yeah, think Fed Harger says so he favors rates slightly you know, above five. Actually, I was surprised that unemployment went down 3.5%, and because of that, um, we're already really busy. We do outsource that HR and outsource recruiting, and we are swapped. We have gotten needs from everybody right now saying, hey, I need some of your people here and there, but it's been interesting to see They're saying he's why. answering questions after speech? And basically because they are swamped themselves because they are oh. overworked, a lot of people right now, a lot of burnout is going on because people are doing two or three jobs because they can't find the people themselves. Because we are also having that labor crunch out there right now. It's been really hard. Oh, Wells with the candle after the top. Yeah, Redfin's running. Hiring, as well as retention. 
And how to get around that is basically putting programs in place, like career pathing. Career pathing is, is a new term. We're not used to it, I'm not used to it, I'm an Xer. Right? It's always make your own career kind of a thing, but now you have to do career pathing. And there's technologies out there right now that um, there's a, a local company in the area it's all called Next Theory. Um, next story. And what they're doing is actually putting it together so your employees can basically pick the career they want within your companies. That is all new. So it's stuff like that that's happening right now for retention purposes and development. And if you don't have that development already in your Apple new high. For that, 68 percent of people stay at companies because of really good professional training and development. But it takes time and effort and money to do that. But it does pay off because, unfortunately, as you all know, attrition is extremely expensive and twice as hard to find somebody to replace, especially if somebody is highly skilled. So be very careful about that. It's one of the things that, that we've seen in, in Philadelphia, tech talent is some place that we've done. Sorry, the Honda very is being well, bad. Uh, in Philadelphia. But Wawa actually has kind of contributed to that pipeline, contributed to that pipeline of developing tech talent. How? Yeah, so, Bill, for us, tech's really important. We've been on a journey in you know, digital transformation. Away. Okay, I'm over it. I'll get the headlines. It's making the Honda slow. These guys are talking quiet. The market moving. JP Morgan positive now. You know, I will get you the headline. He didn't. I, he said pretty much he was like kind of bullish there, but it's borderline what he said there. And I think he's already, we already know he's on the 25 basis points. Tesla market value debate keeps raging. Is it tech or a car maker? And then Apple is now positive on the day. Redfin. We need a little Airbnb to go and it'll be good, Habibi. There you go. Airbnb will work for us. Very good guy. I thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. And then we're just straight melting up from, I think we're about to fill the gap. You're literally at borderline the same exact levels you spent most of yesterday at. If you break above the close here, or like if you do actually fill the gap, this is a breakout point. But it is a Friday. You have the earnings still. We still need to hear from Wells Fargo. And I believe the volume is uh, actually is pretty decent. It's a slightly above average. I mean, unless I think you have one more Fed speaker, uh, you have no, no, you don't. Never mind. That's the last one today. So maybe until the yield curve uninverts, it's possible we haven't hit bottom. Uh, yeah, but even the yield curve, I mean, that's kind of like the broader idea. But just in general, I mean, there's just so much going on. I, I, it's what I was saying even from the beginning of the year. It's just, I think a lot of people, this has been a nice rally and a nice way to start the first two weeks, but, you know, you've done this so, so many times. You know what I'm saying? So, like, legitimately, how many people thought 432 was the was the bottom? How many people thought it was a bottom in February? And then in March, and then people thought the May was the bottom. I remember buying into the long term. I said, okay, maybe. And then by June, you're at another low. It's like you could have missed every bottom and you never really missed it. So it's like that's kind of even what happens. Like I believe even in like 2001, like even though 2001 stocks hit 70% down, they had like two or three major rallies throughout all of it. So the yield curve will tell us a little bit about it. But when it's all said and done, though, it's just like follow the broader factors. I mean, earnings and, and earnings itself could bring down individual names like you know, we got Netflix at a good price, but we didn't buy it at the October bottom. You see what I'm saying? So, like, we bought Netflix after the earnings, more or less around these levels. This was up in July. So, it was already up even, you know, 30% or 20% by by the October bottom, quote-unquote. So, I don't think people have missed it. And I think, and again, like, I'm, like I showed with the original, damn it, this chart's still slow to load. Wait for it. But just like that thing we brought up naturally, I mean, I think the market is about to shift into something new and we're going to see it there. But you can use the yield curve as kind of a bottom indicator, but 
I mean, it's uh, the yield curve is already hard to time things. So in general, I think kind of try to have a balanced approach. And I feel like it should make sense we're at the bottom. When you really, really see it, it should be lower valuations. You should be seeing, you know, things that would court, you know, there would be bankruptcies and other things. But at the same time, you know, we're going to have to finally get us. We need a set of bad earnings out of everybody uh, eventually. But there's a couple of factors to it. But the point is, is that I don't think I don't I feel like you don't need to run after every bounce. Uh, and, you know, the, that FOMO and that idea that you miss the bottom will destroy you. Uh, let me let me say that one more time. That FOMO and that idea that you miss the bottom will destroy you. Because all it takes is for you to buy Netflix, Meta, and any other name that is already up 40% right now. Yo, Johnson & Johnson getting clapped. They end production with arbitration with Merck. They cut production of COVID-19 shot. Huh. So Johnson & Johnson isn't going to be producing COVID-19 shots anymore. They slash production of their unpopular COVID-19 shot. And then Monahan says demand for loans is slow to mid-recession fears. Because even then, I'll tell you then, even if it is the bottom, it will run up for th in, that, in that quarter or like quarter and a half from bottoming there will be one opportunity where it drops a ton you even saw that happen in 2020 so like let's say you go back to 2020 right and like this was the bottom and then it runs up there will be an opportunity where it'll give up half of the level before actually running up so if and then by then hopefully you have information to be able to say okay yeah maybe it really is the bottom but right now I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on it as people are flocking to safe havens and flocking to bonds and the yen. And then, you know, we just, the Fed is not done. We're still raising rates, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite there just yet. You selling Fred free share? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep Redfin. We talked about it because now Redfin's moving up slower than the beginning. Remember, we had like we had like 40 percent in the first couple of days of Redfin, you know, so what we bought it at like, what, 375 or some shit. No, we bought it at 345. Right. And then the next two days it dropped, it went up to 530. So I said if it went up to 100 percent where it's at now, almost I was like, if it did that in like the first week or month of owning, I would be down to make it free. But now. I mean, we've already held it this long and it's kind of like holding up now. It's even breaking out of the downtrend almost. So my line of logic is I'm just going to hold it. And again, we only put, uh, you know, we only put one deposit in there and now it's doing enough to, uh, you know, is doing is doing enough. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like even if it drops now, one de one deposit won't kill us. But now with this leverage of it, one deposit that's already doubling up now this could start to do a lot of work. So I'm going to be holding it. I don't, I don't plan to sell anything out the long term uh, as of now, even the ones doing good again, HBI, you're getting hit with the dividend on it. So uh, no, no, no potential to do it or no reason to sell really. Had I BNB, I'm so proud of you. I said, well, it happens. Don't worry. Either way, and then if you still like it, wait till it comes down and buy it on the dip. But, you know, just patience, patience with the long term and, you know, we'll, we'll be good. And don't be afraid to stack up some of that cash. Yeah, Wells Fargo is doing great. I already I almost caught a dollar per share on that. And then the earnings call is in, uh, I think, like an hour. I have divvies I want to add. I want Ultria, but I want it. I need it a lot cheaper. So this one, I'm just waiting for it to die. Let Ultria will do. Ultria is one of the. It usually has a death, a death blow, every 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 couple of of months here. So I'm waiting for that. And if we could get it in the like low 42s, 41. I mean, this is where I'm gonna want to be picking it up. It looks decent though. Sad. I like the yield, and I'm I'm confident in them. Like it's still a eight nine percent yield, but 
uh, you know, that I am, I do want it, but I'm just figuring might as well wait. Otherwise I'm more comfortable with my cash. Zim, I don't know. I just, I like the idea of it, but it just, I don't, I've never heard about it till recently and it looks like it's good fundamentals kind of, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm more comfortable holding my cash because you see what we could do with it. Like, I mean, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like when it's all said and done, you guys watched me get clapped heavy. And then I just said, I'm gonna hold the cash. And then we just, you know, go back to value and we waited and then we just scooped up stuff that that really changed the whole dynamic. Honestly, I hope all of these latest pickups, whether you missed one of them or you got all of them, I really hope it's encouraging because you get to really see the reality. Like, that's what you could do. That's what's possible. And like, I mean, bro, to, to be coming into this year and the end of that year now where we're almost about to be positive again. And then we still got all the dividends. And then now you got like, bro, who got four 40 percenters in 2022? Like what? <laughs> like that's not that. And on high names. So it's like, or high quality names, but it's just getting down to the fact where it's like, you know, just wait, hold your cash. And we, you know, we could do some damage with it. You know, we don't have to be impatient and throw it there. And it's just like, yeah, sometimes you're going to have to watch it and wait and do all of that. But it's like, yo, you know, I, I know what I want. I would love to get that dividend. The 8% is attractive, but, you know, 8% is only 8% where it's like if we could scoop it up and get a really good pickup and a higher yield, we'll, we'll definitely win off of that. But all you got to do is kick it and you'll be good. But, and if you got that patient, it's, it's going to be very profitable. And if you stat, like I'm telling, that's why I keep telling you save the money because get that cash, save that 10% because watch what's going to happen you know, God willing, we get another set of these opportunities again. You're going to be the one ready to go scooping things up that can move 40, 50, 100 percent for you as we enter into the good part of the cycle. If you know what to do during the bad part of the cycle, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Martin Screlly. God bless you, my friend. Long term up three percent year to date. Thank you, Josh, for everything teaching me the way. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Our year to date is we're doing great year to date. I know we have some gains. I think we're we're doing like 6% already year to day, but I'm always just, I just look at the total net and we're going to be good though. I really think so. And then the whole point is, is that if you are managing your portfolio and you're not like, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how it looks. If you keep managing it, we could change it to reflect what we want. Like I said, I wasn't even near positive at any of these levels here. I think we were coming into the beginning of the year, but I remember here in August, the long term wasn't down 2%. Today we are, right? And it's just like you could you can alter it with a couple of things. And that's why patience, timing, sticking to the strategy, you're, you're going to be great. It's on Amazon too high. Yeah, it's okay. That's why I said I'm okay. I'm okay with missing out on anything. And you should be too. Because if you keep this long, if you really keep the long term in mind, we have a lot of time and we will be ready to get what we want at the right price and it will lead us into the right areas. Time in the markets beats time. Amen. 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 It's so key. Play the X axis. I love it. Don't you love that? I love the X axis. It's great. And I mean, hey, we, we played the just wait for the dips on the Y. Like you'll see it. Just you just buy into the ultra cheap lows and it will it will set you free. I'm going to hold that ZN for a while until I'm able to clear out everything else with profit. Most likely. I'm still in my NQ shorts. Yep. I still have everything. Nothing has changed. All I did today was uh, I flipped UNH at the open. I think that's it. And then I am in a Wells Fargo flip right now. That's doing good. And then that's it. We're still, again, we're still slightly increasing here. The yen and bonds are working. I'm still getting clapped a little bit on the ETH, but it's not bad. Little by little, every day. 
every day we go little by little Habibi, Redfin, even JP Morgan now. What the hell is going on? Banks are starting to ki kick up a little bit here again. It's purely, yeah, it's earnings and then uh, it's a gamble. I mean, I just like the price on it. Remember, if you've watched, I played Wells Fargo all this week. So I flipped it already and then I was like, dude, it's, it was really low. Earnings was going up and then I started to see all of the banks are rising up except for Bank of America. And then they have their er they haven't even had their earnings call. So in an hour, Wells Fargo is going to have it. My plan is if I get real big gains on it, I'll sell out before the earnings call. But if we really want to push it and that earnings call is good, uh, it's going to, that, that could, I could really drive it up there. But I have almost a dollar a share on 300 shares now, so it's decent. Oh, I haven't even looked at the dollar today. Yeah, JP Morgan just hit one. 140 is a big, big level for him. News is borderline done. We might get random updates here and there. And then again, now people are going to position for earnings. There's still like four or five big banks that are going to report and then Netflix and then Procter Gamble next week. This is where they closed yesterday on Wells Fargo. You are coming down a little bit now. And then financials are still... Actually, financials are worst on the day, but they're coming up. Again, weird drop on the S&P could be energy. Yeah, Netflix is giving up. I still have PRVB, yes. Labu, Northrop leads defense stocks lower after Goldman grows cautious. Yeah, I'm getting clapped on Lockheed and the Boeing. Boeing is short. Lockheed Lawn did not work. For now, at least. And then Netflix still up one. Where's Meta? The Nvidia is killing it. I wish I held that more. That would have been another like four or five hundred on that one. That was the first thing I sold yesterday, but I can't complain. He did good. And then where is it? I thank you for sunshine. Amazon's been leading all year. So 12 Eastern, so literally one hour till Wells Fargo conference call. Literally at 12 Eastern. And then we're kind of calming down. We have 30 minutes till Euro close. What do you have right now? I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Hey, down in my heart. Hey, down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Hey, down in my heart today. And then I have everything else on the screen here and a couple of other ones as far as stocks. Uh, only play for the day that I'm still holding is Wells Fargo. We flipped out of UNH. And then that's it. I don't know why we're, I think we're running because bank stocks didn't dump further and then consumer sentiment was bullish, but I thought it was borderline neutral. It was more like, I mean, good news was kind of good news or at least it cemented 25 basis points a little bit further and then that's about it. <clears throat> I was like, no, that's, that was the first thing. He said, what do you got? I was like, I got the, I got the joy, baby. I got the joy.
and JPM. Again, Wells Fargo, they just missed on revenue, right? They missed profit estimates on higher reserves and scandal costs. I'm trying to see. Oh, shit. Didn't they already have X dividend? Yeah. Like, if we get a little extra, that'd be nice. Mm -mm. Your friends are counting on you, Kenny. Well, first things first, 10% 10, 10 to yourself. But, you know, it creates opportunities, man. When you go down, it, it, it will force you to find something that is going to work for you. Believe me. Believe me. So you got to find it and budgeting will be the key with it. But telling you, this will not be the year to give up, but it's not going to be an easy year and you see it. But I think reduce emotions. And that's why that I hope you guys know the whole 10 percent thing. Do you guys realize that is purely like even emotional? I don't know if you feel me on that. I don't know if y'all feel me on that. That's why it says in richest man of Babylon, you know, keeping that that 10 percent in there is good for you. Phil, don't be an asshole. You started the 10% thing. Let's go, bro. But not nah, when you have the money in your purse. It'll make you feel a little bit more confident. But let's go. 10% and then do whatever you want. I love you too, bro. God bless you, Steven. That's it. And again, this will push you to find your answers. Eleven AM on the dot. Wells Fargo fourth quarter came ahead of Wall Street. They had to pay three billion. They earned two point eight sixty seven. Analysts were expecting a profit of sixty cents per share. Yeah, Wells Fargo made 13 billion in net interest income compared to 9 billion last year. So they're killing it off of interest. Jeez. But again, everything they just got clapped 67 cents a share based off of the regulatory stuff this quarter. 10%, man. 10% budgets and just, you know, honestly, just don't get caught up in the emotions. Like, dude, it was so crazy. That's why I, I don't know. I hope you guys like yesterday's watch list. I really hope you like this chart. And I'm, I just, I really hope people are paying attention to how things are really moving. Bank of New York Mellon plans to cut 3% of workforce this year. But it's just like, dude, the amount of emotions and you see it, bro. Everybody financial media memes everything it's like bro everyone's like did the bottom the bottom I'm just and it's just so emotional and if you could really remove the emotions keep your budget in line you know what I'm saying like you are going to be good and it's just like don't get caught up in it like you've watched this for the last year and thankfully this year should replicate last year as opposed to going from 21 to 2022 you guys get it 2021, everything was ripping, and then they changed the policy, and things changed really fast. You didn't have a playbook from 2021 to 2022. Now you have a very good playbook off of what you've seen, and now it's clear we are following the macro, we are following the Fed, all of that stuff. So I just, I, I rebuke any emotions, I rebuke any FOMO, my friend, and you'll be good throughout all of this, but at the same time, we're returning back to what the stock market is. We're returning back to you actually have to have a plan. You actually do need discipline. It is going to require things out of you. So don't let that deter you. Let that elevate you 
into really who you need to become with this. And it's, it's definitely possible. Uh, we've, we've shown a lot of people and I've seen it out of a lot of people here. So it's just, it's and thankfully we have that playbook, like I'm saying. So don't worry, my brother, don't worry, my brother. Nordstrom's is up. Star Word, I haven't really looked into him. Oh, Airbnb, get back to a hundred. The yen playbook. Remind me when the yen comes down. At this point, I mean, it's a very complex story to the yen. And we've pretty much, it's almost been a year now since we've talked about it. But uh, remind me when the yen drops. You know what I'm saying? And that, because then it will actually be more actionable. But now, and that's that's the one thing too, is just, we want to, you. I, I want everybody to train themselves to know what you're looking for, but then get into it, not when it's going, you know, not after it's already happened, if that makes sense. So that's kind of the next level of it. You know, when the bonds drop again, when the yen comes down again, we, we should have these talks. As of now, we're kind of riding the sails with the wind. I researched Zim a little bit, but it's not like just deep down, I don't know about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I don't know. I've never used the Zim in my life. Like, you know what I think about when I, when you say Zim, it was in there. Remember Zim invader. That's whatever. That's all I know about Zim. And like, I looked into it. I read analyst notes and all of that good stuff, but it just, it's not anything I have any real experience with or know about. And that is part about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Invader Zim. Uh-huh. Not Zim invader. Zim invader. So I'm not opposed to it, but I I would want to be more patient than not. And like I'm saying, I still do like uh, I still do like my cash. And I don't think my strategy with cash and how we're set up, it's just not going to hurt us being very, very, you know, in a weird way, discriminatory. <laughs> like that's it. I'm very I'm discriminating heavily when it comes to the stocks and it's not going to hurt me uh, again. Worst case scenario, I just build fat cash. While we have runway and everything else goes crazy. But otherwise, I really, the way I see it, I want all of the big shit that I know about and I want it at a discount. And and I think we could execute that very, very good. And then worst case scenario, we may miss out on 4 to 5% if we're not able to deploy that cash in 12 months to the right dividends. But I'm hoping whatever I miss out on yield by holding cash, we will be able to scoop up with deep discounts on equity. JetBlue, I'm not a fan of any airlines, unfortunately. I don't do airlines. I don't even like flying. JP Morgan now 141. He barely moved. That's a sad part. Even to the upside, JP Morgan. Dude, this thing was supposed to move 7%. I'm so sad. I guess technically it was down like 3%, now back up to 1%. It's going though now, but come on. Apple... JPM's at the highs. Apple getting a candle there. HBI leaps. Well, be careful. The thing's up 50% now or 40% in a couple of weeks. And then leaps don't pay the dividend. That's it. That's why otherwise. But I might want to trade HBI. I mean, we'll have to maybe see. Today sucks that the the momentum just on the market slowed down. Because, bro, that shit was running after hours yesterday. And again, their biggest headwind was inventory. And they announced higher sales and that they clawed back the inventory. But you just got to be careful, especially an option after running 50%. I don't know how how pretty that's going to be.
cash bills at ETF 4% for waiting. I've seen some of those actually. You just got to make sure it's like a decent structure. But yeah, if it's off of that, just don't buy it into the high because it does that. I've seen this before. I know I know a money manager who does that. So as long as you're, uh, I think you got to wait till the quarter or wait till the beginning of the month to buy in and you'll be good on it. But it does pay. I think it does pay on monthly too. HBI dropped their dividend. I don't think they did. I think the dividend went down 3% because the price went up 50%. But I don't think the dividend is... The, they've kept 15% dividend for like years. <laughs> they haven't raised it, but the dividend is 7% now because the price is more expensive. So that's why I say just be careful even trying to buy into the highs on it. The dividend was the same when the stock was $20. So even when they just didn't, they didn't pay the same way. So like HBI, even when the stock was $20 at the beginning of 2022, 2021, the dividend was still 15%. The payout ratio is always, yeah, it's 50%. They, they haven't raised their dividend since like 2018. But now, but now HBI yields 7.25 simply because the stock is up 40, 50% right now. So when we bought it, it was 10 and a half, but the price has now changed, but nothing is different on the yield. Or enough, the yield is different, but the dividend has not changed, the actual amount. So what you buy it at determines how much you get back in dividends, a.k.a. the percentage. JP Morgan. Bonds are actually kind of slowing down. This is pretty slow. What's the volume at? Eighteen. I don't think we get pinned. This is very this feels like a typical earnings move in a weird way. Where it's like a little bit of activity pre market, then it kind of slows down and then everybody's waiting for the next hand. We're still gonna hear from Wells Fargo on the conference call. No news on Proverbs. PRVB. You tried to order socks and boxers and they said that they were out of stock. That's weird. Because again, the thing that killed HBI was inventory. So I was reading a JP Morgan note on it and it was like, I think from like September-ish, a little bit before September, like August, is like, and they were at 11 bucks then, their inventory just went up a lot. And that's why the update they gave yesterday was very positive about it going down. But technically they had a shit ton of inventory. Their inventory was killing them by like 4.5% on their margins and like sales and everything. They just have way too much inventory. It's 35. What, what is Nike Nike has like 11 billion or what was it 9 billion in inventory? I was tripping out of that. Main No, but that's a company. I think that so that Bills one this is like a Bloomberg 3 month bill ETF. There's certain like do you see how it doesn't move like a company? And like you see how it just like comes down here. The idea with this is like a it's like a short-term cash yielder. So I don't know if I would do it for the long term. It's kind of a more advanced strategy with it. And you got to make sure you know what you're getting into. But this isn't a company. It's an ETF literally just designed to hold money and pay you an X percentage on it. And then that's it. So it's literally made for people kind of holding cash. And again, I, I know a couple money managers who utilize it. But you just got to have a little bit more... Uh, more info on it and make sure it aligns. There's some risks to it and slippage, but they are pretty decent for the most part. 
You were switching to play leverage ETFs instead of options for a while. You got more peace of mind holding them. Welcome to the dark side, my friend. We're glad to welcome you. All right, Spy's kind of weakening over here now. Actually, 15 minutes till Euro close. Even Wells is giving up now a little bit. We still have some gains on it. That ticker was BILS, Bills. And the market has lost a game of chicken with you. Just join the dark side. Shares. That's it. Join the share side. Until all of the until the options become a swampland, and everybody abandons it, and then we get premiums for pennies on the dollar. And I, that's the plan, my friend. That's the plan. Let them battle. We must navigate through the desert. The desert of shares and small gains. Until the land of options returns. The game the guy from the raid was playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Call of Duty Mobile, bro. I love it. I love it. Option demanded. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Join the fun bunch. <laughs> now, you don't even have to go for leverage ETFs. That's one way, but like straight up shares. I mean, you just saw me flip uh, shares today, even doing it now. It's like you would have made more money on the timing of that UNH on an option, but you'll just, it's the security of it, the ability to play as small as you want, to stay in the game and do everything. It's crazy. It is little by little. And it's just better than getting clapped, even if you're in the right direction. Yes, I'm still in that NASDAQ. <laughs> Weird voice cracks today. I got that dry cough after finally. That's why I'm like, Ugh. all right. You think Tesla leverage is safe? <laughs> Have you seen my Tesla position, dog? Unless you want those problems, but I'm glad you saved 10%. Do whatever you want after that. I probably wouldn't leverage, but maybe normal. Uh, but, you know, 10%. You can do whatever you want, man. The world is yours. Yeah, this is it. We're just getting the shares is putting you into marathon mode. That's all. I, I've just, you see it. Any of the, like, even the, op, the options will give you the quick ones and they're hitting there. And again, I'm not trying to talk anybody out of options. I'm speaking to people right now where if you have not been getting the results you like to see, I'm telling you. Humble yourself and go to the small shares and you'll see what I'm talking about. You know, if it's working for you, you got a strategy, you have experience, you're flipping it. Do you, boo-boo. But all I'm saying is that you're you're watching it every day with all of these moves. It's like it works for some time. And then depending on what happens, you know, you, you see it on any one of these volatile days. And it's just like there's going to be so many events here moving through this year. And if you want a level of safety and if you could just make sure you're not losing your money, that is the key. Imagine this whole wealth destruction that has occurred. Do you realize it has been three years now since COVID? We are through the first half of everything now. And it's just like, wow, if I just had the money versus not, you would be better off than anything. It's one thing to make a gain, but if you could actually still be able to maintain, and that's what I'm trying to say here, save 10%. And avoid losing money. That is what is going to help you out here. But it's like you just got to make it through the next year or two with a little bit more stamina than the next guy. And you're going to do very well. And that's really what it's going to come down to. But it's a, it's, a, it's a hard tide to go against is what I've been noticing is that, the you know, 
and there's a lot of ideas out there still. A lot of people have been hooked on to, to zero days and they've been hooked into to some of these strategies and I understand it, but it's like, you know, you're gonna, you gotta decide and just make sure you don't slowly take a, you know, death of a thousand cuts where it's like, I'd rather win by a thousand, a thousand pebbles adding up. Goggins runs marathons. Be like Goggins. Well, we're about to have Euro close in 10 minutes. We're kind of flowing by. Today feels a little slow, but we are actually moving. And you're just right at the middle of... We, we spent hours here yesterday. We spent almost two hours at this level. But we'll see how you, you uh, Euro close. And then UNH is running now. No, I need to listen to it. I might drive a lot this weekend, so we'll see. If I do, I got it. I'm going to remember. I'm going to try to remember. Or I'm just going to sleep. And some clap, bro. No tin for likes. My only tin is uh, just the economy. <laughs> That's it. And this whole, it was my, it's mind-blowing. That's why I'm like, bro, it's like, this, it's been three years now. All that money inputted into the system. Now they're taking it out. And now it's slowly going there. And that's why I'm just like, don't get trapped again. Don't get tricked. And just make sure you have your money. And make sure you can at least slowly grow it. Then not like the stock market is returning back to normal. Is my, that's, that's literally my tin. We're, just, we're going back to the good old days, bro. This gamble speech spoke. The dude's not wrong. If you can't take 10% and then you get caught with your pants down, you could be messed up. Amen, man. And just even then, though, it's just like in a broader sense, it's like if you're not even willing to take 10% of your income and just set it aside before trading or doing anything, my question is why? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that sounds like a gambling addiction right there. Just straight off the bat, if you're telling me the bare minimum is not feasible, why? Like, straight up, why? I'm not even saying live off. The I'm just saying before trading anything, whatever you were going to trade with even, but it should be your broader income. And it's just like, why aren't you even willing to take the smallest possible step? And you got to really ask yourself that. Like, think, you see what I'm saying? Just really think about that. That's like, it's, as I said, bro, if somebody ever just said, yeah, all you got to do is 10% and you can do whatever you want. 10% and then go do, that's it. If you're growing up as a kid, if your parents said 10%, save 10% of your, your money and you could do whatever you want. You feel, it's like, it seems like most people be like, oh yeah, okay. But Why? <laughs> Netflix call, you think, well, you're about to get the earnings run up. So I don't know. I don't know about the options. The options may benefit off of the earnings run up and the premium, but overall I would be doing it. Painful to listen to you effed up so much money. It's okay. I mean, I don't know if you were here, you got the badge, but I'm telling you, this is a, it's a rite of passage. You know, it's bittersweet. Anybody I've known who's ever become successful, there is some sort of fucking up the bag moment. And when it's all said and done, everybody will uproot their money tree at one point. It is what you do with it, myself included. I have uprooted my money tree at many, several different times, but it, you get something from it. But now you know. And what you should know is even what we've been saying. You need to start with this 10%. And if that is if that minimum step is still being if you're fighting it psychologically and insisting on not doing it, that right there is the problem for a lot of people. And it just and that tells you exactly where you're going, because it's just again, it's the bare minimum. Mm -mm. 
free PDF. Free PDF. Where is this man? Is uprooting losing everything? Pretty much, yeah. You know, we're taking a very major setback. I feel like it's everything, but to everybody, they kind of have their own version of it. But that's it. Bad plays took away my confidence. Now it feels harder than it is. You're overthinking it. Just humble yourself and relax. It's a humbling moment. Let it humble you. There's nothing wrong with it. You watched me for the long term get murdered. Even then, buying dips on Airbnb murdered. You know what I did? I didn't buy anything for three, four months. Just chilled. Take a step back. Get the 10% and start there. You start with 10%, that will be something you can, everybody can accomplish. You start accomplishing, taking away 10%, sticking to the rest of the budget and going from there, you will be good. But that's where you, that's where you stop. That's where you really, really start. Ego death. No, you don't know. Amen. Worry about the execution of what you know, not what you don't. Oof. Amen. Josh has preached the long term every day since I've joined. We have and we haven't, though. And that's why it's just I am going to make sure we need to do everything with 10%. I'm getting sick. I'm fully sick. I'm fully like I went to the doctors on Wednesday I got like antibiotics. I'm still in the game though. That's I'm just I'm feeling like like Jordan, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't care, bro. We out like God is good, bro. I thank you. Because I'm like, bro, even then I get a day off on Monday. Shout out to MLK. I'm like, we gonna be good, man. But yeah, I've been sick this whole week. And then today I got the dry cough. I'm like, <laughs> Amen. Amen. I've not gotten to go to the gym. I wanted to so bad. I've been doing my 830 uh, axe kicker thingies. But no, nah, we need more authority on the 10%. I'm telling you, this is the moment. And this year is going to be wild. And I just know that the thing is going to be budgeting in that 10%. Everything else, we're going to figure it out along the way. That's fine. We don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows. But I, I, but I know if you save 10%, and I know if you stay away from things that are slowly killing your balance, you will be successful if we could just avoid hell. Oh, y'all don't feel me. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say with everything. Shares, this, like everyone, you could take it like ego. It's, it's not like that. It's not a challenge for options or this and that. It's just like if we know how to stay away from hell, we will get to heaven. It's very, very simple. If you save that 10%, we will be ready for whatever happens. It's just that if we have that balance, if we have that confidence that you're not getting beaten down, and it's just like, that's why we have to do it now, and that's why I'm going to bug you every single day telling you 10%. You can say 10% cash if you or wait to buy. If you're going to buy something, make sure you're buying it at a very, very good low price, just like we've done. But even at the very least, 10% and keep it in a separate account. You need it separate. That is going to be your fund that you will have. I think it's funny, the religious guy talking about getting clapped. Getting clapped is clapping cheeks. Bro, you're like 17. <laughs> you don't even know what clapped really means, dog. Amen. Be reborn. We will see you here again, and I hope you got the 10%. This guy. He's been on the internet too much. <laughs> 12. <laughs> I know, I got to rebuke him. That's it, be reborn. We love you, 10%. That's ironic. Dude got clapped. I know, it's weird. He think he thinks it means something else. I think that makes it even weirder. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
the act of getting completely <laughs> and utterly obliterated during times of combat. There you go. There you go. Should I continue saving for my house or start maxing out? I, I mean, I, either or. I believe with the Roth, you could use it for real estate, but the whole idea is keep saving. Keep saving, and then if I mean I could, I would put it in a long term account if you really want a house. Because I don't, if you will, go look up the, you know, what you could do with the Roth and everything else for real estate. But the idea is just separate it, make sure you don't throw it into higher risk strategies so that you could keep stacking it up and have a way to use it. Well, we're coming back down. Euro close eight thirty. Ding 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 ding. So thirty nine, literally right at the middle of yet. Yeah, this is like the middle point of yesterday. I haven't even opened up book map today. Mm. Roth, you could use one time buying your first house. Yeah, if you were going to make sure you have access and no penalties or anything to get your first house, I would put it in the Roth. Otherwise, separate it if you really want to keep saving for that house. Yeah, city has been running up there. I had that on the top right. Apple came down. Time to get moving. It is, man. Let's go. Let's get some push-ups, baby. Let's get some push-ups. Ten push-ups. Relax the eyeballs. Y'all know what to do. Save 10%. Damn it. 10% push-ups. Thoughts on UMC still worth purchasing? Uh, maybe I'm, I'm I have like another two weeks to really decide. I do like the dividend, and I still do believe in it, but I am worried about that Suns purchase. I do like Redfin more, but here's the deal: this is something I need to make sure everybody. You gotta do push-ups right now. I need you to relax the eyeballs too, and chest to the sun, legs in front of you, not right, not right behind your computer chair. Okay, simple. But here's the deal, Chad. You are no longer allowed to buy any of my long-term pickups after they run up. That's it. You're no longer allowed to do that. Maybe 10% max. 10%, 15% max, and even then. But otherwise, I like Redfin, but there's no point in buying it when we're up 72%. Why? Because if it drops 72%, we go back to break even, and then you're going to be like, what the fuck? I hate my long-term. That's the, that's the thing. No, anybody, you see anybody in the world that you're like, I want to buy that, but it's already up on a, on a certain period. That's it. Yeah. If you buy anything that's red, that's beautiful. Amen. Except for big commerce. <laughs> then that's it. Maybe even Coinbase. But I'm, I need to get me more Coinbase, but I'm still waiting. But it's just no more like, just, just stay away from it. I love these. I like the names. There's a reason why I bought it. Right. The, again, that's why they went up. There's a we were we were looking at the value, but just don't buy. No, don't buy HBI. We're up fifty percent in two weeks. Why would you buy it? You see what I'm saying? Because if it goes back to the level that everybody who acted on it then, you're gonna have half of the people at break even, half of the people down fifty percent. It doesn't make any sense. Wait till it has a real dip, and then we could go for them. But for the most part, you don't want to be buying these long term plays after they run up. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you for rain. Thank you for joy. Thank you for pain. So I hope that helps. I got paid today. I'm ready to buy zero day options. Yeah, bro. I'm ready to clap you too. Oh, gone. Be reborn. That's it. If my words won't take care of you, the market will, my friend. Bear down, baby. Let's go. Let's go. I'm telling you, the stock meme pages will love that shit. I don't. So it's good. It's simple as it's good, bro. It's chill. You know what I'm saying? That's it. They love spreading FOMO. They love to get you on it. I see. I said, I said, so, bro, I saw, I think it was, uh, what was it? It was actually a very sketchy source. And they're like, man, they're like, men be so insecure about their, about their height. 
They should be more insecure about their poor financial decisions. I'm not going to allow anybody to promote. That's it. Just like, go, go with, uh, go with your group. You guys can circle jerk each other off of yeah, zero day. I'm not going, no, 10% here, doc. 10% here. I love you. I know, know it's out of love. Um, that's all it is. Yeah, that's it was a sketchy source. Sketchy source. I saw it on a meme page, but I was like, damn, that's facts, though. That's facts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's it. So let's go, Chad. Do whatever you want. That's fine. If you want to if you want to mock the thing that is going to make you rich, be my guest. But just don't expect anyone to tolerate it here. That's all. You'll have everybody else around there. And just look what happened. All those memes, all the, the, the this and that. what happened. <laughs> Did it benefit you? Did they end up? Are they in like, come on. Did any of that like toxic culture of being financially irresponsible, did it benefit anybody? Come on. Come on. No, volume's actually decently high. Damn, Bernie Sam, my dad would tell him, hey, it's good, it's good. It made you wiser. Amen. If you went through it and came out wiser and got to realize, okay, you know, it's it's fun for now. It was fun for there, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? If you're still on that and you haven't realized that it has, that it has only brought damage into your life, then, I mean, I can't, <laughs> no one's going to be able to help you be except for yourself. That's on you for now. So, you know that. We're here to help, man. And that's all it's going to come down to. And then you'll see it, man. People will like to mock it. I know it's not cool, but you know it's cool? Winning. Having money. Being, accomplishing what the stock market offers. Every, that's dope. Everything else is just like, <laughs> why would you even be <laughs> like... There's nothing cool about the other side of it. Like, it's funny. I get it. I can see how you can laugh, but it's not like, dude, that's not tight. <laughs> it's like, it's literally your friends in high school who like, you know what I'm saying? It's like your friends in high school where every, everybody's like, you know, it's like, yeah, they have fun. It's cool. But it's like, dog, y'all still living at home and y'all still in the same area doing the same thing. And it's still like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for real. You don't I, they don't, I don't want you to be the 40 year old in the stock market in the same area at the same bar talking with the same people and not changing anything in that time frame. You know what I'm saying? And it's cool if you live at home right now. It's cool if you live in the same area. I hope you're progressing. But if you're still around, if you're still living in the same 30, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, you, you went you out of college and you still living like you in high school. Nah, doc. That's that's not what it's on. So just don't be the 30 year old showing up to the high school party. And that's what I'm saying. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Living in Thailand, that sounds fun. <laughs> sounds very fun, Habibi. Mm. Well, there goes my plans for the night good <laughs> no. L live your life man as long as you save 10 percent, do whatever it is but i'm equating to uh i'm equating just we're, we're coming back to the real stock market and you're gonna need some real skills and real discipline and this whole just get out of the high school stock market mentality. And it's just like it was when you were in high school. That's all it comes down to. You're going to have to mature. Mm -mm. Was that one? It was that Big Sean song. He was like, oh, they still talking about. Oh, what was it? I'm blanking on that. I think it is.
He says like you either grow old or you uh Oh, what does he say? I forgot it. We trying. Well, let's get it, man. I hope you know I'm here to help you. And everybody in here, you have a lot of people who are on the same mission. You know what I'm saying? And that's why. It's just like, let's go. Humble yourself. Take it seriously. And it starts with that 10%. And it's just like anything else is cool. I'm not telling you don't laugh. I'm not telling you don't have fun with stuff. But it's like, nah, sometimes all that, all that joking about serious stuff, though, is going to get you. And that is what you got to avoid. And I say that as being there. Again, how many jokes do I crack on a daily basis? But I, I will never get away from the seriousness of what we got in the long term and all of that. Yeah, Bonds just got pooped on. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, some people grow old, but they never grow up. <laughs> it's like, damn, son. No, but there's another line he says too. It's crazy. He said they talking about who's who. This I need. I think it was with Eminem. Thank you. Yeah, it's a weird day though. Still, the bonds are selling off a little harder though now. Recommend videos to trade weekly options better. Just don't trade them until you get 10%. Do you have 10% saved? Are you doing that? And do you have a budget? Then we could talk about it. Mm. You become what you think about. Amen. I'm totally the old dude on the club dance floor at 10 dancing by myself. <laughs> there for the early drinks. Man. Amen, man. Amen. Amen. No more high school party. That's all. I just started my 10% out of embarrassing my badge. Okay, you did it. As long as you start it. Ain't nobody here to call you out on it. Don't joke about it if it's not, you know, but you did it. That's all we need. Let's go. I, whether you pay debts or add to the, the idea is save the 10% first, pay yourself first, then pay debts, add to the law, do whatever you want. But you need to get that 10% off the top end for yourself in another account and then do whatever you want. Uh, yeah, well, it's matched up with the spy percentage wise, but I was expecting a day where they, they are closing the gap a little bit. I was expecting stocks to come down a little bit and bonds to slightly outperform. You doing futures to keep accumulating until I reach 25K to lift PDT or pay yourself and add to the long term. You should be paying yourself outside of the trades. Your 10% should come outside of there. Now, if you don't have an income and you're only making money on trades, then maybe pay the 10% from the trades. But the best part is futures do not require 25K for pattern day trading. But the idea is save 10% and do good. Because at the end of the day, I, would, I don't like going after. I feel like the 25K thing messes with you. I just remember the days when I wanted 25K for the, for the exact same reason. But it's just like when you focus on it too much, it's always going to get in the way. It's always it's going to be like a weird like mental thing, bro. It's just like I don't know how to describe it. I, don't, I feel like some people could relate. You know, there's always that like you put that price in your head and then like you hit it, but then you'll never hit it until you finally hit it. But then you'll hit it when you weren't focused on it. I don't know if y'all feel me on that.
Hi, dog. I sold out the Wells Fargo. $300 on that one. I'm gone. It sucks. I kind of wanted to hold for the conference call, but I'm cool for now. Two, 300 flips on those. I'm down with it. To post earnings, you know, post earnings with shares. Thank you for sunshine. Oh, thank you for the peach. Ladies and gentlemen, Bradley Frizzle in the peach. 15 minutes after Euro close with the bonds dropping right at VWAP. It's here. Peach Nation, stand up. Or nah, let's go. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. Breaking VWAP though. How do I feel about cash accounts? They're great. It's even great if you want to avoid PDT. And I hope you realize I'm down to answer all these questions and give y'all anything y'all need for trading. But remember, if you're doing cash accounts and you trading and doing all of this without saving that 10%, you you're you're effing around. So that's all. But cash accounts are great and it allows you to trade without pattern day trade. It does add some limitations, but I think those limitations can help you if you have to kind of wait a little bit and it kind of forces you to budget. But again, if if we're talking about trading without the 10% being saved off the top end, we're not we're, we're this is this is a very very just convoluted discussion we're having. I was really missing it. I mean, saving 10% of every dollar that you touch, your income, putting it in a separate account that you could use for the long term or just to keep it in cash, and then go from there. If you want to save 10% of your profits, that's great. That's even better. But at the end of the day, there's no point of day trading, any trading, options, futures, shares, if you are not getting yourself in a, in a system to be saving 10 cents of every dollar that ever comes your way. The 10% separate? No, the 10% will become your long term. Or it could become whatever you want. It could become your house. It could become your new business. At the end of the day, it'll be all of your money and you will have it. And then the best idea of all of it is, you know, think about it. If you save 10% every month, right, for a year, you're going to walk away with a, with a whole month of earnings that you didn't work for technically. You did work for it, but now it saves there. And then if you, that's, and this is the bare minimum, 10% of gross off, you pay yourself first. I love this conversation. <laughs> I love it. Let's go, Chad. I love it. Y'all ask. I love it. Let's go. Yeah, strictly saving 10% of your profit is even better. Why not invest? The idea would be to invest it into the long term. But the, we're, the problem we're having isn't about investing it. <laughs> the problem we're having is accomplishing it. And making sure we do that before anything. It is an order of operations. You do that, then we do whatever else you want. Everybody's different. And then the idea is that 10% will now allow you to have a long-term or, again, anything else you want. I thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. Now, what do I put my 10% in? You wait until we get another good deal here. Again, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't expire. It's your money. Give it some time. That's why we deposit once a month. We put it in here. We wait. Sometimes we'll buy immediately. Other times, but now everything has ran up so much in the last couple of weeks 
that we're going to wait to deploy the rest of it. So I have cash in here. See, I got 8,000 bucks of cash I have not invested in here. And now we're waiting for the we're waiting for the next level of it. So it's just going to require patience, but that's why as you're patient, if you're making sure you're saving that 10%, you're going to be good. My opinion on technical analysis, if you got 10% saved, <laughs> it don't matter to me. That's all. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm a very simple individual. Y'all going to realize oh, all of it is going to come down for that. 40-year-old virgins here. If that wasn't that's the Jack guy who got banned for the clapping. I already know. <laughs> I already know. Be reborn again, my friend. It's okay. Twice in one day, it's fine. It happens to the best of us. You'll be good, man. You'll be good. Mm -hmm. We think we've sold puts once in the long term, but we have sold uh, covered calls. You remind me of Elon when he's like, pay me eight, but now you're like 10% saved. Yeah, I'm this for you. Just imagine how we, like wild what I'm saying really is. Like, dog, I'm speaking to everybody. I'm not even selling you anything. And I am trying to sell you on paying yourself 10%. Just, it's wicked if you really think about it. So I agree. I am like that, but it's, 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 it's just like, just save 10%. That's all. I don't even get it. You get it. It's for you. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Save it and put it in a separate account so that you could put it into assets or a property. Most preferably the long term. But right now, I'm not saying save 10% so you could buy things that are up 40%. That's not what we're trying to do. So the first step is save it. It's a slow process. It's okay. You give it some time. You'll get used to it. Mm. You could buy the VIX. You could just go long on it or get like a UVXY ETF. But even then, I don't know. It's uh, The VIX is a tricky one right now. Excuse me. They got 15% of the paycheck before it goes to the bank account. If you don't see it, you don't miss it. Amen. You hide it from yourself. Very good strategy. Bro, we're just hugging Viwa, man. This is crazy. I don't know if the volume is slowed down or not either. 23 million by hour, two and a half. Kind of. Mm -mm. So much appreciation for my ammo. I couldn't imagine not finding you three years ago, baby. Here's a coffee. Thank you, my friend. Heart. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, Hey, man. Uh, I love you. Okay, Time to get We're going to. This is the. We have a chance this year, Chad. And I want to make sure you have every single tool available. And make sure you're ready to go. So let's get it. It's never too late to start. Is PPI going to be big? It might be. I mean, we had the consumer sentiment today. And then again, PPI is going to be on what? Uh, Wednesday? Wednesday? But I think we're going to be more in earnings mode. But last PPI was big. It had a bigger effect on the market. But I just, I think we're in a weird mode now as now we, everybody's starting to get under the impression inflation is going to come down. So these data sets are going to mess with things now because if it does keep coming down, we're going to be entering in that restrictive real rate. So I'm still going to keep an eye out for it. But 
for at the end of the day, it's going to be, uh, I'm still, I'm kind of neutral on any other data sets unless the big one and borderline run up earnings, then Powell, because anything after that is really just going to come back down to, uh, uh, what's it called? It's unless anything can move the fed futures. So if the data changes the 25 basis point odds, then PPI is going to be important. If not, then then there you go. Exxon prepares to start up $1.2 billion Texas refinery expansion. Oh, shit. MGO IPO is Lionel Messi. Messi. Is this it? What's the ticker? MGO? What is the ticker for this thing? Where is Messi? How come it doesn't load up? MGOL? M goal? Yeah, this is it's up one hundred thirty percent though. It's the Messi Clothing Company. Very good time after World Cup. Where is Messi? How many shares? There's only one and a half million shares offered, but it's at a hundred percent premium. And it's done five million? Jeez. No, it's killing the criteria. You lose two hundred on it. 4.57 free float. I thought it's, I think it's only a million shares offered. 1.5 million. And then IPO lockup is till July. Did we just get clapped? Uh, and bonds are chilling out. No, oh, we could have got more on Wells Fargo. M goal, yeah, that's the ticker. And then JPM is doing its thing. Thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. Thank you for joy. Thank you for pain. Oh, Uber. Uber is actually up. Good for... I don't know why Uber is just melting up here now. I'm not opposed to it, but... Damn. I'm going to halt it. Oh, they halted it on the way down. They give uh, options that bring the pain. <laughs> the whole market. I think it's because it's a really slow float. Disney got out of that one earlier. Even the spies is holding up. HBI, man, the long term. I'm very encouraged. I hope the long term has been encouraging some of y'all for real. Because HBI is just one. 
And that's the thing. <laughs> it's just one of them. <laughs> that's why it's like we know now we need we need to stack up a little bit, take advantage of the lows. And now if anything starts running, we're going to be good. But it's just like, I don't know, call it what you want, but it wasn't a fluke. I can tell you that much. There you go. Now I get the little JP Morgan. There you go. Yellow JP Morgan. It's already 12. Yeah. It's like slow and fast at the same time. I don't even know how to explain it. That messy store looks terrible. And I don't, if he could sell his own jerseys, it'll be good, but I don't know. Cause like he, uh, like, I know his jerseys like sold out globally, but I don't even know if he has like the licensing for it. You know what I'm saying? You could say it looks messy. <laughs> amen. Amen. Damn Wells Fargo. So conference call on Wells Fargo is going to start right now. So if you're still in it, that thing should start moving. It could move down or up a lot, but get ready for that. Judge is hearing Musk's objections to trial in San Fran. Musk has complained of too much negativity in San Francisco. Nikolai to move battery factor to Arizona from California. Oh, Wells Fargo's green now. They turn positive. A racing earlier drop of 5.5. So we got 41.30 to 41. I think I was at 42.50-ish. Damn. And now I was at, that's another 30 cents. That's a lot. That would have been another 100 bucks on there. And then now if this conference call does good, but they might say something, it might drop and then pop. But now it's that's it. You just went from uh, red to green, big. Yellen Treasury to use extraordinary measures on debt limit. All the banks have melted up now. So they, ju they just slowed us down in the morning and now they're running. Amazon's on the high. Bank of America recovered too? Shut up. I thought they were going to stay down. Oh, man, they hate us. Dude, no, that's, eh, that's actually crazy. Yellen writes letter to Congress on debt limit. Damn, that's crazy. All of the banks have just literally rocketed up now. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Damn, Uber. Mm -hmm. I think I'll hold it. I'm finding we got like a decent gain, 60 bucks, 70 bucks on Uber. Remember, we were down on that one too, but I'm going to ride it out for a little bit. I'm shocked now at all those. I can't believe it. Even Wells Fargo is just rocketing now. 42.90. And then I think UNH is around a little bit lower than where we sold out, but they're still holding up. All of any earnings that were down just instantly went up. You got Phil's M goal, 100 shares. Is it halted again? <laughs> Spy is stuck. It's because of, dude, this is a big flip flop. Banks' financials are break even now. They were down like 2% as an index. And now they're all break even. Nope, oh, nope. M goal is back.
Yeah, Yellen says they're going to use extra two extraordinary measures in January. Fargo is positive. Mobileye on the low. They're kind of selling off pretty big. Mobileye is getting dumped on. Yeah, JP Morgan's holding up great. <laughs> Again, 140 is like a huge level. I guess 143, and then it starts to go crazy. I'm going to go halt in. Like the video, yeah. Hit that thumbs up if you hear me. If you like the bank stocks or hate them, whatever it may be, hit that subscribe button. If you've saved, where are my 10 percenters at? Huh? No? Okay. I know. I like to talk about 10% if you haven't noticed. Bro, the yen is up 1% today. I just kind of realized that percentage. That's 3% in one day. That's crazy. I'm here, G. What's up, baby? Ooh. You want to add MSI held up extremely well. This just means long ways to drop MSI. That's not computer MSIs, is it? That's Motorola. Oh, Motorola. Hmm. I don't like the premium, clearly. So that shit's holding up very, very well, it seems like. Like, you would have killed it in October, but... And even then, though, I don't know. I think it's a good name. You know, every you. I don't think Motorola is going anywhere, and they got mad patents. You know, but at the end of the day, I would be more. Uh, I would want something cheaper. Oh, Brian DC speaking on the economy. I think he's leaving too soon. They're going to need to do that again because part of what we want to accomplish in 2023 is keep making progress, keep make, making progress on bringing health care costs down, bringing prescription drug costs down. But the last thing that we can afford is to violate the Hippocratic Oath by having a self-inflicted wound on the economy. As you say, Brian, this is not about uh, spending new money. This is money that's already been agreed to be spent, uh, is being spent. Uh, but let's talk about possibly spending new money. Uh, you're not predicting recession. I'm not saying that you are. But you must be taking that into account as at least a possibility. As we hear, some of the banks are predicting that. What is your plan B when it comes to that? Do we have fiscal headroom left? Because historically, my and the playbook is if we turn into a recession, we look to fiscal stimulus. Do we have any leeway for that if that happens? Well, number one, I think that the, the recent data should give us more confidence that we can actually make this transition effectively. We're doing it in real time. Number two, a number of the pieces of legislation that we enacted in, the, in, in 2022 are really going to start to kick in. So one of the important things for us is effective implementation, getting uh, money on the ground to encourage greater investment in semiconductors, in, in clean energy manufacturing, as I mentioned, lowering prescription drug prices. Those are all things that are effective implementation can affect the real economy in 2023. And I would say beyond that, I think the Inflation Reduction Act last year gives us a good playbook. We can invest in ways that reduce prices in the economy, reduce costs for families, and reduce the deficit at the same time. We surely can do that. And there are areas like, for example, making childcare more uh, inexpensive for middle class families that would boost labor supply, help on the labor supply side, help get more people, more uh, parents and women uh, in the workforce. And we could do that sensibly while also reducing the deficit at the same time. So there's definitely policy playbooks for us to continue to make progress, continue to sort support this transition. We're going to have to work and see whether we can build the pol political coalition, whether Republican leaders are going to want to work down, work with us on those kinds of things that have had bipartisan support in the past. And finally, Brian, let me ask about different sort of investment. Uh, we had, obviously, the big problem with the FAA this week. I'm not sure that we still know exactly what happened, but it raises questions about some of the systems that we're using in the government. There have been other questions raised, for example, the IRS. Perhaps we have underinvested. We're behind the, the game here, for, essentially, in those systems. Do we have the money? Can we find it? in the budget, given all the concerns about the deficit, can we find money to invest in some of those basic workings of the U.S. government to make it work effectively? Yeah, look, this isn't a perhaps. It was unambiguous that over the last decade we have serially underinvested in core systems and processes that have an enormous return, return for the American people in terms of safety and economic activity. And to your question of whether we can afford it, 
the, the irony is that these types of investments are exactly the ones that pay, pay for themselves many times over. You take the investments in the IRS, building the kinds of systems to allow the IRS to make sure that people, the, the, you know, particularly wealthy Americans, actually pay the taxes that they owe has an enormous return. Uh, we, we, end up, we end up reducing the deficit by generating significant revenue uh, for every individual dollar that uh, we invest in those programs. Similar is true in something like the FAA system. Our nation, um, our economy, the safety of, uh, of air travel are incredible value to the economy. And so these are high bank for the buck investments. We've well, done banks are still doing I can't believe Bank of America in recovered. In areas like the IRS, we finally have done that and are making progress. It would be a mistake to go backward, but there are other areas where we do need to move forward. The FAA is one of them. One last one, maybe the hardest one of all, Brian. Is there any prospect HBI of getting Washington us. to understand the difference between a capital investment and an expense? Because I've never heard that distinction made. You'd go out of business if you were a business and not understand the difference. For the reason you described, capital investments are made to actually mm. return more productivity down the road. Look, there's, there's been a long debate in Washington and budgeting around doing a capital budget and, um, and an operating budget for the, for the federal government. Um, I think in practice, the answer is I would give you, I'll, I'll end on an optimistic note. If you look at the IRS in, investment, the Congressional Budget Office, who is the sort of independent uh, scorekeeper of these things, has actually confirmed and said that because of the investment that we made in the IRS and that we passed through Congress last year, we will actually reduce the deficit uh, by a significant margin. And that is, you know, that's an example of what you are saying, which is we're starting to acknowledge in the way that we do federal budget accounting that these investments can actually have a, a broader impact. Um, that's some distance from getting to full, yeah. um, a, a full understanding of capital budgeting in the federal budget process, but, you know, we'll take one step at a time. Yeah, and Brian, we'll always take an optimistic note from you. Don't misunderstand. <laughs> Thank you so much to Brian Deese. He's director of the National Economic Council. Coming up, what went wrong with the FAA this week, and what should we do about it? We're going to talk with Republican congressman from New York. He's Andrew Garbarino. This is Balance of Power on Bloomberg Television and on radio. Balance of power. I was looking for the Wells Fargo call. This could be some weird Friday. Could be some weird Friday movement, but I'm I'm shocked the bank stocks recovered that. You got to realize, I mean, we had a couple of things. I mean, Tesla didn't help in the morning. And I know China and Europe were good, but the bank stocks like slowed us down in the morning and now they've all recovered. But granted, they're not even moving up as much as like bank stocks are supposed to move anywhere from 3 to 7%. They just recovered 3 to 5% losses, and now they're, like, up. Like, I can't even believe J.P. Morgan now, too. How are you shocked? Um, Like, ah. Like, is that what you're asking? I don't know, I guess. I mean, we made money on them, but still, I'm just like, ah, I don't know. It's weird. It go for sunshine. Mm -mm. Where's Messi? Where's Messi, Habibi? Where's Messi? That was my favorite part of the World Cup. <laughs> you think Airbnb is fair at ninety nine, down thirty four? I do. I feel you on Brown. I'm, I'm I'm literally sitting there right there with you. And it would be nice to average down, and I think they're going to have a great earnings, and the guidance is lower. But we should have bought it at 85. So maybe I'm just being too much of a stickler. That's how I was with Amazon. But at the end of the day, I'm cool with waiting. I mean, the way I'm looking at my long term is like, hey, even though I'm down, it'd be nice to have a nice and uh, better average on Airbnb. But it's like, guess what? If it keeps running up and goes crazy, we're going to get all of this money back and then it's just going to pad our stats. And then, you know, if you already have a big quantity, I don't think you need too much. But then again, it's just like I don't want to pay into a 20 percent premium in a week because that means it could give it back up in a week. So I think it's still a good price below 100, but there was much better prices a couple of days ago. And it's just like I would rather kind of wait on it personally. Because I still, it's still one of our biggest positions. And that's why if it just comes back up, he is going to pull his own weight here. But we don't need to keep feeding him. And I'd rather hold a little bit more cash and then just, you know, buying things at the discount. But it would lower your average. But then granted, 
it will increase the amount you have and then you'll be more susceptible to its movements. Proverbs. Are they still just scamming on Proverbs? Kind of. <laughs> Don't you love all of the moves it has? It just hits a high. And you're like, ah, what's happening? Hits a high. Ah, what's happening? Okay, it's good. Okay, ah, what's happening? Oh, yeah, 52. Ah, why is it back at eight? So, yeah, I don't know, man. Just February 13th, like we said. February 13th. It will be Valentine's Day the day before. Yeah, I made two flips today. We flipped UNH and Wells Fargo. We went two for two on those, and then that's it. Greece to get F-35 jets pending congressional approval. Come on, Ricky Martin. They scam me on Ricky Martin, Habibi. Uh, where more bank? Need to see more banks. JPM again, another high. Why aren't we long? Well, I think we all already missed it. Uh, but even then, I'm. I think China will outperform if we have a recession. But a after what I witnessed, I'm not like in the last year. I just I don't like China anymore. I used to be down. I'd rather I'm like when it's all said and done, the foreign countries I would rather invest in would be uh. Uh, Latin America like all day but China that's it it's over I think even if they recover no matter what they had you know what I'm saying it's just that after witnessing them straight up yeah India too but after witnessing them take a straight sledgehammer to industries IPO companies and then pull them the next day off the US stock market the way they went after the tech companies there that shit is, I've never, like, it should have been expected given it's China, but that's it. I think it kind of, it kind of ruined it for me. But I would say Latin America and India would be where, where you'd want to go, especially if you feel like you're late on China. What's like an India ETF? Like, can you get the NFTY, the Nifty? I think that's an ETF. And Spy's about to hit a high. Yeah, bro. Like the Nifty 50. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's already up, bro. This it's just up a lot. So I'd kind of want to wait a little bit more, but this one wouldn't. I would. I'd rather go with India. I'd rather. I'd grab an India ETF. Hopper on test loan. We can't talk about it. You saw what happened yesterday? We woke up at 116 after yesterday. Honestly, it looks kind of like it's getting... Is Elon selling? Low-key, though? I hate when you see it because you see it get this pressure, but it's like low-key. It's like stair-stepping down, but it's I guess it's still holding here. buy now and hold for 30 years in the emerging markets, India or Latin America, any day. Like, again, I like Brazil. Uh, I like Brazil a lot, uh, even though they have some of that turmoil. I, I like Mexico, too. Honestly, I think Mexico, I am very bullish on Mexico. I don't even have anything related to it, but that is somewhere. I think we have a little bit more time uh, if we're going to make a 30-year investment, but uh, India... Mexico, Brazil, and even then, like Colombia, even there's a lot of places in Latin America that are good, but 
Uh, I do think uh, Mexico is hard. Like they're just like, bro. They're. I think Mexico is gonna be a force. Like, I think Mexico is gonna become the new Canada, but just not Canadian. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's just so. I love it. I, I think they got a. I think they got a different level of culture, resources, and I think the the people of Mexico, they they want a lot, and they know they could get a lot more, and they and I think they're gonna get it in the right way. And it's just kind of, you know, it's, I, I love it. Honestly, I think they, they're embedded with, uh, you know, a good work ethic and they, you know, and I think they've also gone through enough where they know they can, uh, when, if they do start developing more and more, they're going to do, do a lot better. Obviously, well, I mean, cartels is one thing, but you gotta, you gotta really look into it. Everywhere is corrupt, you motherfucker. <laughs> like, let's be real. Yeah, you know, you call it a cartel, you call it a cartel in Mexico, it's called a militia in Africa, it's called uh, the Taliban in the Middle East, right, you know what I'm saying, so it's just like, and then it's called the government in China, and then it's also called the government in the United States, so it's, uh, it's, every area has that, and that's the always, that's the whole risk uh, with uh, any emerging market, is corruption. That's what happens all the time. I've told you this. Like Nigeria is one of the richest countries in the world. People don't realize that. Where does the money go? It goes into the pockets of their Nancy Pelosi's, but they make way more than Nancy Pelosi because they are not as developed and they it's, you know, they they could just steal it blatantly instead of having to put it into a filing. So I I'm I would say you have to factor that in with every analysis of every country, but I, I do like I do like Mexico a lot, uh, and I think Mexico even with whatever else they have, uh, they they got a lot of good stuff going there. But Brazil as well, and then uh, again India on the other side of the world, uh, there uh, India is going to be the new China. Donnie shares in India. He took third spot. Yeah. I just like all of it. I think a broad-based India ETF with enough time will, will be good. My work ethic is insane. I just don't work too hard, I guess. Just consistency. Somebody said it the other day. They were like, uh, it's like every just every sort of success starts with consistency. So that's why we got to save 10% consistent. Let's go, baby. Indian stock market is at all-time high. Partly, they're, they've been doing very good. They've just had growth. You got to realize, like, Every, even with inflation and everything else going on, like they're still growing at like nine, ten percent. Nowhere else grows like that. And then again, te the, the technology adoption in India is huge. But that's what they do. Like you got to realize, like even as and then as China gets more developed and China's middle class has widened out, what do you think they do in China? China treats India like we treat Mexico. That's the simplest way to put it, because now as they get more developed, all dude, they're out. You know how much China business gets outsourced to India, bro. My guy in China, Olivier, you know how much they outsource to India is crazy. It's absolutely insane. So like as these companies in China get bigger and more developed and as they get into like financial services and other stuff, and then as, especially with the government crackdown, they outsource the work to India. Because it's right next to them. It's, it's just so just like how we're right next to Mexico. Like, you know how many cars are built in Mexico? It's the same same type of logic there. Well, in a little bit.
Mm. All right. Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. I love you. To Kriti Gupta. So Kriti, I'm gonna go pee. Do? Well, it's all coming down to the macroeconomic picture, which is ultimately that the Federal Reserve is looking to hike in two weeks by what the market thinks is only going to be 25 basis points. Now, that's trickling into not just the market reaction you're seeing today, but of course, the bank sector specifically, because the banks have had some pretty record profits in the last year, specifically led by their trading division. That's kind of almost offset the pain you've seen in investment banking and deals um, and of course their wealth management businesses as well which are far more exposed to kind of the slowdown that you're seeing nevertheless this time around and this is what makes it so much worse the trading activity is slowing down as well and missing and that just simply makes it a function of the volatility that you're seeing actually coming back down as inflation comes back down as it decelerates as the federal reserve starts to really stick to their messaging that volatility goes down as well which is going to start impacting of the trading profits in addition to the slowdown you're already seeing on their consumer businesses on their uh, investment banking businesses and then of course their uh, lending businesses as so well. let's go all the way from the banks over to the auto sector or maybe the tech sector i'm not sure which it is and yeah. tesla are you going to find a test in the bargain bin these days it almost feels like it, and it's the same story at the end of the day. They're worried about that macroeconomic risk, so they're trying to target more and more people when it comes to whether or not their Teslas are actually going to sell. So today, I think the big news that's really getting kind of overshadowed by some of the banks is this Tesla share move. It's down about 2% right now, but it was down as much as 6% in the pre-market, and it really speaks to the idea that they are now cutting some of their model prices by 20%. Imagine getting a $21,000 wow. reduction on a Tesla car, and it's really to say, look, here not only is a cheaper price, but in addition, it now qualifies for a federal tax credit. Wow. Quite a story. Thank you so much, Kriti. Always great to talk to you. You can catch Kriti again anchoring at 1 p.m. Eastern time on Bloomberg Markets. Coming up, banks warned about possible weakening of the economy in their earnings reports today. We'll talk about the state of the banks and also the state of the economy with Sheila Baer. Man, the banks ain't. I can't. I'm shocked that the banks went up, bro. I thought they would have at least chilled. And now JP Morgan's up too. It's not 7%, but still. Thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. Family has land in Mexico. It's good, man, especially if it's the tourism in Mexico is hot, too. I know a lot of Airbnbs in Mexico are doing very well. It's a nice place. You're in India and on vacation everywhere. They're big apartments, literally everywhere. It's like China, but the housing seems to be loving it. Yeah, India is it's it's gonna be the new China. It's gonna take time. Like China didn't become China overnight, but that's it's literally one of the only places in the world with the population and ability to actually replicate what China did. Uh, again, they have a different. Oh, and I, I think to the benefit of the different culture could end up helping it but that will be a place like I, I think in the next 20 30 years you will watch a lot of India come out of poverty just like China that's what a lot of people don't realize like do you realize back in the day up until like even the 90s even the early 2000s most of China was impoverished it wasn't like a rich nation it did not have what it what it has today like you know and now granted they use the different method and a lot of other things but it's the same thing with India. You will watch a lot of people. You will watch it go from a, a more impoverished nation to an actually prosperous nation. But it takes time. It's not. It takes time and you could have setbacks with governments and corruption and other things. But we'll see. Big fan, though. Big fan. Fira seven. I have never been to India. No, I have not. I've ever, I've only been a couple of places. I really just stay inside. Sadly, I mean, I've been a lot of. I've, have you been to California? I've been to a lot of California. I see. I drive. I've drive many miles in California. I know a lot of California. But that's about it. I don't really go anywhere else. 
then Credit Suisse can rebound eventually. I mean, we kind of stopped hearing about Credit Suisse. But my girl tells me how much she hates them. She says they're the worst. Move to Florida. <laughs> My mom is just like discovering things about California. She's like, do you know they let them do this? And then she's like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, mom. I'm like, why do you think everybody asks us why we still live in California? But like if you're an adult and like you don't have to like put your kids in schools here and like if you just go and just live away from everybody, it's nice. We got the beach, but I'd be down to move, but not really. It's kind of weird. I'm in an awkward situation. And like I was even telling a, a mutual friend, somebody was trying to get a lot of properties in Texas and other places. And it's just like, in a weird way, California is literally one of the best places for real estate. Because like you go everywhere else, they got higher property taxes and you don't get the appreciation. And then you don't get a beach, a nice beach. Yeah, but beach in Florida. Yeah, you also have this thing called hurricanes. I, you know how many hurricanes I've been in my life? Exactly. They said it's going to flood in California. they like, it's flooding. They're like, Josh, are you okay? I'm like, it's 60 degrees and sunny right now. I saw rain for like 12 minutes this week. <laughs> I swear to you, it was 12 minutes of rain and a couple of clouds. That's it. My homies in L.A., they closed Laurel Canyon. And that was about it for the closed Laurel Canyon for like a day or two. And everywhere else was chilling, bro. You got earthquakes. I know exactly. We trade in hurricane. I haven't felt the earthquake in a minute. Knock on wood. When it does, it's going to get clapped. But that's fine with me, bro. I'll take an earthquake any day. Not really. I'm terrified. And I don't think. Have I mentioned the beach? Yeah. Did I tell you about this beach we got? We got like mad beaches. Yeah, mad beaches. Beaches everywhere. You see, you got beaches and beaches. <laughs> Anyways. Sweet home San Diego. Bow, 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 bow. I'm out coming home to you. Mm -hmm. Miami over L.A. any day. I mean, I'm not even really a L.A. fan anymore. Like, I, I when, when I was younger, I loved L.A. I, lo I don't think anything like, especially in the golden era before it got too crazy, bro. There was like a golden era of L.A., bro. That shit was it where you could like, bro, you could you could drive around. You could flex. You could go to the nicest place and not get robbed. It was so nice, bro. It was crazy. It was crazy. You had everything. You had food. You know, every like I'm telling. But now I don't know. I'm not really. I'm, I got old. That's it. I went back to San Diego. I live a nice family lifestyle. That's it. That's it. I'm a I'm an old man now, but I'm just that was good. Miami was cool though. I liked Miami when I went, but it was still like Miami. They too, they too pretty for me. Like L. A. Bro, I told that L. A. You could walk around with like sweatpants and you could look like a total bum and they'll know you're a millionaire. Miami. You got to be wearing shit. You got to look. You got to do your makeup. Even the guys do makeup there. You got to get an eyebrow piercing. You got to frost your tips. And then they still won't even let you in, bro. And they still like, they got, you got to like, it's too much. Too much keeping up with appearances. L.A. is fine. L.A., you wear a sweater. You wear a sweater and sweats. They're like, he's famous. I would wear a hat and people would be like, are you a director? I said, nah, bro. In Miami, they're like, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, what? That's crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. Even the dudes wear makeup. They do. They got you gotta look good in Miami, bro. That's it. I'm too ugly for Miami. It's still cool. Like it's fine. Even then, like it wasn't 
you know, people would still talk to you, but like you still like, nah, man, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to fucking get ready and do my makeup to go and get dinner. You just see what I wear to dinners, bro. My girl get ready. My girl look beautiful, and I, I just look, I, I, I'm, I just rock the sweats in the TTF bowl, bro. And we chilling out there, and they're like, oh, they, they give me excellent service out here. That's it. In Miami, they be like, nah, bro. Mm-hmm. That's why Sam went to the Bahamas. Oh yeah, they would have eaten him up alive. He couldn't. He couldn't last in Miami. I like Texas. Texas was humid, and humid, and then it's Texas. <laughs> but I, I like Texas though. It was Everybody was so nice in Texas. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So I don't know, like, bro, and I don't know if my girlfriend is listening. This was years ago. Years ago when I went, I remember, bro. Everybody is so nice to you. I've never had that many girls come up to me and talk to me and be so nice. And you could go up to any girl in Texas and talk to them, and they will smile at you, and they'll say hello. And they're so nice, bro. It's cra- I'm, no, I'm not talking about Houston. Houston's a different part of Texas. I'm anywhere else in Texas, bro. I'm just like, bro, they were so n- I've never had that happen in my life. Ever. Ever. So that's it. You were, it's, that, was the, that was chill. Houston, they just shoot you. <laughs> That's it. Houston, you just get shot. That's all. I, I saw a story the other day. This happened the other day in Houston. Houston, they were like some guy was going home from Planet Fitness, and four girls asked him for a ride, and he said yes. And then they got him to stop, and then two people with guns came out and shot him and robbed him, and he drove off with the girls still in his car. I was like, what? I said, that's, that's normal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nah, I like, I, 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 I like making jokes about Houston. Don't kill me, please. Okay, relax. It's okay. All right. <laughs> nah, but Texas is cool. But I don't know if I could live in Texas. It's like, it's just, it's humid, bro. It's humid. Mm-hmm. Would I would it <laughs> when would a girl ever I thought you said would I ever give a girl a ride if she asked? Hell no. I would look, I would say, hey, if I got like a I was like, you got Uber? No, but I mean here's a ten dollar bill. I gotta go. I'm sorry. Oh nope. I get sketched out too easily. That's it. Even if a girl smile at me, I get sketched out. I say, nah, this is suspicious. My girlfriend ain't smile at me when I met her. She looked pissed. <laughs> she looked, she didn't even, nah, like she looked like she was mad at me when I first saw her. I was like, damn. So I wasn't even sketched out. If she, if she did smile at me, I would have been like, nah, 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 nah. Nah, my girlfriend acted like she hated me initially. I was like, I was like, I don't think she likes me. I all oh, like I don't think this is no 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 Mhm Kanye got married apparently You mean Oklahoma girl I think everybody in the south is just nice Everything in the south is just nice Mm-hmm. She was hardcore judging me. She still she doesn't judge me as much anymore. I think she got used to it. But nah, I, when I first met her, I was like, this girl hates me. <laughs> it's like that's why I, th- I think that's why I liked her too. I was like, yeah, she hates me. This is good. This is good. I'm not worried. I'm not. That's it. I get to, there wasn't no fakeness involved. Mm-hmm. Tesla sub a hundred. You just want problems, huh? Is that what you're doing? You just want to mess with people today? That's what you're doing? You want to you want to crush hopes and dreams, Jorge? There are condescending pricks in this. I'm all oh, dude. I don't I felt like it was just weird, bro. I felt like they were I felt like I was on a Texas tour and everybody was like trying to be nice to me to get like my tax dollars and property tax. 
because it was weird. Every person was so nice. You no, know, I went. I went all across. I went from San Antonio to uh, Dallas. So only only two places. <laughs> but everywhere I went, everybody was so nice. It was insane. It was the weirdest shit I've ever experienced. Old people, young people, guys, girls, everybody was just nice. And I was like, this is weird. I was like, I kind of, I said, this is very nice, but this is weird. I was just like, this is weird, bro. Mm hmm. While we talk about my, I don't know how we got into this conversation, to be honest with you, but it's Friday. And again, if it's been over about two hours with the market at the same price, we usually begin ranting about God knows what else it is. You feel like somebody wants something from you? Well, let me give you a tip of advice in life. Yes, that's how it usually works. There's an old, old, old lesson I've taught you, and I've learned this a while ago. Are you ready? Every, every person wants something, and every person is afraid of something. So there you go. That's what I realized. That's what I realized. Sometimes I'm not what people want. And that's fine with me. I like that. I'm like, good. That's good. That's why it is. Uh huh. Everybody. You too. If you think they don't, man, why you think they so nice to you? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You think they just accepted you because they didn't want to get canceled? Nah, they want something from you. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. What I'm afraid of. The Lord coming back and my mother. Those two things terrify me. Both of those. That's it. Cause you know, that's it. That's all it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Now I sold out of Wells Fargo, but again, if you held it, you made more. You're killing it right now, man. You ever get wrecked in the market early on? To what degree? How did you change things? All the time. All the time. Again, I mean, the the weird part is, is like I've just been doing this for a really long time now. And I know I don't I don't realize it that many times. And I don't think people do when I tell them some of these stories. But like I got wrecked back and forth all over. I don't even know how I figured out certain things, but I would get wrecked and then I would do the same thing. Then I would get wrecked and then I would kind of change it. And then I go back to the same thing and then I get wrecked. So it was like you, you kind of the only thing over that 15, 16 years has been the long term, which I've noticed will always, always outperform. Always. No matter what I did, even if I would go up a, a better than the long term or not, it would just always would be there. And there was something about never losing it. But it was a mix of, you know, the, the reckonings will, will teach you to, to change things up. And then you learn, you get you just get more advanced, you get more mature as you spend more time with it. But ultimately it's just a matter of uh, just time in the game. And that's, that's the thing. I just, I, I guess the one thing that was good and bad. And I think a lot of you guys have it, even the people who joke around with me when I'm trying to give them real advice, even the people who insist on gambling, you know what I'm saying? Like I understand. And like you, you have, you have the quality that I possessed is I was just stubborn enough never to fucking quit no matter what. Even if I would get wrecked and I would come back and do the same thing and I would get wrecked again and I would slightly change it and then I'll go back and like I said, I'll get wrecked again. But there was the one thing about never, like I would never, I never accepted defeat in this game. I would get sad at times and I would get depressed and I would feel a certain way, but it was just like legitimately, I have given my time to the market. I, I straight up, I've spent more than half of my life here. You know what I'm saying? And it's just something that I've made where no matter what is just that is a big element. Damn you, Wells Fargo, 43. Now, I'm not talking about a play. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm straight up like years, bro. Like some of y'all have just made it through the last three years with me. That should be enough to make you fucking quit, go home crying. But it's just like it's always finding. I've always found a way to even go about trading, even if it would if I blow up accounts. I just always found a way. And then you get better. You start learning to not fucking give them your money. But then also the long term as well. And then as you get wiser with it, you're like, wait, maybe I should just be holding more of this than not. Yeah, Wells Fargo's running now. I'm going to cry. Not really. Uh, but that's what it comes down to. And I think that that's half of the battle 
Because a lot of people, dude, you know how many people just you're here for a little bit and then they're gone or then right when they go through like you're like, you know, maybe you know how many people really say maybe this isn't for me. And I've had those thoughts before and I've, I've definitely questioned, you know, what I was doing uh, early on or maybe the first five to five to ten years probably. But it's just like you staying in the game is one thing. That's why I encourage you all to just fucking learn it and learn the right way early. Uh, and just, I, I hope you don't take some of this stuff I tell you for granted because like you better, you better learn this stuff now because you'll, this is where it's easy to spin your wheels for many, many years. And it's just like wise up with it and don't doubt the long term. Cause if I didn't have the long term, bro, I would have been fucked up. I wouldn't, I, my life would be completely different and I wouldn't have had shares to look back on and be like, Oh, that's what works. And then again, I've, I've got to refine the trading over the years and you get to go with it. And, and that's that's what it comes down to. But it's one part staying in the game, but it's also don't be a don't be a slow learner is, I guess, the other thing I would tell you when it's all said and done. You're learning shit and you know what you should be doing. But like, just don't be a slow learner. That's all. Like, again, you you hear the shit I'm telling you with 10%. You hear what I'm saying. Get that 10% before trading. Do whatever you want. You know what's going to happen when you trade the meme stocks. You know what the fuck is going to happen. Like, you see, I know what was going to happen, too. Again, even if there's a period where it doesn't happen, like, nah, you know. And it's just like, be a fast learner. That's all. If it's going to take you a year and all of your money every time to learn something, or it's going to take all of your money in three years to learn the lesson that you were presented in year one. That's that. It just, it, I don't think you'll fail, but I think it's going to be a long journey. And that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't tell you this stuff. I tell you this after being in the middle of my long journey. Again, I'm on 15, 16 years plus now. And it's just like, I've, that's it. I, good thing I got in young and good thing I did this over and over and over again. But it's there and you'll, you'll realize the potential of the, of quality. And, and that's what you should be focusing on, but you will learn to refine the trading, but just hopefully you stay in the game. And that's why to me in a weird way, you know, I'm not as good as a poker player as I am a budgeter. That is where I'm scary. That's the thing. That's why I could even sit down at a poker table. I might not even be the best at poker, but I could fucking play a lot of hands. It's all about budget. It's the same thing with trading and you have to be able to do that as well too. Man, I would have got two bucks on that. But that's something I encourage you, like, trade however you want, dog. Great. But you better learn to fucking budget right now. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I don't know if you're on year number one, year number three, year number five. That's why I'm telling you 10%. But it's just like you better learn budget and you better you better learn basic risk management because that is what is going to at least keep you alive or make sure you don't destroy yourself too far or too fast. But that right there, like everyone's going to have, you're going to have your different trading style. You're going to refine it. Everyone's going to try to sell you a different style too. But at the end of the day, it's budget and, and risk management. And that right there will, will at least give you a lot more life in this game than not. And that, that's what you got to do. No, I traded Wells Fargo shares. Just, I flipped them 300 bucks. And then I flipped 300 bucks on UNH today too. Stops could save you. I've never used them. And a stop, I think, is a bullshit form of what I'm saying. Do I think you should use them with big amounts of money and certain assets? But at the end of the day, you should be thinking two steps ahead of your stop. You should know what would happen if I went down to this amount at my stop. And would I still have enough money to do this? How much is it going to cost me? How much is it going to tie up my other plays? And the point is... I just wouldn't play with anything I would stop with. And that that's what I, I really got to learn very, very easily. It's just that you've got to be two steps ahead of a stop loss. It's not about a stop loss. Why? Because it just that you just sell out and now you're left with an amount. But now what? Right? It's just like where it's realizing things can, and then I've seen things move up and down way more than I've ever expected. And that's why I don't like the stops. And it just use a appropriate amount and instead, if you're worried about a stop, go lower your balance. Like, why would you stop out at 2% instead of just trading with half the amount and then be able to let it fluctuate a little bit longer? I sit at the poker table and talk about budgeting. Nah, bro. 
I just I'm an idiot at the poker table. They have no idea what. And then I just ask questions, and they they don't know if I'm scamming them or if I'm if I'm actually stupid. And then they ask you where you're from, and then if I can have opportunity to crack jokes, I will. But that's about it. That's litter. That's about it. Mm. You started in 2022 and did not have stops. Very difficult. If you had a budget, though, you would have been good. Again, a, a, a budget, discipline, and a broader risk management. I mean, again, everybody has their own opinion, but like I'm saying, it's just this is something I would learn real quick is that the you got to have more discipline than a stop. I don't think a stop loss is discipline. You see what I'm saying? I just, I think it's an easy trick and it makes people feel safe when it's not really, that's not really the element at play. It's not about just setting a stop loss or a gain or whatever. It's, it's really about knowing your balance and what you're working with and working that balance both in one play to the next and moving forward. Well, we haven't done anything. And I don't know why JP Morgan keeps going up. Do you think we should add money to an options account after putting in 10% in the long term? Do whatever you want. Just get 10% to the long term. 10% saved, which could be used long-term, whatever else you want. Anything after that is your choice to experiment with, figure it out. But at the end of the day, it's all about the 10%. I would then say go with shares, but then again, I don't I don't care. It's, it's on you. You will find your opportunity. You'll find what works with you. Why is Wells Fargo doing this to me? <laughs> That's fire, though. They're killing it out. Fifteen percent long term, ten percent day trade. Hey man, you met the minimum. That's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. That Uber play is old. I had the Uber play for a couple months ago and I got clapped on it. I bought it on December first. So now it just came positive. So I bought it right here, like December 1st. And then I, I liked the breakout. They had good guidance. And then the market just started getting clapped. Or they did. And then I'm back up to it. Why didn't you set a stop order? I just, I was content. I didn't want to lose. So I just, I like winning. That's all. That's all I, I'm going to miss out on some and I can look at them and be like, oh man. But at the end of the day, that's, I mean, you're going to miss out on some and not, but otherwise there's no point of putting a stop loss where I was up on it. And then it automatically sells out. If I go to break even like, fuck that. Uh, that's it. I just missed out on extra like two, 300 bucks. But at the end of the day, I got all my money back. I increased my cash balance, and that's what I'm going for. Two-year. We need the 10-year. Yeah, J.P. Morgan's crazy. I forgot. We bought some JP. Our last J.P. Morgan purchase was at 116, so this is killer. But even then, all of this is just... I wanted more though on JP Morgan, but 13% plus the dividends. I'm not bad, but I'm just shocked by its movement. Do they look for stop losses? I believe that, but I think that's hotly contested, but that's all it comes down to. I just, I don't, I don't use them. You know what I'm saying? That's it. I mean, I like I'm saying you could use them if you want, do whatever you need to do, but I'm saying there's, by saying you use a stop loss, 
that does not apply to your budgeting and how to manage risk in a weird way. It's a one way you can manage your risk, but that is not a broader budget management and risk management. Otherwise, I think you'd have a lot more successful people in finance if that was the case. And this applies to everywhere in life. You could bring it to a poker table. You could bring it to real estate, everything. Man. That's beautiful. I can't believe the banks just did this, though. Dude, Wells Fargo is up now like 7 8% in a day. And then JP is doing at least 5 6 I don't know. The banks, I think the guidance sounded a little worrisome. But I just think they turned around as it wasn't it wasn't that bad. And then all of them are making hand over fist on net interest income. Yeah, you're starting to go up here a little bit. All right, we might get into this. It's only 10 o'clock now. Do I believe the Wells Fargo? They're all doing it. It's going to stop eventually, but the banks, all the banks are squeezing. It's not just Wells Fargo. That's it. It did this on the last drop, too. I remember I tried to short them that one time. It did the exact same thing, but I just thought giving like 5% was a big drop. Again, I bought it when it was still negative. I just didn't think it would go positive. I would have hit like 3 4% on that, but that was a wild one. I think Proverbs is coming back. I think they just wanted to shake everybody out and scam them. Dude, I'm telling you, this one was this one's funny. <laughs> We're like, it looks so good. Then no, then now what? They hate us, bro. It's just oh, this is that's what I'm saying. Emotions stops. Just I mean, try to stick to a broader plan, and then don't put an amount that makes you uncomfortable to not hold it or even go down. If that makes sense. You know, one guy said he was selling. I think they were just talking smack every time it comes down. Everyone just gets weak. That's why I'm like, everyone's just quick to talk on everything. But that's why I'm not quick to talk when it goes up because I know it could come down. That's why, like, you know, just, I don't know. We've seen this so many times on every day. We do it every single day. So either way, again, February 13th. That's all it is. February 13th. You should know what that means. I think day trading, you'll find your niche. It's easy to do it with shares than options. But at the end of the day, uh, you shouldn't be day trading if you're not saving 10% of your money for the long term. 10% of every dollar you touch. Today is Friday the 13th. Uh huh. Yeah, the 6J, he's been doing work. Even the bonds, I'm sad they dropped. I had a good gain on the bonds earlier. Oh, maybe. Yeah, watch for that 115 move. Uh-huh. I forgot about it. We saw it two days in a row. What goes up must come down, but we ain't coming down. I got the same all man. Lumma, 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 lumma. It's a man wet slide. Yeah. Ain't got a trip. Ain't got a why they ain't saving 10% when a man wet thing on with the long time from out. What you think I live on a farm? Hey, my hubby who watches from the Xbox, show me the stream is finally here at the same time I am. Let's go, Mr. and Mrs. West, baby. 
What's up, man? We love y'all. <laughs> and 10%, 10% of every dollar you touch needs to be saved. All of y'all. You can't even know no Xbox without 10% saved. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. 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 Ten percent, six months of living already in the bank before any real money put at risk. Shit, man, you don't even need it. I'm not telling you even do six months. Just ten percent of every dollar you touch for the rest of your life. You do that, we are gonna be good. And especially with this market and whatever it does, we are gonna be good. You know what I'm saying? Amen. That's it. That's it. I went from what the hook. I know. I was just I was going through all of them, man. I was going for all of them. Wells Fargo. Oh, yeah, the Wells Fargo's hit. Bro, both the earnings plays. Even if you played options on whatever we bought, you would have been good. But here's the irony on both UNH and all of them from when the timing was excellent. So I made money on the shares. You would have made a lot with the options too. But the best part is on like the Wells Fargo, I never went down once. So technically, I didn't really even put any, I put money at risk, but there was no drawdown. There was no effect of if it cooled down. It was just profit right from the get-go on both of these. So it was good though. That one was just straight timing. If you were there, whatever vehicle you bought, it was good. He really wants to see the bubbles for next Friday. I got you. With the hook going to be, uh-oh. See, I ain't need no hook on this beat. All I need is the long term in the background. They don't feel me. HKD is not a long term. No, never. I don't even know what a HKD does. Is next week the 20th? Oh, wow. With earnings? Honestly, the bubbles are whack now lately. Actually, I guess 390 puts have 1 billion. 400 calls have 1 billion. 385 puts, 700 million. 1 billion at 410. It's actually, they're kind of growing now. This is a lot bigger than any of the expirations we've seen this year. Or this, I guess, in the last two weeks. There's a lot of calls, but there's still like 385 down to 380 puts, even 375s, but then there's 390 puts is the biggest, and then 400, 410, and I think 415s. Even 450 calls are kind of growing. As it's being held, I'm I'm just going to keep it small. Just keep that one small, kind of let it do its thing. It's either going to totally plummet, but I think you'll get a random pop at some point. You mean put it in the long term? Yeah, so I was like, no, dude, I don't even know what a HKD does, bro. <laughs> See, that one's not going to five. Man, Wells Fargo loves you. There you go. GG if you hit those. I want to know where the money was at. It's bigger. I'm glad we actually looked because, like, last time we've kept looking at it for the last, like, last week and the week's prior, it was very, very small. But that one actually is getting above a billion. Last time we checked it, none of them were getting above like 300, 200 million notional. RKLB, CNBC, Spiker, Rocket Labs, Coca-Cola's on the high. Again, Wells Fargo is just insane now. It's bittersweet. You'll have to go 10% from the bottom like nothing for real. Bro, I bought it at negative 1.2, and now it's 2. Point, that's, that's a 4% move from when we got it. I sold I sold out at, like, I think 2.5%. Uh, so I left another 2 on the table. But great. Yeah, there is some. You got Monday close, then PPI, but really, I don't even know. The data, unless it's actually, like, right now, the Fed futures are starting to bully. So I don't know what data will really move it. You're going to get PPI, building permits, and then jobs will be the only other one, and then existing homes. But by that point, you're going to get more earnings from banks and then Procter Gamble. And then uh, and then what's it called? 
Procter Gamble, and then Netflix, obviously. The banks are making interest on loans, uh huh. Well, the, they should be able to make more by the time people can't pay them back, but they're also making interest from the Fed. So two red candles at the high there. The we, if you bought the dailies when we bought the, the shares, you still would have made bank. Same thing with UNH, but if you do go look at anything with more time, it, they all got clapped, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> You know, welcome to option land, you know, very, very confusing how they do it. I like, like, look at this. So when did we buy Wells Fargo? That was just ill timing. So 721. So like we were right here, I guess that'd be like 1021. So we bought like right around here. And that one went from three cents to a dollar if you held it. But then, like, if you sold out when I sold out, I think it was around here, you would have made three cents to 11. And then the ones deep in the money, these ones actually went, these ones only went up like 100%. And they're like deep in the money, low key. So the 42s, this one went up like 200%. That's the daily. So you have to take daily risk, right? So let's see what happened on the January 20th. These ones, if you bought the dip here, you would have made actually 500%, but then you would have been clapped if you bought it any time before. So I guess the only way to make money is if you bought the dip after earnings. But now these ones are at least higher, but you got 20% from the other day. And then the ones with more time, they went up a lot, but still just clapped on the week. Mm. Rosal Khan Your one year membership badge Saved you from being reborn Next time I don't know I don't know I don't know Just join Co International Real Estate Baby let's go Motivation get the license And some 10% baby Game time It's gonna be difficult but you will reap what you sow, my friend. It's happening. What's happening? U-Haul. I mean, good company, actually. I think they still got a premium. I don't know if I'm... Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. HBI puts. I think the or the update was good. I'm. I think they got kind of killed with the, with today. But I'm still actually kind of bullish off of the guidance. Yeah, give it. Let's see what happens. One fifteen. We might. We might get one of those weird balances. You got JP at an average of 115. Oh, yeah, that's killer. Even the per we got one pickup at 115, and it's amazing. And then at 115, I think you're yielding 4%. That's the crazy part. So right now, JP Morgan yields 2.8. I think at 116, 120, it's like a four and a half yield, which is fire. So that's the thing. We're even, we got JPM. We're up 13% on the long term. And that one, remember, we, we put a lot of deposits into it. So in a weird way, you know, 13% is making us almost as much as 40% on HBI, right? Because we have it. But then you're getting 4% divvy on that one, four and a half, I believe. So it's dope. But remember, I told you why I bought HBI. I was like, well, look at $3,000 of HBI will pay me the same amount of dividends as almost 10 grand of JP Morgan. I think JPM will come down to 120 again, uh, depending on what happens in the broader economy.
JP Morgan had earnings and they were down two and a half percent. All the banks are, bro. This one was a like that bullish sentiment is not leaving because you had a you had a little bit of a shake up here with the uh you had a little bit of a shake up here with the um with the bank earnings, but they all just they ate it up. It just took them a little bit. It was slow and steady for the first couple of hours. I hope my income estimator works. It wasn't working yesterday. There it is. You see anybody? And this one, you see, it doesn't show your yield because it just takes it based at where it's at now. But like, this is what I was showing you guys at the beginning of the, when we bought HBI. And remember, we made 1300 on HBI. So do you guys get the idea? So if you wanted to buy HBI right now, it would cost you $4,000, but it would pay the same dividend as when we bought it for $3,000. But that's what I was saying here is that JP Morgan pretty much almost $10,000 of JP Morgan, three grand of HBI pays you almost what? $50, $60 more in divvies. If you sell and buy back at the same price, does that affect your yield? Uh, um, I mean, I'm short circuiting. I don't, I don't think it would do anything. It's the same shit. So like if you, uh, <laughs> like if you bought it at a, at like, let's say it's like me buying HBI and then selling out and then buying back right away, my cost basis would say I'm higher, but you would get the same amount of dividends. So the whole logic is how many shit, how much dividends do you get? for shares that's all that really matters but technically it's just if you sold out and then you're buying in then you have the profit it's not really uh i don't know it's just it's the same thing see that's why like it says our portfolio is 4.8 but i think that's just based on where it, but our yield on cost is just so much better so it's good It's not bad. We add one more. If we get one more company that pays out in March, we'll be doing like a solid 200, but it's like 234 bucks a month. And now remember by reinvesting it, I hope you get what's happening. That just means we're adding $231 a month to our long term without ever buying anything. That's just off our dividend reinvestments. HBI pays in March. Yeah. Next payday. So X dividend will be February 13th. So that's why like part of like when you watch the long term, it's yeah, one thing is part depositing, right? But another part is like over those last couple years, we've added a decent amount of money just from buying more shares. But that's just the dividend reinvestments. And then our dividends go up by a couple dollars every time. And then that's it. 100 monthly ad, that's beautiful. It's nice. It's just, I mean, free money. Free money, dog. Free money. And we'll see where this turns into one day. We'll see what happens. You know, that's that's the beauty. You, It may even be small now, but you'll be surprised. I don't think E-Trade gives it. I've, I've never really used it for them. Upward trending slope in a bear market. I mean, that's why, I mean, again, especially if you've been riding with me, man, like, I hope you know finger to the sky, bro. Like, that's it. Like, for us to even walk away, even with the end of that last year, and just picking up stuff that's good, you know? And, like, that should have, that, that we just padded the stats, bro. We just, we somehow just got a fat cushion on the long term, just right there by that last six months with what we pulled off, so... I'm glad we put in the work and got serious and saved how we did and all of that because, dude, it's it's chill. It's chill. That should encourage you. I hope it added some relief to those who needed it.
And then now J.P. Morgan just, that one's weird. I don't know why the Bonds are getting killed. Maybe their game of chicken is kind of calming down. But then the Fed futures are still up a decent amount. Performance on the long term, impressive after last year. As much as I want to say it's impressive, it's adequate. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're still down. It's it's a little bit. And then, I mean, net yield is positive because of the divvies and everything else, but it's adequate. And that's all. It's just like we could have died, and then we'll see. Those last pickups we got, I mean, it's it's beautiful to have, but it's, it's adequate, and that's all we need. Because like I'm saying, at the end of the day, in a world where people have lost money, a lot of people are down, you're like on the cusp of recession, and it's just like if we just have our money and then now even have cushion on things, that's just that's exactly what we want. Is that it? Is it doing it again? 115, watch for the option rebalance. Yeah, Wells Fargo is just, they're doing it, bro. <laughs> 115. I think we found out another time frame. This one wasn't as big, though. Let's go. Yeah. Well, let's see, though, because the other two were massive the last couple of days. The heat map, I don't I know. Look at heat map. I have the book map. Why so many maps? You know. My favorite sports player of all time. Some people don't like this one. But without a doubt, Allen Iverson. Like, by far. Like, Allen Iverson or bust. He's not a great role model at all. Mm hmm. AI, bro. Always. Always. AI, I just, I love him. I love him. I don't have any J.P. Morgan plays. We flipped Wells Fargo. I have J.P. Morgan for the long term. That's it. Reverse repo rug pull. Practice. There's everything, bro. You uh, He would say he would visualize game. I've read his books. I would read his books as a kid. I loved him. He's short like me. He defied all odds. He got personality. They didn't. They always judged him, and they didn't like him for his personality and just pound for pound better. No, he's better than Kobe. If he was Kobe's height, he would have made Kobe look like a little boy. He would have. He would have put. He would have doubled Kobe's numbers. Mhm. Mm I still love Kobe. Kobe's number two, but nah, 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 nah. He's dude. This AI, bro. I don't. The, the dude is like my height, and he's just ill. Scoring titles, everything. Worst take of all time. No, bro, go read his book. They say he's six foot. He's really like five foot eight, five or like five foot ten. He always with dog, dude. I'm telling you, he's the illest. I think even Michael Jordan said something along those lines too. Bro, AI is the best pound for pound. Like if this was like a equal weighting, and like if we did like an equal weighted index against all players in basketball, he was literally the best. No other person could be. I think even Kobe even said it. Yeah, it was Kobe or MJ said that. I know. It's okay. I love Kobe, too. I got all the Kobe stuff. He's the worst. AI is the worst with money. I know. It's weird. No, bro. He's the best. He won a scoring. He would beat Kobe in scoring titles.
Mm-hmm. No one cares about equal weight indexes. I know, but even non, even non-weighted, non-equal weight AI still held his own. That's it. That's that's it. And he didn't have, bro. And he he came up practicing on a court in Philadelphia, or wherever. Was it Ohio? I think. Like, dude, I'm telling you, ill. Pound for pound. The headband was the armband. That's the most cap I've ever heard, Doc. It's okay. You don't have to understand. You know, that's the beauty of opinions, but nah, it's true. Say Curry over AI, uh, go home. Curry's dope and all. Curry's like the best shooter, but nah. Dude, Allen Iverson was the best. He was the best. I don't think y'all read. Like, just go. Can we watch AI highlights? <laughs> I guess, can we watch? I was showing these to my nephew, bro. Yeah, Hampton, Virginia. Nah, bro, just, just, here, just, we'll watch this while we watch the spy do nothing. Y'all don't get it. Look at that, man! Stop it. Stop it. Look at that. That's me. Look how small you like. He's six foot. That don't look like six foot, dog. Look at that. Look at that. Does that look like six foot to you, really? Bro, he's a baby. Oh, what's up? What's up, Kobe? What's up? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. Whoop. Stop it. Oh, they don't feel me, bro. They don't feel I need, I need, need you guys need a better view. Stop it. Look, oh man, I don't don't even show me him in a Nuggets jersey. It's so weird watching him in a Nuggets jersey. That was just even a different era. Look at that. He didn't even have to look. Oh. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. The spy we're doing, I think, the 115 rebalance, but it's not as big. Oh, stop it. I can't I can't show you this anymore. You guys can't uh, this is too much. It's too much. Too much. Mm-hmm. If AI played now, he'd be sponsored by FTX. No, he'd be sponsored by Hennessy. Y'all don't. He was uh, just imagine if AI had Mamba mentality. That's the thing, bro. The guy wouldn't even, bro. He would just be like, I visualize it. He'd be like, I would drive to the game and I would close my eyes and I would think about scoring 50. The guy had no sense of personal discipline. He was just an animal. Like the way he just, the natural skill and just doing it his whole life, bro. He didn't even have Mamba mentality. He, there was no Mamba mentality. There was no, he did not wake up early. <laughs> like, he would have went to whoever sponsored him and whatever was cool. He wouldn't even care. He'd be like, yo, I want a Hennessy sponsorship and Backwoods and what else we got. He like, fuck it, I don't care anything, bro. Nah, like, he just, mm-hmm. It's called just talent. Absolute talent with a lit. He did hone in on it a little bit, but it just it wasn't like Kobe. It wasn't like Kobe. Kobe was just nah. AI has no rings though. So you know, doesn't like fucking. It doesn't like Ben Simmons have a ring or something, bro. Don't talk to me about rings. <laughs> you know how many no namers I could tell you with like three rings. Stop it. Robert Ori. Let's talk. Okay. Let's talk about Robert Ori. Okay. And he's a good player. Let's stop it. Stop it. 
Mm-hmm. Jay Williams. I did like Jason Williams. Care supports pleasant listening at work. I love the plays, the humor, and with I love you too, man. I'm glad you could appreciate it. Shout out to the co baby. <laughs> Run it. <laughs> oh, Messi. Where's Messi? Messi on the lawn. Where's Messi? AI's second best player was Eric's. And they don't get it, bro. They don't get it. <laughs> he did have Dikembe for a little bit. But still, they don't get it. They don't get it, bro. That's it. Kobe had Shaq. Shaq in his prime. Allen Iverson had Eric Snow. <laughs> Oh, man. I used to try to get injured on purpose to be more like AI. Wow. I just had to be short. That was it. That was good enough for me. I was I was always the smallest on the court or anywhere. So I said, there you go. I didn't try to get injured. I did not know about that one. He said, Eric Snow, the whistleblower. <laughs> he said, ah, he said, Allen Iverson playing with Eric Snowden. Is that who, that's who you're thinking about? <laughs> that was great. Probably, probably. Or Edward Snowden, yeah. <laughs> How you feel about Kroger? Current 4P, 10, 70s. I like them. I think they're, the bigger value comes from the uh, Kroger. No, 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 I was thinking Coles for a minute. Kroger is actually pretty solid. As long as they don't have a premium. But low-key, if I'm going any... Gr I want Target. I think out of any like grocery, big box retailer... I think we get Target at a better discount. Target's even was pretty cheap not too long ago, but let's just get like a little bit more consumer decline, and I'd go for Target rather than Kroger. But I don't think Kroger's bad. I don't think at one point over the next five years, if we could add one of those retailers, it'd be good. But we already have Walgreens, and, and again, they're kind of in the middle, but they're an aristocrat. You're not going to lie, this whole marking movement and making you want to door dash Chick-fil-A. You liar. You're just trying to tempt me in the door dashing Chick-fil-A. I already know. I already know. You trying to talk me into it. Flee from me. Because that sounds like a great idea. But I'm not going to do it. I'm not even that hungry, actually, today. I'm a little clapped. I don't feel as hungry. Oh, damn it. I don't have any more. Damn, I just messed up my whole day. Damn, I thought I had uh, some seaweed downstairs. Caterpillar, yeah, if you get a big enough drop, but I'm not going to buy it into the all-time highs. Did Kroger? I don't know, actually. I think the judge blocked one of the things, though. Hmm.
I've tried Pollo Loco. I actually grew up on Pollo Loco. That was like one of the only like fast food places my mom liked. You know, much my I remember my mom would come home from work, and bring El Poco Loco. I loved it. Actually, I got sick of it. I was like, can't we have anything else? As if my mom ever came home with food that she didn't cook, it was Poco Loco. Mm -hmm. All right, 115 rebalance may be over. Bond volume two. Bro, they cut the bond. They let the market recover, then sold the bonds. Very wild. The VIX is just the volatility is dying. Some people are saying it's a reversion. They're saying we we had so much extensive volatility. The real bull argument is that we go back to less volatility, and that's why you'll get a couple of pops on the VIX, but... And usually when it starts hitting big lows consecutively, it usually points to more. But the volatility is low-key kind of changing. Again, I think it comes down to this chart. Like low-key, the macro is going to be important and we're going to have to focus. But like data and other things might change for the rest of the year. We're coming back to this. Something new is happening. So we still need more info, but it's going to be a mix of last year and something new as the market kind of calms down and then not to mention if you get a strong enough rally some people are not i read this the other day it was like people people aren't you know how people were afraid of the market people are going to be afraid of it going up because they're gonna be like oh man why did i sell it so low or why didn't i buy this and then but the whole story's not over yet that's why it's i think it's going to be quite dynamic but realistically vo the volatility that we've experienced in the last year or two is just absolutely changing and we're kind of going back to a different level now as things visas on the high a couple of pr prints that 115 rebalance bro Shopify's even on the high, Google it. At least Meta didn't rock it up, not yet at least. Proverb came back. Talent, TSM on the high. A lot of things are going right now. You love Del Taco. I, I understand. I had a Del Taco face. I used to think anybody who would ever eat Del Taco was insane. And I forgot. Well, somebody brought me there. And I remember I loved it. And then I had, a, I had a Del Taco face. Like, I would hit it up constantly. I understand. Like, it's weird. Like, you judge it. It's like anime. I feel like Del Taco is like anime. You're like, why would anybody like this? There's so many other options. Why would you do this? But then you like try it and then like you go, I, 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 dude, I feel you heavy. Uh-huh. I would get like, they had like a little shrimp taco too, bro. They had a lot of other, I was like, wow, I, I went, I went, I had my Del Taco face. This was definitely when I smoked a ton of pot. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing though, but yes, it was. Uh, the, I don't know if that, if there is a correlation, but yeah, definitely. But no, I loved it. I, I haven't been in a while. My girlfriend will drive by it and she'll be like, what's Del Taco? And I'm like, it's decent. I don't tell her. She's like, because she, I don't think I've given, I, I haven't taken her to Del Taco yet at all. I don't, she's seen it. It's one of those American places she sees and she has no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. it just, it's different, but it's good. It, at the right time, if you encounter Del Taco at the right time, you'll, you know, it's not bad. Do you go to TJ for tacos? No, I'm not, I'm not that motivated. No, no, no. I think they just came here and they have shops here, so it's great. You got a bougie wifey. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, in the broader context, I would say yes. But, like, I've totally lowered her standards with America. It's funny as hell. She used to not eat any. She used to hate on every piece of food that we had here. Now I got her, like, ordering a fish fillet from McDonald's, dude. She, oh, no, she loves Taco Bell. She loves Taco Bell, too, bro. I got her on the Taco Bell train. That's it. But, like, then again, she'll, like, she could, like, go to restaurants and, like, pronounce all the fancy shit. Like, she'll, she showed me shit. I'm like, what? Like, she on some real bougie shit. But, like, nah, 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 nah. I got it, bro. She will murder a cheesy gordita crunch. She loves the chalupa. And then she, like, crunch wrap supreme, bro. Mm-hmm. I've had times where I've said, hey, let's go to, like, a fancy sushi place. And she was like, can we just go get Taco Bell? And I'm saying, that's what I'm talking about. Let's... Yeah, uh-huh. 100%. No, and she likes, she likes shitty food now. <laughs> like, I've gotten her. I've got a... I've, but then she's, she's... I've never had that as much truffle as I had with her. She showed me a lot of it. And then she cooks a mean truffle. She make me, like, truffle pasta. She'll make me, like, a truffle pizza. She'll make me truffle anything. She made me truffle fondue the other day. You know that? Bro, she came and brought me truffle fondue. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. It's good, man. She likes Korean food, uh huh. I've taken her to KBB. She loves it. Tacos El Gordo, la Vista. It's very good. The bonds are, but then it's reversed though, because what happened this morning, the bonds were outpacing when we were down, but now if the bonds are down while we're going back up, we're about to go green. It's weird. Or bonds are going to make a nutty move or the spy is going to dump and they are snitching. Mm. How'd y'all meet? Um... She's foreign, so you just go to www. Oh, never mind. Um, nah, we like to joke about that because everybody thinks I got like some imported foreign like bra. I'm like, come on, bro, chill. Uh, I met her through mutual friends. She was friends with one of my friends, and then this girl knew her, and then she knew each other, and then I was like, she's hot. <laughs> I was like, what's up? Uh, then that's it. And then it was a wrap. Then I thought she hated me. Uh, and then that's that's it. And then it was a wrap. I honestly don't know how it ended up working. She tall? Yeah, like we could easily put her as like power forward if we wanted to. Mm-mm. You met your wife on Twitter. Wow. Why do you think she hated you? Because she looks mad angry. Like she got one of those like hot girl angry faces. And then she uh, she just wasn't like she really wouldn't laugh at everything. And like I would say some ignorant American shit and she would just look at me in disgust. <laughs> like she would just be like, what the? uh huh. call it resting bitch face we call it something else in my household but I don't think I can say it because I make fun of her for it and then like she just look mad. like dude everybody everybody in my family will even make fun of her because they'll be like why are you so mad or like why are you looking like that and she'll be like what I'm really happy <laughs> then she'll be she just make this face and we're like what's is something wrong she's like no we're fine Mm. And I started feeling nod. I think the first time I ever got like dinner with her, 
like just me and her, bro, that this was a culture shock. She was judging how I was eating. Y'all don't understand this shit. This is partly why I thought she hated me. Bro, she was judging how I used my fork and like how you like cut food, how you raise it to your mouth, how you're like supposed to eat it, the types of forks. I was like, yo, this is, I said, stop this. Yeah, spy is now green. Let's see if the bonds catch up. She's like, that's how you eat? I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, no, like, dude, there's like an etiquette to eating, how the fork should be positioned, how you like cut it in half. Like, I was like, dude, what? Then the next, I had to like try to eat properly on the second time, and then I gave up by the third time. I said, fuck this. I said, order whatever you want. I ain't, I'm going to eat it however I want. Mm hmm. Yeah. At that moment, I realized how poor I grew up, apparently, because I was like, I did not know that was even a thing. All right. This is the breakout level. If you get above here, we might start to squeeze for the next two hours. No, I did. I ate one thing with my hands and she was mortified. She was mortified. I was like, how else are you supposed to eat it? It's like, it's so weird, bro. It's so weird. I didn't know that was a thing. That's good if you know how to eat it. You guys will be great with anybody, you know, other cultures. They're not going to think you're like a, a dirty American. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like cutting spaghetti with a dude. I was like, who cuts spaghetti? <laughs> like what? Yeah, bro, I've seen this girl order a burger and eat it with a fork and knife. I'm telling you, this is it's unreal. You've never seen this. All right, we're running now. That's it. This could be the breakout point if it doesn't give it back up in a couple of minutes. But anytime you've broken up from here, uh, where is it? I think it's like right here. So you could go back up to like 3988, two more points and sell off a little bit, but... If it gets above here, we're going, we're doing the squeeze, the 39.97. No, bro. She'll, t she'll order, I've seen her order a burger, put it on a plate, take a fork and cut it into pieces and fork the burger into her mouth. That's the wildest thing ever. She sounds proper. That's good for you. Yeah, you understand. I'm still ratchet and I'm like picking my nose out in public. And I'm still like, <laughs> so I don't know. It kind of rubbed up on me. But like at the end of the day, we kind of had to have a talk about acceptance. And I just said, this shit ain't changing. OK, I said, you do you. I'm going to do me. OK, that's it. Fried chicken. No, she just I, she 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 loves Popeye's, bro. She loves Popeye's. I think Popeye's is her favorite American fast food joint. I'm like, God bless you. So it's weird. It's very, very weird. That's it. Come on. If Tesla's not playing along, I'm going to be so sad. Yeah. We're doing the exact same thing as yesterday, or I am. Well, this one looks a lot cleaner than yesterday. Yesterday had way more volatility, but that's it. We're getting above the levels now. And now the book map's active, and it's Friday. I mean, two more hours. Mm-mm. Yeah, so let's just see if it hold again. Bonds, it's we're either gonna get a fat dump or a fat move on bonds, but this is opposite of what I was expecting. I thought bonds would slightly outperform stocks, not stocks slightly outperform bonds. 
S&P positive turns positive for the first time in the S in the US trading session. But all of our runners slowed down. They already ran up. Except the JP Morgan. What about BNB? There you go, BNB. Hold the hundred, Habibi. Hold the hundred. It's squeeze mode. Like I said, you're going to get this is the breakout level. It could come back down, chill out a little bit. But then if it holds this and doesn't like dump back, if it dumps below here kind of and just kind of neutralizes, then no squeeze. But it could. Fine. That was weird. It was a slow melt. As it, all we had to do was talk about Allen Iverson and a couple of things and how I met your mother. And that was great. And then boom, just like that. But then all of the earlier rights, something else though. It's a broader market move because all the other names moved a little more differently. It's definitely a broader move. I mean, yeah, that's why I've had this chart up the whole, like you're, this is where you're at compared to yesterday. You're literally like, yeah, you're at yesterday's price. But yesterday was CPI. bonds snitch in they might move up though I, I really i don't know i'm still kind of believing really bullish bonds but otherwise the market's just gonna dump but now that the bank stocks aren't down i i don't know why they would why they would now at this point unless there's like you need a broader dump or like tesla and a lot of other things but anything that was running up leading into this move is not moving up today so like even meta's kind of subdued a little bit and then tesla's not up Apple's up, but really not that much, I feel like. And then Microsoft's down. Am Amazon's the one just carrying. The UVXY trade, I still have it, but it's dead. It died after right after CPI. <laughs> the, both options, the up and down, were just clapped. Come on. There it is now. The small long term down 1.88. They going to really make me wait till Monday. And then we need 10% now on the big one. That's beautiful. JP Morgan is leading, giving us more gains than damn Airbnb. ETH looks bullish. I think everything in the world looks bullish right now after this. This is a crazy two weeks of the beginning of the year. This is definitely different than what we saw earlier. How much minimum to save? 10%. Soft landing on hard concrete. It didn't dump until pull back. No, I have been looking at it, but it's ETH has to get up a little bit more. So it's still actually it's actually down compared because but it ran up more than everything yesterday. But you got to get out of this little range. Don't forget ETH has been trapped. It's kind of like the currencies. So it, it makes sense It's a cryptocurrency, but. This was the May and June levels for both the yen and everything. So if I think if ETH could get past 2000 again, then you're bullish. But mainly you got to get back up to your May levels. So again, just like like take a look at the yen. Like, do you realize how like the yen got decimated more than Ethereum in a very weird way? But now they're back to like May 26, April levels. Uh, same thing, even even go look at the dollar. Same thing with the dollar and then even the bonds to a degree. The bonds are getting back. They're still below the June and May levels. So if 
Ethereum gets there with all of they could it could be a broader currency move, but I'm still bearish on Ethereum. But it definitely that's a that's a pay to play game right there. Hmm. Wells is chilling now. So again, other things are moving. Uh, everything except industrials, utilities, and real estate is green. Mm. Yeah, surprisingly, I think Bitcoin is outperforming by a lot. Bitcoin is almost at 20,000 again. First time in a while. Thirty nine. all right. You might get in squeeze mode again. Bro, We've. I think this is that... Is this not like the third or fourth Friday in a row where we've squeezed? Is that just me? Squeeze on that Friday. I think this one was a squeeze on the other Friday. Bro, like, am I tripping or is it like every Friday we squeeze for the last three weeks? That was a Friday. This was a Friday. Dude, every Friday is squeezed. I don't know. Kind of end of the day by the Friday has been. Will we close over? Well, maybe the SPX, but. Or if we, you could still get a little baby squeeze up here, but then it'll be right there. Honestly, it'll be a good question. No Tesla, no tes Tesla hate us. I'm okay day. It'll be crazy because we're going to have a short week. The weeks go by so, but then it'll be earnings too. So it's going to be fun. It will be a lot of fun. And then we're going to, uh, uh, what's it called? At least you get a day off to chill a little bit. Short weeks tend to be claps or they just nothing happens. But then this, I mean, you're going to get Procter Gamble, Netflix, and then like four or five more banks. So that'll be big. <coughs> yeah, it closed on Friday. And you come over on Sunday. It's a little short notice now. If we knew this earlier. But I don't know. Maybe. I was supposed to go to Vegas. But then I got sick. So I don't want to go to Vegas anymore. That would have been a good time. But now I just don't know what I'm doing with my life. And then I think my girlfriend has plans. I got to do, but then my niece and nephew, I'm going to see them, but they got me sick too. So I don't know. We got, we got a couple of things. Josh, people are getting, are hitting on scratchers. You should buy one. God. Did you save 10%, Giovanni? Is if you save 10%, go buy your ass a scratcher. That's fine with me. But that's all you need to do. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's it. They gain on the scrap. I know, bro. It's just. But y'all just need to. I'm just saying. I'm just asking. That's all. I'm just asking. I'm just asking if you save the 10%. That's my job. You see what I'm saying? My job is just to make sure I ask. And, you know, when people come with me, I just need to ask before any answer. I need to know, did you save the 10%? That's what matters. But, like, I'm just, I don't know. I don't think, I think we've underestimated how prevalent gambling and gambling culture is. That's what I'm even saying. If you ain't even saving 10% of your money and you're not doing 10% towards any sort of financial future, just bore, all you're doing is gambling. But that's why I always say at that point, we should just all go to Vegas and we will have a blast. It's the same exact thing. Bro, right now, straight up, I think Blackjack or uh, any, like Baccarat is just a way better, at least in Baccarat, if it says player or banker, you get paid, right? Like imagine today on any of the, bank stocks if you were like yeah downside and it went down you wouldn't have gotten paid still you know that right you know none of them even paid out like barely like i don't think y'all feel me on that so it's just like you would have just so it's like you at least get paid at least imagine you went to the casino and it's like you put red or black and it hits black and they're like hold on <laughs> and they're like best we could do is give you break even you're like what it says black. I wait. I man, that's it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just telling you, there's easier ways to gamble, if that's the case, and it's a lot more fun, and uh, we'll have fun. You know, I've never been to Atlantic City. I want to go, but I'm I've gotten over my gambling phase. That's it. I don't even like hit the casino like that anymore. I just don't even feel the. It just got repetitive and boring to a degree. But I'm down if, like, if we just, like, saved up everybody's gambling money and they made, like, positive changes and then, or, like, maybe someone was, like, for real, they can't control the YOLO demon and we just got to take you to Vegas, I'm down for an intervention. I'm down for an intervention, you know? But other than that, I just, I don't know. About to change my Twitch name to Tempers. Let's go. Vegas street performers, buffets, and the 15-minute stretches. I feel. I like the food, bro. I like Carbone. Ooh, I like that. I like the spas and then the food. And then I still have never been to a show. Intervention in Vegas? Yeah, bro. I have a weird philosophy. I've already told you this, man. My philosophies are you either go hard or go home. That's it. Like, if you commit to being evil, like, you better be evil. You know what I'm saying? And if you're going to be good, be good. Like, that's it, though. There's no point, no lukewarm shit. That's why you're like, you really want to gamble? Like, why half-ass gamble and, like, fake do it on the stock market and act like you're not gambling when you are? When we could just go, let's really gamble. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck, let's go into debt and gamble at the casino. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why when people joke about it, I'm like, you're not, no. Like, let's really do, like, I don't even play. Like, for real. And it's like, if not, and then if then you better save and you better be smart. Either be wise or be an utter fool because being in the middle just, it's even worse. Like, I don't know if y'all feel me. I don't know. I'm serious. That's it. That's it. I know. Let's do it. Going to that. What do you? I mean, I'm being. I'm serious, man. I'm be. I'm being serious. Mm -mm. We have enough evil. We need more good, solid leaders. Amen. And what I'm telling you is good, solid advice. Because some of y'all will realize you're not really cut out for it. And the desire you have is fake. And that's why deep down your potential is bigger than you think. It's like the people say, I'm hard, I'm hard. You put them in this, no, you're not hard. That's it. You like the idea more than what it is. That's why there's no need to half-ass it. Just do it 100% so you can find out the truth of, if, of whether or not you're really made for it. And you will find out really, really quick. So 
okay, you got good inside, bring it out. And if you got bad inside, you might as well double down on it. I'm addicted to taking risks. Have you taken to the, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure about that? That's the thing. Are you sure? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Another pop. I think it's two. I think this is going to be the fourth Friday in a row of squeezing. Jeez. Every Friday, man. We could have just bought Fridays and just wrote it up every time. I'm still happy with it, but still. The gaming transactions subtly programmed everyone into gamblers. I think it's culture. I just think, I think social media and being on the internet all the time has just turned the internet into a giant high school. And then that's it. Everybody's just still in high school. Like, it's the same thing. Like, that's it. So you don't need people to just do stuff to be cool. And then they think it's cool. And then it's like this. And people just want to fit in, bro. And that's all. Then you talk, you talk some like discipline, be wise. Nobody, le that's so stupid. What do you mean? It's like, it's, it's just high school. That's all it is. That's why they've turned gambling is just cool. It's trendy. And people want to be like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do the, yeah, let me, now nah, it's like, let's really gamble. I'll show you, I'll show you, man. Come on. Go walk through Vegas for a little bit. You'll see. I try to stand out, not fit in. I am trying to just get good grades because my parents will beat me if I don't. How about we all just stick to that mentality? That's it. We need good grades. We need to go to college. Okay? I know. You don't need college. I know. Lending tips will tell me that all the time. It's fine. No. We got to go. We need to get good grades or we get beaten and we got to go to college and we got to go get a job. And we get, yes, I know. It's very traditional. I know. No, but I'm just saying in the whole concept of this culture example, that's what we need to do. That's all we got to do. We got to win. We got to get good grades. We're going to do good on our test and that's it. That's it. I'm not talking even real college. <laughs> this is a metaphor. <laughs> is Josh saying going all in gambling stocks? I'm saying 10%. 10% first, then do whatever you want. You know, I'm just an old guy talking. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully... And hopefully if you're around the barber, if you hang around the barber shop long enough, you'll eventually get a haircut. So I hope you guys will be wise. And all I'm saying is some people, they ain't really about the gambling life. And they're slowly getting tricked into small this and small that. It's there, man. Can you be my lawyer? If they'll let me. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer, but I could try. Mm -mm. You're mortgaging your house this weekend to gamble. You can't. No bank is open on Friday. You're not really about that life. You can't get that over the weekend, dog. See? Okay. Otherwise, send me the mortgage statement when you do it or I'm banning you. That's it. Be about it. That's it. Or save the 10% and let's do it the right way. And we'll get there over time. That's, that's it. That's all it comes down to. And like I'm saying, why gamble when you could have fun when you're doing something with it? That's all it is. Respect the market. Amen. I am still lift. I haven't been able to. I got off to a really shitty start this year, man. The holidays, 
and then I got sick here. But I was actually I was hitting some good gym sessions before I got sick. We hit the high of the sand. Really, huh? That'll be even worse. Yeah, just about, give or take. Mm. Tire family's birthday's in the fourth quarter. I feel it's a lot of holidays. SDC, I don't know. I like the concept of it, but they've just been a pretty shitty. They're running right now. Wow. I didn't really do that. Went from 30 cents to almost a dollar. Not bad. A little bit better than HBI, but no dividend. Mm. XPEV. I've seen it, but I don't know if I'd ever use it. But like, I think it has some limitations. I don't know how far, how high it flies. Won't playing shares affect the long time, the long term? What do you mean? Well, if you want, all I'm saying, my main philosophy here, 10% 10, 10 minimum. That's all it is. So if I'm not trying to tell anybody to not trade. I'm not trying to keep anybody from opportunity, finding your path, discovering your strategy. I'm not I'm not trying to tell you to stop smoking weed. I'm not trying to tell you don't do this. I am not putting any judgment on anybody regardless of what they want to do. But I'm saying before any decision is made to do any of those other things, you need to do 10% of every dollar you touch saved. And the idea would be to put that towards your long term. So you, I trade shares. I again, I'm not, I'm not telling you this as if I don't trade. I've day traded two things today. I've traded every single day you have watched me on here. Most days than not, I have made a trade. So, but at the same time, you've also watched me for three years take an X amount of money, save it, and put it into another account. And just and putting it and saving it and adding it to the long term. And you could very well see the profits and see the, the progress. And sometimes the tradings were good and bad. And that was more, you know, it's a it's humbling to even be able to say they're both growing. But at the end of the day, without doing that 10 percent and putting it to the long term, that's that's fine. Then that then if you can't do that, then it's not fine. We have a problem and you're really gambling. And that's what I'm saying at this whole point. If you're gambling like what's the like why aren't you doing that 10% if you're really going to gamble there's no point in telling yourself you're trying to I'm trying to make it on Wall Street when realistically we're doing the same thing they do in Vegas and we would have a lot more fun in Vegas doing that Yeah, I've had a lot of credit card debt at one point. Uh I mean, it's a relief once you pay it all off and you will have a you know there's strategies to lower it and be going about it smart ways. And if you're already in collection, don't ever pay it back because it's already fucked your credit. Uh, but at the end of the day, even then, pay yourself first before paying debt. You must get into the habit of paying yourself. That is the ultimate thing I said. Uh, that, and I think it opened a lot of people's eyes is you got to realize you have been born and bred to pay everybody but yourself. That's it. Mm-mm-mm. So think about it. Why do we pay everybody? We go and buy. We get paid and we spend it everywhere. Everybody gets paid before ourselves. You need to get yourself into the habit of acquiring money. And that starts with getting into a daily habit, a monthly habit of paying yourself first. That That's a different type of man. That's a different type of person. Because now you will begin paying yourself and putting your finances above everything, whether it's debt whether it's rent, whether it's this, you will you're going to create a new habit of paying yourself first. You will come first and you will now go from consumer to making sure every dollar that you touch and all the work you put in, you are making sure you are actually earning something and giving it to yourself 
before it goes anywhere else. That is a whole different mindset and philosophy with money. That's why I'm saying if you do that, your financial future will change. Let's go, baby. 10% Fridays. You convinced me I put in 20. Let's go. 10% minimum. And quite frankly, if you have a problem with 10% and you are still trading stocks and options, I love you, but you may have a gambling problem. And that is just keeping it real because 10% is the bare minimum. But if you can somehow find money to trade, but you can't find money to pay yourself and set aside 10%, you got to really ask yourself why you're fighting it so hard. And why do you have money to trade, but you don't have the 10% to pay yourself? Mm -mm. I mean, there you go. Well, first step is admitting it. You could start today by paying yourself 10% and then go and trade. <laughs> that's, it. that's all I'm, that's it, man. That's all I'm telling you. That's how easy you could fix this problem and learn it is you could start today taking 10% of whatever you make and set it aside right now into a separate account and then go trade the rest of the day. Go do whatever you want, but you got to keep that 10% in that account. Life is too short. 10% isn't enough. I'm only here to give you the minimum level of wealth. You know how they call it minimum wage? It's the minimum you have to do to get a wage. It's the same thing here. This is minimum wealth. So you got minimum wage and you got minimum wealth. So if you want to be wealthy and you actually want to be rich at some point in your life and have the ability to take care of yourself and others, you need 10% of every dollar you touch saved. Always. And then we will turn it into investments and we'll turn it into something that will go beyond what that 10% originally was. I'm still in proverb. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good minimums. We talking minimums. <laughs> we talking practice. We talking minimums. If day trading is your only source of income, you better start saving 10% of every dollar you make off a trade. Any money you earn, you got to set aside 10%. Any dollar you touch. Man, new high on Wells Fargo, they just... I can't believe they squeezed the banks like that. Oh my God, bro, that's an 8% move. It, it starts with saving cash and eventually we're going to put it, the idea is put it into another account, preferably a, a long-term account, a clean one. And when the time is right, we're going to start investing in it. It's, it's literally what we do here with the long-term. So I still have cash in here I haven't used, but it's fine. You save up and then if there's good prices, you apply it to high quality investments or you could maybe you keep it in that account long enough and it keeps growing. That might be your down payment for a house. Maybe somebody comes up to you with an opportunity to invest in something that's actually really good. You may be able to have it there. So it's all the same. But until you get that money separated and in, into the process of this, there's no point about worrying about step two until we accomplish step one. Wells Fargo, man. All of these banks. Even the JP. I have old Apple shares, but I didn't buy any on the dip. I know, Wells Fargo. It's crazy. Wells Fargo. 
Damn, that was a nice pickup. I would argue it's 100 times more important to set aside 10% of every dollar you profit if trading is your only income. I would agree, but 10% is a very simple rule that we can make very complex. But you got to do it. Once you execute the simplicity of it, that's it. Take your 10%, go make a new TD Ameritrade account and put it into a TD Ameritrade account. And just deposit it in there automatically. And just let it sit there. And if there's a good deal on a good stock, you can buy it if you'd like. Other At the very least, though, you get it, you'll be good. But the idea would be putting it into growth and value, mainly value. But at the end of the day, until you lock down this 10% philosophy, the other shit doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm telling you, you have no idea. I'm telling you. Because this year, we don't know what's going to happen. and But I know there will be a lot of different opportunities. And even with how bad last year was, that allowed us to do more with it. So it's just you just got to get that popping and get that saved. And you'll see, yeah, Google is moving around. Biden said there's more to do, including assault weapons. Google petition sinking Cantor's recusal. Google critic cleared to work on antitrust involving search giant. So it's related to a court case, the antitrust case. They want the guy recused, but the guy hates Google, who is going to be prosecuting him. There you go, a little automatic melt up on Airbnb. You say ten percent, does that include your four one K withdraws too? It's ten percent of every dollar you earn. So interpret that however you please. Can you say I have 10% of every dollar I touch saved? And do I set it apart every time? So however the method, that's on you. But do you have that? It's a very simple statement that could be followed with a yes or a no. Always. It is very hard to understand when we look at a lot of different things. But you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I understand, I feel, but it's just always like, this is why it's so important. It's a secret, but it's not a secret. It's crazy. Can the 10% be invested in stocks? That's the idea. We want to put it towards high quality investments, but at the end of the day, you have to just make sure you are in a pattern of taking that 10% and saving it. Take 10% of gross too, amen. Just 10% of every dollar you touch. Mm. Hi Chad, my name is Kobe And I saved 10% Hi Chad, hi Kobe <laughs> Amen, 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 amen Enough of the 10% talk, we get it It's okay You never, rather be safe than sorry You know what I'm saying? Rather be safe than sorry. I'll tell you of anything, bro. I just I got you the Google news within like 30 seconds. Here's another one. Japan released joint statement on Biden Kushida. They reiterate the importance of Taiwan straight stability and Japan to protect t technology, including chips. I got you, bro. 
I got you. I saved 10% by switching to Chad long term. Start the 30%. I'm never going to tell you to save 30. That's your personal decision. That's the funny part. Because if it feels like it's not accomplishable, why would you ever do it? 10% is accomplishable. Every single person has that in their full ability. You will never try something if you thought you couldn't do it. I'm five foot six. I'm not. I'm not going to try to get to the NBA. You mean to tell me they lower the rim by four feet? Then maybe I. Okay, I think I could do that. <laughs> That's ten percent. The bar is very, very low, my friends. It's all we got to do. I know the bonds said I'm I'm this is this is not what I expected today. But maybe we get a big move, but we only have a what hour and a half. I I do save I save more than 10%. I have a a very strong habit and that's why I'm chilling because I've been, I save more than 10%, but I will never not save 10%. And any times I didn't save 10%, my life sucked. I really, I just, because every time, even if I had money, even then when I had, I had a lot of money, I still have nice cars, but I wasn't saving it. Things change. Then you learn about taxes and all of this too. That's it, man. So yeah, more than 10%, but start at 10% minimum. It is, man. I feel it. It is. It's really like it's just weird. It's weird how it works, man. It's weird how it works. So clearing back debt. Remember, you don't have to clear the debt to save ten percent. You have to pay yourself ten percent, then pay everybody else. You just had an earthquake in New Jersey. What in the name of fracking is going on? They have earthquakes in New Jersey? What would you say to someone that lost enough where it would take 30 years to break even, even at 10% saved? Save 10% and it won't take 30 years. Why? Because that's the minimum. So ten at 10% minimum, yes. It would take 30 years at 10%, but the point is it's that's the minimum. And you will not always stay in the same place. And if you have a good minimum and a good foundation, chances are you'll build it back way faster than you'll ever expect. But it starts with 10%. That's routine, really? Someone in chat just said earthquake. I didn't, I didn't see a news thing. CDC and FDA said no change in COVID vaccine recommendations. Where is the dollar? Dollar is actually still right at the death cross level. Interestingly enough. You YOLO to your financial aid for this semester. Play pump it up. I think I'd rather ban you instead. So be reborn and save 10%. And let me know when you come back with that. And we will begin our journey once again. And good luck in school. Mm. 
the Japan bonds pretty much by, I think by next month, they will be abandoning yield curve control. That's at least what City said. So it's going to be, it's going to be good. <laughs> I wonder what the fun bunch is up to today. <laughs> that one was so weird. Only two stocks think recession is coming up. UUP and Boyle. Oh, come on. You're missing the big one. You're missing two of them. The bonds and the yen. MSI on the high. Mm. You're scared to d type dumb stuff. You don't want to get banned. How about this? Don't glorify gambling culture and don't mock the 10% and you'll be good. There's also the other rules, but that's a pretty good line of logic to follow. Because I still love y'all. Y'all are always welcome, but I'm just letting y'all know how serious I am about it. Because I know this is going to set everybody up who listens. We're going to have a great year, God willing, or at the very least, a great decade you know, where it's just as simple as that. I, I don't even say this to joke. I say it as this is it, bro. And I'm telling you, we have a lot of people in here and I've seen a lot of people follow up with it and do good. And we're ready to go and just look around, bro. Not everybody in the stock market could say the same thing, especially if it's retail and they've been doing this for just the last couple of years. Like, you know, we're in a very nice position and we're going to we got to keep doing it. And this is how it's going to happen. So that's it. But it didn't, we didn't get here glorifying a culture that wasn't there. And we got to keep hammering home the 10%. So as long as you don't take it as a joke, as long as you don't try to push your brothers into falling into the same trap you're in, we're going to be good. Fed cut rates lower than ever. CPI falling, GDP expanding, recession fears dwindling. Because if CPI actually drops and inflation drops, like we've been saying, the real rate is going to be restrictive in general. So I don't even know. Let me see United States. real. I don't even know the last time. I don't even know if we've been in real rates, bro. I guess we had 2% inflation, 0% rates. I guess you would be at, I think it was still like negative two. So it's, it, there's been a, it's been a very long time since you've had a restrictive policy in terms of rates being higher than the rate of inflation. Because usually we'd have 0% interest rates or just really 2018, 2019. We, we were able to do it for a little bit, but that's it. I'm still in the meta show. I'm down like $4 a share. NVIDIA, Microsoft popping. I think everything's popping again. Sounds like a dream team. Bonds, yen, dollar, and oil versus everyone. Well, there has to be somebody else. There has to be a starting five. Bonds, dollar, yen, oil, and who else? Powell? <laughs> I don't know. If they cut, we would be right back to square one. Not that fast. That's the thing, though. I am still under the impression that if you cut rates, we have a problem. That's it. I've never seen a rate cut without the economy starting to slow. Even in 2019, when they first cut the rates there, it was beginning to... It, the, the real estate was very, very slow. 
and everything. So I'm under the impression that, you know, it would take you back to square one, but not immediately. But I am never under the the impression that you cutting rates is is it, you don't do that when things are good. And if you started cutting rates, I think that's the real evidence of a slowdown. The economy is showing they can handle these rates, so why cut in July like the Fed is pricing in? Be and this is what I was saying yesterday. It's because of this. So look, even if the even if the Fed doesn't get to 5.1, even if the Fed just goes to 4.9 by the middle of the year, so in seven months, which is a long time, that's two more quarters roughly, or three in the middle of third quarter, right? Let's say the rate, because remember, every day we're at 4%. You're already at four, four and a half. So let's say they get up to 4.9 by July. And then CPI drops to 2%. So four and a half minus two, you're left with two and a half percent. Right? So... That means your real rate, you're getting into restrictive territory without the Fed doing anything. But now the question is, by what? By March, by the end of this quarter, you are going to start having a positive real rate, especially if inflation drops faster. So now the question is, with the economy, it's holding up, but it has been declining. Well, what's going to happen in two quarters of a real rate around 2% now? So that's why it's like it could deteriorate by then. And then you're already watching commodities and other things and oil, all of those things drop right now. Even Again, even the dollar. I think it's different when they've been drastically raising rates to fight inflation. The plan has always been to reduce them again at some point. It means what they did worked. I understand. I understand that, but I encourage you to not get fooled in the sense that they have literally said that every single time ever in history. So do you know in 2008 they did the same thing? In 2008, believe it or not, there was an inflation problem, kind of. It started with oil and food. Again, if we even go look back, that's in it led even to the Arab Spring a couple, a couple of years later and all of that stuff, but... At the end of the day, they've done this every single time. So they always raise the rates every other time. So go look at any other point where they raised rates. They've always said we are going to slow it. The, the purpose is to slow it down. And again, even in the 70s, they did the same thing, but they had to do it for 10 years because they rose it up fast, but then they didn't. They cut it too soon. We haven't been in this scenario, but it's it's the same exact logic. I mean, the only other time was the 70s. But then in the 70s, they cut it too early and the stock market got pummeled. Everybody in the first half of the 70s, like we showed. And then finally, when they got it after 10 years and then raising the rates to 20, then the stock market finally was able to get out of it. But otherwise, your latest in modern era would have been 2008, or at least after the thing, again, or after 2001. But look, the rates went from 1% in 0304 all the way to 06. 06, they're at five and a half. And then as things start to deteriorate, they cut it. But what do you think they said during that moment? They said, oh, Real estate prices are going too high. Energy, that was small inflation, right? But even in general, the whole idea of the Fed, they're going to raise them and they're going to raise them and keep them up as high as they can for as long as they can. Why? Because it's beneficial and like history has shown them, you're going to want to keep it up there and then they cut it. But again, you'll see the period in the stock market of 1969 to 1980 or 1979 where the stock market went up, dropped 40%, 
came back up and then re- legitimately barely recorded a gain for 10 years, it was the same. And that was the only time we've had re- massive inflation. And guess what they did? 67, they started looking at the rates. 67, 68, they're raising it, right? By 1969, this is the first signs of inflation. Then they raise it, 8, 9, and then they cut it in the year of the 70s. And guess what happened? Everything died within a year or two later. And then they're saying, oh, shit, we had inflation. They started raising it up again. They even would cut it again. And then they would raise, they had no idea what they were doing out there. And then 1973, again, it was a very, very tough time. And then they just kept playing this game until finally Volcker stepped in. And this is where Powell says they learned from it. That's why they want to keep it up higher than not. So I I would encourage you not to get fooled. I mean, you make your own opinion. I'm not here to dictate anybody's opinion at all. I'm just saying what I truly believe, I will always be under this impression. And then the basics of macroeconomics and Fed policy is that you do you cut rates to spur dem- aggregate demand. You raise rates to stop aggregate demand and slow it down. So even if the economy could handle it, I, even if they have mission accomplished, they're not going to just cut it because they said they raised it. They're going to cut it at the moment they need to spur aggregate demand. But then at that point, that means the economy is borderline changing. Volcker, Volcker didn't have too much ADHD. It was everybody ahead of Volcker, like we talked about yesterday. Volcker didn't come in till here. So what I just showed you with the stock market, the S&P, and all of that, that was prior to Volcker. And that's why they said they just they don't want to make those same mistakes. That, But again, I think they're just, it helps talk the market into kind of being a little chiller. But overall, though, they're not this time around, any time around is what I'm trying to say. That's the beauty of it is like we could say, oh, well, this time is different. I'm just saying historically and universally, any time they have cut the rates, and we again, we don't have as much data from 1916, but any time they have gone about that, it, is le- it has always coincided with a decline in economic activity. So it's like we could argue that it's different this time, but even in inflationary environments, semi-inflationary with real estate bubbles and asset bubbles, 2001 with tech bubbles, the 1970s, 1987, all of them coincide with rates being cut while economic activity is beginning to slow. So I think right now the economy is handling it and they know that, but eventually the, it's not, the sun isn't going to shine forever, especially you would be surprised with six months of real rates now higher than anybody's witnessed in a very long time, what that will do. And then by the time they think it's slowing, they will begin to cut. Or when they cut, it's there. No, no, definitely. I know it's not an argument. That's like, cause that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to change your opinion too. And I want you to keep your own opinion, but I, that's why I'm just, I hope nobody gets fooled by the broader sense because I'm not listening to the news. I'm listening to history and the straight up book of macroeconomics, you know, and that's where it's like, it's just, I'm very, I don't want anyone to get tempted. It's what we've said every time when they cut rates, everyone's going to buy it. I'm going to buy it myself too, but I I don't think it's going to last. I mean, China would raise rates before we cut. They should, and they're getting ready. So think about it. They're starting to reopen now. As we're saying, by July, we're about to get clapped, right? So it's going to take a month or two for their rollout. But think about it. By July, China is going to be up and running heavy, especially if the stocks and everything and these pullbacks keep going where they're they're saying, fuck it, DD could open again. You could do this. We don't care anymore, you know? So it, it, it should, hypothetically speaking, they should be ready to start raising rates or shortly after we begin cutting, they will begin raising rates as well too to keep the broader balance in check. You're right about being humble on the scenario, may or not realize how we expect. I agree. That's why I'm, I'm keep, I don't know how we're going to get there and maybe the bonds are wrong initially for a little bit. 
but it's just like that's why I'm I'm keeping a little bit of everything. You see what I'm saying? And that's why it's like I get a little bit of assets, a little bit of cash, you know, and don't want to move too much. But it's like looking back at this now, and we're we're I think the market is really about to change because we're we're entering into this, and this is why it's so. That's why I was like, yeah, I was like, dude, I can't. I was shocked at what the Fed futures were doing yesterday, but this makes a lot of sense. Because if inflation really does drop rapidly and these rates just stay higher for a little bit, the market is naturally just going to shove itself into restrictive territory. And that now, after 12 months of being semi-restrictive borderline, you know, that's that's debatable. It's just like this is it's going to be a very interesting seven months is all I could say, especially if inflation comes down. If inflation comes down the more restrictive the market becomes as long as Powell and the Fed just keeps these rates higher. That's why the bond market's saying no way. But they might be off by a little bit, and who knows what other event could happen. I mean, the last time we were getting into restrictive territory, let me tell you this. Are you ready? Last time we were getting into restrictive territory on rates, what do you think happened? <laughs> It rhymes with COVID. The last time they started, and but that was because they were cutting the rates. They were cutting the rates. The economy was already slowing heavy in 2019. I don't know if you guys realize this. This is what I've said every... Uh, the Bro, 2018 was one of the scariest years I had to face. Because I was like, the reverse repos to everything. And then you had 2019... And it was like kind of melting up, but bro, real estate was dying. So many company, bro, Apple was guiding down. It was an ugly moment for real. Like 2019 wasn't the best. And then there you go. Then COVID changed everything. No, this isn't tinfoil. I'm, I'm just telling you what happened in the sense that we, 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 we haven't really been able to see a real restrictive rate until and last time was either 2008 or 2001, realistically speaking, or the 70s. Mm. Yeah, I think 2019's unemployment could have been the highest. And then savings rates were down. It was very ugly. Let's see. But we have to go to the Fed because what do they do? Not unemployment rate. It was still high, but it's actually the same as kind of where it's at now. But 2018, the start of 2019 made it come down. But leading into it, it was awful. It was around 4%. So like I'm trying to show you here, they were raising the rates 28. This was the taper tantrum. And then they raised the rates and then take a look. September 2019, October, this is where they began to cut it. So, like, I don't think y'all feel me on this. <laughs> but, like, I, I was feeling the exact same way. I said, we got to be careful because the first time they started to cut the rates was in, uh, guess what? That was our first TLT. So before we hit this TLT... We hit this TLT. I was like August, September 2019, if you remember. So we hit the first rate cut TLT because we I, I said it on the watch list. I had a nice breakdown. I said no matter what, TLT has to go up if they cut rates. And Powell was in a position where he either had to follow the Fed futures or not. And sure enough, he followed it on the day of. But then literally within what? maybe one, two, three, four, five, within five or six months to ever see anything happen, you encountered COVID and then that changed everything. Let's 
See, because it was 2018. That's when you had 4,000. But then what happened as they started, uh, what's it called? It was like around cutting the rates, though. That helped a little bit. But employment wasn't bad, but it was getting there. But then real estate was awful. A lot of things were really, really slowing down. Yeah, the VIX is getting murdered. 80s when rates went up, how long did it take for inflation to go down? Uh, I'm not too sure on that. We'd have to check on the inflation rate, but at that point, it was just, it was over. Because we are getting, you get like the year over year. Let me see if there's a history one. Because that, that's what sucks. How they record inflation, it's all year over year. And like months. So again, to actually get the rate, you don't have the same metrics. Is uh, It's not as easily to look it up in the same way. Let's see. I might be able to go back to it. So this is what we looked at originally. We're like, this was the 80s. So again, this was that whole 70s point. That's why they had to keep doing that. And that's why like 1973, that's why they had to keep raising again and go back and forth. But then right after Volcker came in, I guess it dropped immediately. But again, the market loved it after Volcker. But this was, again, this was 10 years after the first pop. You see what I'm saying? You're look at your first pop. That was right here in like the early 60s leading into the 70s. And then by 72, you had the all clear. But then by 73, it was a nightmare. So but then after Volcker dropped it, but then again, it still lingered around 6% before ultimately kind of coming back to the ones and twos. Eventually, you got back to 2%, 3% by 1994. And then what happened is that anything else, it led to a fucking tech bubble. <laughs> so one problem leads into the next. The new seven series. I did see it, bro. I was about to buy it, but then I, I'm just like, I've been talking about recession and, uh, or the 10% inflation or whatever the 10% savings. So I had to, I had to back down a little bit and we're still squeezing. Hour 15 left. S&P trades back to the 200-day moving average. And it's nearing the 38 Fibonacci, dude. Oh, the 38 Fibonacci, dude, is at 39.99.9, dude. Oh, dude. No, that's like 39,000. I mean, 3,900, dude. Oh, dude, which one is it, dude? Look at this, dude. They gave you a little chart here, dude. See that, dude? That's a 200, dude. How do I zoom in, dude? Where's that out, dude? You see it? Oh, where is it, dude? 4,005, dude, or no? Like, it's like right there, dude. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. And then the Fibonacci is at 39, dude. Like 399.9, dude. why it's so different i guess the thing i'm trying to say is that just be careful of believing like don't focus on the micro focus on the macro is all i'm saying it there's always been greedy motherfuckers there's always been wealth gaps there's always been like corruption all of it but the macro of cutting rates in crisis it's always happened so it doesn't matter. Again, remember when I would show you the story of the 1970s? You remember when inflation was going up and they're like, it's transitory. And they're like, blame the companies. 
blame the stocks, blame gasoline. The same thing Joe Biden said was the same thing Nixon said. It's insane. Even the culture, even the media, it's the same exact thing. That's why make sure the macro don't me the micro doesn't mess you up. You're living in the micro, but the macro is very very key. Want to average on the NQ at the right time, my friend. I'll average on the NQ once I make 10 grand on the bonds. And then we'll see. But other than that, I mean, my plan is working fine with how it is. But remember, I don't want to go too early. I don't want to be a victim of this. I'm already like a semi victim, but little do they know I have the other support there, right? But never go too early on it. And even if I miss it without an average down, I can make my money on it. But oh, I want to let, me, let the bonds go up. And then if I'm still, if I'm, if I make as much, because remember, this one was an $11,000 loss too. This one was a $12,000 loss too. So now I'm going to be positive on two of them and left with one. Yallah, inshallah. But the idea here would be if I can make money on this one, I, I and I'm confident in that one, but it's just like, I'm going to wait. If it, even if this squeezes me, I don't want to double squeeze it when I could just wait a little bit, let it get back once we can see what's going on, and then we'll hit it. But just too early to average. And then at the same time, these are all just going to pad the stats with it. History rhymes. Yes, but this is part history as part as it is system mechanism you see what i'm saying it's a blow-off valve so i don't care how it's looking like it the point is when that gauge hits the blow-off valve is going to go and that's all it is that's why i'm like that's why i say the macro of it all and you'll see what's happening you'll see people and like everyone's like well this is different and we had this and we had that was well, like why does this happen every single time then this is how they keep the system this is the mechanism of the money and how it's intended to work there's nothing wrong with the high rates. And, and again, stock markets may trade a little different, but the economy will slow down after the rates get to a certain point. And the fact is the people who are in charge of the economy, if they are lowering the rates, they are doing that to bring about a certain behavior, a certain, it's a mechanism. So that's why I'm like, just, you know, you'll see all the inflation and employment don't make sense. And this don't make sense, but how they respond to it is what they do every time. But it's slow, man. I've shared all of this with y'all. We do it so much. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like we got to who knows how long this will even take. That's the beauty of it. But right now, it looks like we're going to be seven months in. And again, that will go in line with what I told you about the yield curve in 12 to 18 months, if you think about it. Bro, a million percent. All this playing with rates is what creates poor investments. In the, it is. That's why I'm telling y'all, just be wise. Don't get ahead of yourself. And until it becomes more stable, then we'll know. But in the meantime, that's why I just don't get trapped into anything. And that, that's, that's exactly what happens every time. The rate's moving. It makes certain things look like something for a little bit. And then it changes, right? And that's where you just got to be very, very careful with all of it. And that's why just... I don't think we've missed the bottom and thankfully we were able to grab stuff, but it's like, just be patient and, and see, but don't, don't be so quick to determine no matter what you see anybody else doing. And I'd encourage you if though, if you are watching other people, how have they performed in this last couple of years? That will tell you a lot too, but it's just like you, it makes it difficult and tricky, but just make sure you're sticking along the sides of just don't go too soon. If you go too soon to make your judgment while the macro is borderline the same and we're heading into something else, that's where you're going to get clobbered.
Mm. I say Netflix misses and we start our next leg down. So just humor me on this one. What happens if Netflix beats? <laughs> That's why I'm saying be careful because then everyone's going to be like, ah, it's over. They're going to, so I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just all going to be psychological, I think, for our, this is going to be another psychological year. But that's why I'm saying we are positioned for everything. Just make sure you do not go all in on a on a hunch until we actually get a real level of stability out of both the Fed and the data and everything actually makes sense. You see what I'm saying? That's all. We will benefit off of a bull run. We will benefit off of a bear run. But the last thing you want to do is make your mind up before everything is clear. So that's why we got to respect it both ways and, and really respect the x-axis in time. Uh, I cut out. No, we made two flips today. I got my ESs, my short NASDAQ, my bonds, my little small Netflix, my Uber, my yen. We got a lot of stuff. I got a meta short too. He burned me the other days, but today he chilled. You could dollar cost into the long term. No need to predict direction. Yes, but just don't buy every 30% rally. That's the that will that's what I'm saying. So it's like I agree, and that's what we've been doing. I mean, that's it. We've made purchases from uh, what's it called? October to uh, December. Market closing green. I guess we are point one seven, but then bonds need to move, bro. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. The debt limit, I mean, it could be bad depending on how political people get, but I wouldn't worry about it until it's like much later. Mm. Bonds up, spy down. Yields up, but bonds down, spy up. Very weird. And then the banks were crazy today. Power hour, it's coming up. One minute, actually 30 seconds. I need to go pee. I would like Apple to break out. That would be nice. Ba -da bop, bop, bop.
proverb. Every piece is coming up. I think banks are up because of the... Well, they made a lot on interest. They did warn about the economy again, but that's about it. All right, countdown to the close. Okay, follow me on Instagram, at the Trading Fraternity. I love you. I need to go to the bathroom. So The test, Katie. Right. You got five seconds to answer. I'll be right back. Maybe. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. This is Bloomberg. There's a mental health crisis. For outperformance. <laughs> oh, I clicked the wrong one. You do that. All right. In the meantime, I'm going to take a look at some outperformance, and I found it in those Chinese names that trade here in the U.S. Don't judge me. Mm. But nonetheless, the group is up about 2.6 percent, uh, up nearly 80 percent since late October, up about 19 percent or more uh, so far this year. I haven't checked the latest numbers, but take a look at some of the specific names. Pinduoduo, top of the Nasdaq 100, it's up almost 4 percent today. Alibaba is also up about 3.3 percent. A couple of things: government talking about taking some what they call tiny stakes, golden shares, and names like Alibaba and Tencent. So looking like Beijing wants to take more control. You also had China. Export slumps, uh, exports slumping even more in the month of December. So some negative news, but nonetheless, you yeah. continue to see optimism in this group. All right. Well, you're not seeing optimism when it comes to autos today. It's one area that's lower. Uh, this all because of Tesla. Look at this. Tesla down 2.3 percent, but the companies that are actually more affected are not Tesla. Ford down 5 percent. GM down 5 percent. We got Rivian down 7.6 percent. This is all because of Tesla slashing the price significantly on its cars, not just in China, but around the world. This is an effort to boost demand in what's typically a sluggish winter quarter. Um, investors not so happy about that and a little concerned about what it means for other car companies, too. Yeah. Meanwhile, though, I mean, investors are finding some solace here in the latest economic data, as well as some of the early earnings reports that we've gotten, pushing the S&P 500 back to 3990. We should point out at that level that actually puts it uh, about uh, eight or nine points above its 200 day moving average. We'll see if it can hold that and close the Dow Jones Industrial Average also higher fractionally on the day, as is the Nasdaq and the Russell. And you look at the sectors, you've got more green than red, eight sectors higher right now, led by financials up six tenths of a percent uh, vying there with consumer discretionary stocks you're having a good day for Amazon that's helping out that sector you look at what is not working today it's industrials down four tenths of a percent also real estate down about four tenths of a percent as well yeah, well, when you talk about some of the individual movers here, and I, what I've been calling some of these stealth rallies here, Amazon shares up almost 3% here on the day. In fact, it's now on its longest daily win streak going all the way back to July here and headed for a gain, at least on a weekly basis, I think, of around 12 or 13% here, which is going to be its best showing in more than two years. Meanwhile, the flip side of that is Northrop Grumman, uh, which is down something like 12% on the week. That includes a 6% drop here on the day. Still a lot of concerns out there right now about potential budget cuts in Congress after Kevin McCarthy made that deal to become speaker budget cuts that may target military spending delta airline shares also moving lower here on the day after it gave a forecast for first quarter profit that fell short of estimates and then one of the stocks has actually been performing very well is coinbase up for five straight days now it's up 50 percent over this stretch now it's up three percent here on the day uh setting up for it's going to be the strongest weekly performance that it's had as a public company she went out kathy wood has also been buying into this as well her latest daily summary showing about 52,000 shares were bought on thursday all right. Amazing. It how is much, amazing. How much is it down from its highs? Yeah, yeah. It also it, got it, downgraded by Bank of America this yeah. week. Yeah. Like, wow, yeah. what a rip. Yeah, it'll see. Interesting to see here, but you put it all together, and I guess what do you get? You get a pretty decent week here, actually. <laughs> you hear that shade, bro? I see. If you guys ever talked to a girl like that, that was shade right there. She's like, well, what's it down from? From the highs. <laughs> you said it's up five days in a row. Everything is up five days in a row. Everything, everything is up five days in a row. That's okay. Heavy shade, bro. Heavy. Yeah, not everything. I have Lockheed Martin. So, yeah, and Tesla. Hmm. Auntie Kathy. Mm-hmm. Kathy, Kathy. 
Kathy, 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 will ya? Oh yeah, Boyle, I feel you on that. Let's say again, it's Boyle, the dollar, the yen, and bonds versus everyone. Those are the only things saying recession. Recession. So many names out there. Actually, I wanted to see Apple on the daily. Even Apple could be up a lot more, though. That's the crazy part. I have YCL long, not Y. I had a YCL short, but that was, uh, remember when we made the first yen play? I did that as a hedge. I went long on yen futures and then YCS short and then or YCS long. And then it like balanced out, but then I didn't take profits on that one. But then we made like four or five grand off the first yen. So to the God bless you. I know no merch, no merch, man. Sold out, sold out. Recession, you need to save, you know. Yeah, Apple. I still have those. I'm clapped on my earlier shares, but we'll see earnings. My only worry is Apple loves, Apple loves to guide down before everybody. So we just hope they don't. Mm. Going long on puts. Can I interest you in some short shares? If you are, we have a great special. No expiration. No time decay for a limited time only. If you're interested, act now. Option trading is only risk game. Lose one financial one. Lose one financial advisor. If you go short on shares, you could lose an unlimited amount of money. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Make ZM do something. Ah! Did it work? Oh, it did a little bit. That's all I could do. That's all I got. Otherwise, patience will take us there. I'm trying to see Airbnb go back to like, I don't know, 190-ish conservatively. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to see, man, one step at a time. It'd be nice if HBI went back to where it should be, a.k.a. $9.00. Uh, we'll see, man. We're working on it. And then Amazon is just like, oh, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Watch Carter. What happened? I don't <laughs> is it Jeff Bezos, bro? He on a boat. That's it. With his Latina girlfriend. He's loving life right now. It's like, don't buy TVs. <laughs> I got a hundred thousand of them. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck, Jeff? So just, I don't know, man. I don't know. We just one step at a time, though. And then the banks, Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo failed many ways to rob people today. We should have known. We made money on it. I, I, I could have made so much more. That's the sad part. But Wells Fargo, bro, they're like, we're going to steal your account. And then we're going to drop ourselves 5% on our earnings. And we're going to go up 5% after recovering 5%. Mm-hmm.
he kind of got swole. He did. Bro, I swear. I think Jeff Bezos listened to Andrew Tate before any of y'all. <laughs> That's it. He left, he left his teacher wife. He's like, duh, I'm out of this. He's like, you know who I am? He started working. Now he's like, I'm done with the Matrix. I am the Matrix. That's it. He got like some girlfriend like 40 years younger than him. Started taking steroids. Started hitting up on some on some yachts. Like, that's it, bro. He was just like, that's it. He's like, I'm, even, I'm not even going to work at Amazon anymore. Like, you ever see his videos of him back in the day? He was such a nice guy. He's still a nice guy, I think. I don't know. I've never met him. But his old videos, dude, he'd be so nice. He'd be like, yeah. He's like, I still drive a Honda Accord. Now now he got Selma Hayek on a yacht. He's like, I'm just taking a vacation. <laughs> That's it. Then he got mad. Then Leonardo looked at his girl. She smiled at him, bro. He went into a whole nother level. He said, I'm over this. He started taking more steroids. That's, dude, he started buying up random companies, man. They're like, nah, like, mm-hmm. It's crazy. Oh, little, little new high and drop. God bless you, JP. I love you. Thank you again, my friend. Did you see the foundation videos with the new girlfriend? I, I did not. I've not really kept up with Jeff's life like that. Honestly, he's too he's a little bit too unrelatable for me to keep up with him. I don't know. He's like, oh, I just launched a rocket ship. Oh, I'm going to just donate $1 billion to Dolly Parton. I'm like, what? That's a donate? What? I don't know. So I feel at least Elon forces you to keep up with him. He's like, I'm going to drop your stock 70%. Ah, uh, Fauci did it. What? Yeah, so I don't know. And then even Kanye. I mean, that's Kanye. I don't even think they're in the same league as those two, but. I think we'll just throw him there as an honorary mention. Elon was put in the Guinness Book of Records for largest wealth. Yeah, it is. Nobody's ever lost 200 bucks. <laughs> and then you got Sam Bankman. Just out there being, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, oopsies, oopsies, sorry. Man. Why do guys stay calm when dating? The f what are we supposed to do? We supposed to freak? Ah! <laughs> Yo, I'm going to do that when I see my girlfriend. I'm going to hang out with her today, bro. And I'm going to just be mad antsy. I'm going to be everything but calm. And she's going to ask why. I'm going to be like, because we're dating. Oh, I feel you. I feel you. I'm going to try that. You're right. I'll be like, I heard this is what you wanted more of. Mm-hmm. I feel <laughs> nice time, nice time. Ionier Ionier soars most on record after US government loan. It's Australian. Oh, try and comments on Nelson Pels. That was five minutes. Where is Disney? I think girls don't like like guys anymore. Nah, they do. They hope they they are hopeful for marriage. Um, but my girlfriend, she showed me this video and she was like, I really think this is true. I need to ask her to send it to me. It was like some girl saying how like guys. She's like, I secretly think guys 
don't like like guys only like they don't even like their girlfriends and they really just want to like hang out with their homies but then they're taught to just be nice to girls and i was like i don't know because i was like i don't really hang out with people too much um i don't know but she was like i think you're like that i'm like i was like when was the last time you sleeping I said, what? She was like, because guys, she's like, you don't really like me. I was like, what? Is, are we doing this again? And then she'd be like, okay, would you love me if I shave my head? I'm like, no, why the fuck? What? It's not a yes and no, but no. Why? If you're asking me these questions, no. She's like, okay, if I had 17 arms, would you still love? No. What? I'm like, Ugh. she's like, you want to go finger paint? I'm like, no. Why do I want to go finger painting right now? Let's play Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Girls do that. It's weird. I don't know why. I feel like I'm like, do you just want me to tell you that I love you or something? It's a trap. I just I know it's a trap. I just start answering ridiculous. I just say exactly what she's worried about. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, you're yeah, maybe actually. Now that I think about it, hmm, would you love me if I wore a yellow shirt? No, I don't like the color yellow, actually. Hmm, interesting. We got Disney Nelson Pelt comments. Uh, Nelson Pelt's a couple of months ago, a couple of months, a couple minutes ago. Hmm. Stay away from red pill discussions. You know, let me one up up one up you. Stay away from anybody with pills, okay? I'll mess with any pill poppers like that. I don't care if it's a red pill, blue pill, green pill. Nah, why y'all popping these pills all the time and normalizing it? Nah. I'm out. The hell you mean? Y'all ain't got you got a sober red pill? No, exactly. What do you mean pill? I don't want no pill. Stop it. Look, that'll take you far. Just stay away from all the pill poppers. You're going to be great. You don't pop no vitamins. I take little shots. I take vitamin shots. Or I'll take, I'm so, I spent way too much time at Whole Foods one day. And I bought all of them. <laughs> I, bought, I bought every little shot with like vitamin C, D, E, zinc, zinc, Z, E, R, W, L, M, N, O, P. That's it, and they good too, but it tastes like pepper and turmeric, and it's spicy. It's spicy. I'm like, oof, but I feel like I've been getting my vitamins through them. Mm-hmm. The red pill is the men's right movement. Well, listen, sir, you're going to have to stop doing pills if we want to do any sort of movement here, okay? That's all. That's all, man. How are we gonna start a movement popping pills? I don't care what color it is, sir. No more color pills. Stop it. You ever hear that D12 song? Red and yellow, purple, red. No, see, exactly. They forgot. I remember I was singing that church, I was singing that song at church one day <laughs> when I was a kid. And then someone was like, Do you know what that means? I was like, Nah. Well, yeah, it's like, it's hills. Like, I seen the music video. And they were like, no. And then they told my mom. My mom didn't know what it meant either. She just beat me. But it was cool. I got to learn that day. Don't trust white people who ask you about rap songs. Mm-hmm. 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 DJ Cantor cleared the work. That was the old one. That was that Google News earlier. It's reiterated. Cool car. You guys know all of these. Yeah, man.
Vici Properties, Ball, and New York Mellon rise most in S&P. Vici. Vici's down. <laughs> Bro, 398. That's it. Are we at four? We're almost there. So, again, I think 4,003 is the 200-day. And then I think three and then 4,000 itself, I think, is the Fibonacci. This buy hit 400. I think it well, spy would be that would be above four, that would be well above 4,000. Seven more points were there. What is intrinsic value? The value inside, value in and of itself. So what's a good example? Like, let's say you took a car. The intrinsic value of a car, the value in and of itself, would be how much all of the metal is worth. Right? But then they don't sell you the car for how much the metal is worth. There's another, there's an added value. You put a Mercedes logo on it. Now they really going to scam you for it. But that's extrinsic value. In an option, it's in the money. If you get in the money, it's intrinsic. If you have the right to buy the stock at 100 and the stock is at 101, you have $1 of intrinsic value because if you executed that contract, it has $1 difference between there. You can make a dollar. If it's out of the money, you're paying for the right to buy a stock at a higher price. That's all extrinsic value because it's not there. I think we have old videos on it. Uh, actually, go look at the option trading video, the one in the description. Oh, man, there's a stock that starts with T that is hitting a high right now. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to say it, but it starts with a T. It's not, and it's not AT&T. Hmm. Please, 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 not TFT. Just please don't stop. Don't stop. I know I can't help but jinx it. I can't help it. I can't do it. <laughs> it starts with T and ends with child support. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm more fatty. Her not Texas instrument. <laughs> it's good though, that 123. Oh, come on. Mm. Can you, yeah, you can filter stocks out of the high ticker. Mm hmm. Like even by price, market cap, all that. <laughs> Tells a cool man just let's see you're about to, you're about to hit four thousand on the SPX. That's big. Again, futures already been there. Three nine nine four. This is near the you're within three points of yesterday's high. That I being is the bank still killing it. Uh, what else is there? Amazon is Apple's even going there too. Apple's still lagging. What kind of mic do I use? I I'm low key. I'm still using the Xbox Live microphone from like 2008. I just plug in the headset and I just yell at it. Nah, uh, it's a Shure mic, a SM7B.
He said, no way. <laughs> that guy, you started looking for your Xbox Live microphone. <laughs> he was like, what? This quality is amazing. How does he do it? He's like, why'd I throw that out? All right, man. Chad, this is it. This is it. Are we going to close above it or not? The cues are on the low. Google is on the high. This is another Friday squeeze, man. 30 minutes left. 34 minutes left to be exact. Oh, my gosh. Even Google. That's Meta. Is the bonds going to go? Even Meta is starting to go. Win is starting to go. That's it. There's still a there's actually industrials, real estate, and utilities are red. Play it. I'm not gonna play it ever again. Okay? That's it. You know I'm gonna play? Don't you know 10%? You got to 10%. Don't you know 10%? You got to 10%. You know 10%. You got to 10%. Yeah, so unless you want to hear that all I could do that for you for the next two minutes if you like. But that's that's it. I'm just saying. God bless the call. Amen. Amen. We got to catch up or the bonds are just going to rock it over the weekend or by Monday. Three nine. You're still two points below the highs. It feels like all day. It just feels so big, but then it's not. I'm like, why are you so slow? 1.6%. God bless you. Come on, take it to 9%. Single digits today. Single digits. Wow. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. Normal people not buying this. I just pictured a bunch of avatars in Airbud just behind computer screens, just buying away. <laughs> She's like, normal people are not buying this. I do. You should. I wish I could draw good so I could show you what I just imagined. Because I'm like, really? Musk Twitter to publish tweet recommendation code by February. He said Twitter to make account tweet status visible by February. I don't know what that means. Oh, like whether or not you've been like shadow banned or not. That's pretty dope. It's the fun bunch. But like, can you picture it though? Like imagine just like a bunch of avatars on the Wall Street floor. They don't even speak English, you know, and they're just like. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I know there are like five people who get like bugged out by my personality. I know they're pissed off here. I don't want you to have a bad weekend. So, yeah, I know. My bad, man. <laughs> they can't speak English, but they can read the prices. You know what I'm saying? They don't need to speak English to buy the dip. That's us. Have you dying at work? Just don't get fired, bro. That's going to be weird. And then the market's been up like 7% or something. So, like, your boss might say something to you and you might clap back a little aggressive because the portfolios are up. So, just, you know what I'm saying? Just keep it humble. Don't laugh too hard, you know? And if anybody questions you, just make sure, you know, don't take this 6% rally into your real life, okay? That's all I'm saying for everybody out there. Okay, so that's what you got to watch out for. You just got to watch out. 3996, dude, this is it. Last time we hit it, you had like a fat pop and then it rejected, but let's see where this goes now. You got to pump it up. See, today I'm actually ending up lower, though. 
because now NQ didn't play along with the bonds and then Tesla and then LMT. We only have the yen. Proverbs did some work, though, too, in the ES and a little bit on ETH. And then Uber just stopped moving. No utility. Nothing. Twitter will be relisted eventually when he tries to sell it. That's it, Chad. You're about to hit a new high of the day. Twelve thirty. Thirty minutes remaining, Chattadonia. Yeah, bro. Everything. Apple into the high. Even the banks are about to go round two. Airbnb, what are you doing, Airbnb? Come on. Bond. I hope the bonds go up. That's very weird. I mean, in a weird way, you had people sell bonds and buy equities. If anything, that's a more bullish sign than not. So if they're selling bonds and buying, like, because again, this morning they were buying bonds and selling stocks, but in a weird way, if people are really feeling like, yeah, this is a bottom, you know, uh, or they're getting excited, which I disagree with, uh, but I think that's what they're running it up on. Airbnb dump, come on. BBIG giant pop. Funds and retail are eating up the soft landing for now, but in a weird way, you're getting more of that. Uh, uh, what's it called? The the bonds actually sold and they bought equities. I really wasn't. I thought bonds were going to slightly outperform today if we ended up going down or if they went up. I thought bonds would have went with it, but they had a nice move yesterday. But I mean, the the funniest part about this is like you're up 0.3 from <laughs> like you're at the same price as yesterday. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of awkward, though, because it feels like a lot. But it's also like technically speaking, we weren't like, yeah, <laughs> yesterday people were still like, what's happening? We're supposed to be up 7%. I thought inflation and why are the bomb? OK, <laughs> the avatars are back. But you're back at a key level. I mean, let's see if we... No, oh, you got 30 minutes, man. So let's see where it goes. over these three-day weekends i'm reading the twitch now you might three or four times you're talking about the uvxy <laughs> the dirt you called it the dirty pool <laughs> how could josh be so peppy with all this manipulation oh no man i'm just like i'm waiting for the boss and it's like japan but like we still got earnings man i don't think powers going like this man I'm just like, I'm a goody two-shoes. I think when Powell come home, bro, he going to shit on all of us. I don't know yet, man. I'm just, it's cool, man. But that's cool. I think my ES might go green eventually. <laughs> mm. 
Mm. Oh, there's that. That's what happened yesterday, but this is now new high. You're one point above yesterday's high, bro. The Friday squeeze has been on, literally. Now Meta's going, watch it. And now Airbnb, they're like, no, sorry, sir. They don't want us in there. MP, God bless you, baby. Just sucks now to see the NQ. Yeah, <laughs> but it's okay. He will balance. Again, I was down the same amount right when the CPI was up that one day. That's why I'm like, this is so awkward. When it's good, one step at a time. If you fall, it will clap you and pal will be waiting. Pal after pal. Hike after hike. God bless you, MP. <laughs> Welcome to Friday. There it is. Literally, I think I just sold everything too early on the upside there. Could have held for an extra day. I know NVIDIA, that would have gave me a lot more money. NQ clap was way worse. No, it wasn't. Stop lying. Okay, or you just want to you want to highlight it now, huh? That's a lie. Okay, it's a lie. I was down twelve thousand five hundred on that ES. <laughs> There's still five hundred more dollars. But then when I was down twelve thousand on the ES, I was also down twelve thousand or th more on the bonds. So. It'll be good, but I'm not ever going to get mad having protection on, like, what is this? A 7%, 9% rally? You could lose more money. I think it's like a 30% difference. But, again, at that point, though, if the ES goes positive, whatever, I'm not going to sell this out. So, it's pretty much going to be the same with, like, a 30% gap. And then bond man and yen man should come in and go, watch out. You know? It was good, though. At least we get to go into the week. Oh, wow, 4,000. Here it is. We're at least going to go into the weekend. Like, people are going to be like, yeah, man. It's cool. Last time you were 4,000 was Powell. You've only been 4,000 a couple times. Was this, when was that? Was that Thanksgiving? Yeah, Thanksgiving. Look, you coming in the MLK day with the 4,000, bro. That's dope. You went through it. Let's see if we close there. 22 minutes, but that's it, man. Everyone's hyped right now. Now, Powell's going to have three days to figure out his plan of attack. Let me check the Fed futures. Four point six six and then four point nine two is roughly the same. They chilled out slightly. Maybe that stock with the T could play along. Hmm. We have to aggressive tax loss. If you sold, well, remember, we sold big like December 16th. So we're almost there. But I think some people just some people were getting ahead of it. But I just think it's a good start to the year. I think statistically, if we could hold up positive here, this will be fire. But then again, if we drop, this will be a nice story. If we drop by the end of the month, it's gonna that's just going to mean we're going to have a wicked end of the year. But as of now, though, if this could hold the melt, if you hold the rest of the month, we got two more weeks and more earnings. But then again, what you just witnessed today, you just saw bad earnings get eaten up. And again, it's a very broad move here today. It's not like a lot of the ones that already ran up. It's not everything's doing that. Damn, you they sold you an H off after that. That was interesting. And JP Morgan again. The next rate hike is February 1st. That is the next meeting. So in about three more Wednesdays, two after this week. And then we have uh, Netflix earnings next week, along with Procter & Gamble. And that's it. And then after that week, though, leading in, like Facebook is the same day as the Fed and a couple of others.
Trust me, you have a lot of events still, Habibi. If you fall, I will catch you. Yeah, Monday is closed. Time after time. When it dumps, it just makes it everything gets a little more trickier again. Because it's like, even if you're feeling bullish, and like I'm thinking from a long term scale, because it just sucks. Because it's like so many things are up 30, 40% from the bottom, even though this was an additional one. But again, 7%, I think we're probably at 7% now on the whole entire index in the last week or since the non farms, which is actually wild. Great start to the year. I wish, let me, I want to see if we could get the statistics. Where is it? One year return on the S and P is now twelve point eight. So we we went up about six and a half percent. But that's all. I'm trying to see if I could get the. Uh... Price show about says four percent on the spy. I'm trying to get the pretty chart to see where January stacks up. Yeah, month most things are like four to five percent. Europe is up eight percent. US equity. Yeah, about four. US the the Russell is up two is up seven percent already. Yeah, everything's doing good. I wish it had the uh, Medici clay. Market is closed for Martin Luther King Day on Monday. Ah, uh, here it is. BlackRock Larry Fink says he does not see a severe recession ahead. That's a good one. He comments in Fox Business interview. Mm. I think the futures are closed on Monday until 6 p.m. Eastern. So like 3 p.m. Pacific time on Monday, the futures will open back up. Let me know. Get ready. Why are they honking at me? You guys just, this is going to be another one of them. We got to remember all of this. That's all. That's all. I don't know. I feel like people feel more bullish here than they did here. That's the crazy part to all of this. What would you say? No play. I'm just going to hold what I'm holding in there. 
Uh, we've are, I, we had great plays in the morning. I uh, just sold out of them a little too early, but I don't know. I feel like people were way less bullish here than they are right, <laughs> right here. That's how I this is crazy. Time after time. We hit 4,003. I think that was the 200 day or the Fibonacci. Right before is like the same barcode. This is a nice lift up, though. And even though today, like the one thing uh, that really I'm like, dude, they ate up those earnings today, which is actually kind of wild. Tread cautiously. We have more. Uncle Uncle has a lot. He has to just he has to actually get there, bro. We gotta get I haven't had time to sit down with him. He has a lot though. He has a lot ready to go. And they're hyping people up. We will find out, my friend. We will find out. Ishkari laughs. They're going to lose the game of chicken. <laughs> mm -mm. Natural gas. Uh, well, we're, this is why we want to wait till the end of the quarter. I mean, if this all uh, becomes more bullish, then, uh, yeah, I think it'll I think commodities and oil should bounce back. But other than that, we're going to wait by the end of the quarter to either take the L or to average down. It sucked. 10 minutes. 10 minute rig is coming up. I need to go pee, though. That means I messed up my pee schedule. I'm not supposed to be hitting the bathroom at the final five like this for the 10 minute rig. I apologize, Chad. I apologize. Market rallies too early for the stock. Big money is already in. He kind of, but it's just we are in a very emotional environment. Don't even underestimate how much big money is kind of not really. Again, it's just there's a there's a lot of waves. That's it. There's a fear of missing out that will always exist in the market, and that's why. But it's just it all depends on what your strategy is and what you're looking for and all that. Again. The long term loves this and we position very, very low. But at the end of the day, though, I just I've gone through way too much trauma to really ever get excited by anything this year until we see the Fed do it again. I mean, we've just done this so many times. <laughs> That's why I'm like, we've done it like this chart. I don't get it every time. I feel like uh, I don't know. I feel like uh, like I'm a, like I'm in a like what's it called? The rat in the wheel. You know, or I feel like it's like I feel like a monkey with a banana and I'm like, I get crazy. Like, you know, I just I've done. I'm like, I feel like I'm getting smarter, though. So I'm just like, hold on here. But you get a lot and it's just though. But at the end of the day, nobody wants to get left out. But I don't really I don't think October was the bottom. I could say that with a pretty decent amount of confidence unless Powell changes everything on, you know, in two weeks. But I, I, I highly doubt it. Mm, 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 mm. All right, I need to go pee, bro. 
This is a 10 minute rig though. Mm. Markets to close. It's the countdown to the close. I'm Romain right. Bostic. Follow me on Instagram. At the trading Stocks holding on to the gains you. as you get closer to the closing bells. Gains for the day, gains for the week as well. Financials helping to lead the charge both on this day and on the week as well. You were talking about the automakers a little bit earlier. They are as a group being dragged lower down by Tesla here. I do want to point out a few bright spots here. Haynes Brands did actually come out with preliminary results and they were good, at least good enough to push the shares higher by about 2% here. And we saw an interesting story surrounding Wendy's. And this caught my eye because the shares up about 6% here. Mm -hmm. They came out with results. They boosted their dividend and they announced the stock buyback program. And one of their biggest shareholders, Tryon, yeah. of course, we've heard of them. I've They've been in the news. Them. They say they're backing off of some of their activism for Wendy, saying that the business has turned around. No kidding. So, yeah, so they don't need to agitate as much anymore. So I don't know if he's going to get what he wants out of Disney, but <laughs> it sounds like Nelson Peltz, at least for now, seems like he got what he wanted out of Wendy's. Wendy's definitely yeah. rallying today. So, too, is the S&P 500. And we're now up over 4% year to date. But still with us now is David Sowerby. He is managing director and portfolio manager over at Ancora Advisors. And, David, before the break, we we were talking about large caps. I think you were on your way to small caps. What do you see in the small cap space? Sure. The, the name I provided was Golden Entertainment. It's a regional casino with a strong ba balance sheet, strong free cash flow, very shareholder focused. That's what you want. Much like your story on Wendy's, generate cash, think about the shareholder, increase your dividend, buy back shares. On the large cap side, uh, in the mutual fund I co-manage, there's 32 stocks, so everybody's got to fight for their shelf space. A couple names quickly, General Dynamics. I know defense stocks are down today, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, the world is a much more dangerous place, whether it's Ukraine, South China Sea, the Middle East, and General Dynamics consistently grows their dividend at 8 to 10 percent with an, an attractive valuation. Maybe pair that up with a technology name like Broadcom which is about 75% semiconductor, 25% software, and they're growing the dividend better than 20% Brought to you as by a Tesla. individual who... Just kidding. We don't say that anymore. They heard us. <laughs> the world is a much more dangerous place. Everybody, fuck yeah, this dark. They don't feel dangerous. They don't feel dangerous. Oh, now this is dangerous. Oh, wow. It looked like the wishbone at Thanksgiving. You know the wishbone? You take so every okay bear, the bear you pull, and the bull you pull. Whoever get the biggest candle, you you make a wish, you win. Okay, this is wishbone. So everybody make a wish, make a wish. Okay, yalla. Seven minutes left, man. We're bringing it home. Second week in the books, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. I wish for the gulag. Okay, you sound like a fun guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wish for Clifford. That's an interesting wish. Because if a fucking <laughs> if an 18 foot red Labrador showed up, I'm just saying you better be ready for that. Okay, Mr. Wishing for Clifford. I know you're talking in the stock sense, but I took it literal. I don't know. I'd wish for it now, but I don't know how I'd react if he showed up, bro. I'd be like, hey, Cliff, I love what you've done, but I don't I don't know if I could house you here, dude, man. I'm not really into building you a little dog house or a dog mansion. It's expensive nowadays. Mm-mm. Fertilizer prices would drop fast. Mm. I got two Teslas up hoping it'll do something. No, I always do that. Even Microsoft now, they're still kind of like, where's Apple? Apple, there you go, Apple. There's your final five. The final five cannot, bro. Final five shits on 10 minute rigged. I'm sorry. And then now it's 115 in final five. 
Because look at that. He's doing it again. There you go. It's going to be a bad dude. It's not. Let's see if it respects 4,000, but I don't even think. I think it's going. They love it. They love it. That's, 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 that's who? I love the time. CFTC positioning update, smallest oil long since 2016. Yikes. Mm. Earnings season has begun. It started off with bad bank earnings and every soft landing. <laughs> On the next episode of The Market Hates You, traders woke up to find Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and J.P. Morgan down 2-5%. to 5%. Warnings of recession. As everybody piled into puts, the market makers began to show their disdain. With markets already up 6%, they thought what better way to piss everybody off than bring it up 5% and make them believe it's the bottom. <laughs> The earnings are bad. You got to get out of here. Sell their puts. Kill them. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got I got I got work to do. I'm sorry. I got. Mhm. Mm <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh we're making our final approach. So we make our final approach. If you guys are holding on to any bags, uh, please tow them in the overhead bins above or firmly beneath your seats. We'll be coming through the house with a trash bag if you like to dispose of those bags. But as we make this final approach, we're going to be landing here into the second link terminal. Second link terminal in the description. That's going to be your nightly watch list and main channel layover. You got a two-day layover, a three-day layover due to the holidays. Then we're going to be taking off promptly around Tuesday morning from sunny San Diego, California. As we make this final approach into San Diego International Airport, it's about 69 degrees, partly sunny. Uh, looking like a decent day unless you thought the bank earnings meant anything then it's a little bit tricky out here but we are no longer under COVID guidelines so no masks are required but we do ask that you exit one row at a time and drop a GG on your way out as always we appreciate your guys in business if you're interested in your call rapid awards program card please flag down your flight attendant and we'll get you that as soon as possible as always thank you for flying with the coat and hopefully you have a wonderful evening Yeah, baby. No, we don't have any earnings today, but we here, Chattadonia. You got a long weekend. They got you with both today. There's a lot. I'm telling you, every week, bro, we're ending it with a lot of hype and a lot on the table. So, Chattadonia, I hope you guys are ready. I hope you are locked and loaded, but you got to finalize it. And, uh, one minute. Go, 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 go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you've made it to the second week of the year. Stocks are up around 7%, and now you are entering earnings season, and Powell still hasn't spoken, and you see this market. You got to bring it home right now. So finalize your place. Don't hold anything that'll make you too stressful, or maybe you got it like that, and you can ride it through, baby, but you got a whole nother couple of weeks left. We got 50 more weeks remaining, so don't worry about whatever happens, but you got to finalize it. Oh, man. Hey. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah. Ding, 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 
It closed right below 4,000. But you know what I need? Oh, yeah, baby. Let's go. It's game time. Uh huh. We did it. We made it. I need that GG. Let's go. You made it to the bell. You made it to week two. You saving that 10%. I need that good game. Let's go, baby. Good game. Way to play your heart out. We got a little bit more. We got to have a lot more stamina. Let's go, man. Good game. All the laggers, all the lurkers, all the lovers, all the people that held it down, all the people that contributed. We love you, baby. Good game. Way to play. You made it to the bell. Why are you being so shy? Let's go. It's Friday, baby. Hey, man. Let's go. Wow. There's a lot I don't know, but I know so some love. Let's go. I see you too, Twitch. Don't let me lose my voice. Good game, baby. Let's go. All the people that held it down. A lot of donos. A lot of members. A lot of stream alerts. It don't matter a lot or a little. We love y'all, baby. Good game. Let's go. It's Friday now, good game, baby. Everybody, my brother, give you the lock. Don't believe me, just watch. Use my freedom a lot. I need me to rock. You won't see me a lot. Monday through Friday, you need me. Let's talk. Let's good game, baby. 2020, baby. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, you better smile. You could you could not smile too, but don't worry. I'm just saying, you still got a lot of weeks ahead today. Remember, win or loss, who everybody in the same boat. Don't forget about that one, Chad. But that is the day. I hope you enjoyed it, and that was another awesome week. So, Chadadonia, I would tell you about all the links and everything. I hope you subscribed. I hope you have liked the video. That'd be nice if you did that. And I hope you had some fun today. But, bro, we have a lot more. We have a lot more going here. You got more earnings on the way. Then more bigger earnings after next week. Then you're going to get a little bit more data. We're going to deal with a lot, Chattadonia. <laughs> so I hope you're ready, baby. I hope you're ready. But, Chad, I love you. Thank you for being here. I hope you are ready to keep battling and keep fighting. I hope some of you got relief. I hope some of you don't get too disappointed. And I hope all of you save minimum 10% because we are going to have a long, long year, it looks like, on both sides. And that's why it's going to be exciting. But, Chad, I need you to enjoy your weekend. And I hope you know you are appreciated. And for real, all the people that held it down and that made sure you have kept this chat exactly what we need to be, man. You know what I'm saying? And focus and ready to win, baby. We love you. And God bless you. And if you contributed, man, I love you, man. I would say even more, but I got love for everybody. You know why? We do everything the same here. And you know what it is, man. So for real, it's an honor to share these moments. It's an honor to get through this second week, man. And let's go. I just hope you got the stamina, baby. And I know you do. I know you do. You feel me, baby. But, yeah, that's the day. You know that that's the day. It's over now. It's Friday. If you got to get going, you got to leave. You know, fill out the prayer request wall. Follow me on Instagram. Do whatever you want to do, okay? But enjoy it. It's a three-day weekend. We got Monday off, too. But, hey, if you got to get going, you got a peace. And I just hope you know you're loved and thank you. And get ready. We got more battling on Monday or Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. I'm, I'm going to mess that up for a little bit. But, hey, it's over now. Please enjoy that weekend. And now it is, uh, that's it. It's the day. So go read the books, Richest Man, New Living Translation, that Proverbs, you know what I'm saying? Strangest Secret in the World. You better save that 10%. You know what I'm saying? Damn, Amazon 14% weekly gain. Best since April 2012. <laughs> oh, man. So listen, we love y'all, okay? But that's it, man. So, I love you. Enjoy your weekend. And now, we must prepare for Bible study. Oh, uh, yeah, we got a little one, bro. We got a little one. We got a little one. You know that? We got a little Bible study today. So, I hope you're ready. I'm going to go get me a drink. I'm going to see if I got any snacks. Uh, and I'm going to go get my robe and my, my, my coat robe and everything. And uh, I just, yeah, so, welcome to Friday. If you want to kick it, you could kick it. If not, you better dip. You don't, I thought you better dip, but I'm just saying, I don't know if you got any plans. If you don't got plans, I mean, I mean, I'll meet you here in a couple minutes, you know, give me like, probably be like 10 minutes, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to go pee, maybe see if any poop comes out because something you ever do that. And I, I maybe I didn't even tell you all about my non-farm poop, but anyways, or my CPI poop anyways, but uh, yeah, so just go get, get what you need and uh, I'll see you soon. And if you got to get going, I'm going to see you on Tuesday and I hope you know we love you and let's go, baby. Let's keep going. Let's keep going, baby.
We just start with this. Got a color, got a put. I can make the money both ways. Always. I can buy the whole chain. Go away. Got a lot of love and throwing no shit. No gain, small change. I just made my own bank. Probably trading stats where you still let the snoring. Morning, scoring. I'm just bringing more in. Hissing the DeLorean. Sourcing. You could throw your own in. Drop it like a ball when you holding. I'm shorting. Skinny motherfucker, but I'm eating. Seeking, scheming. I get paid for sleeping. Dreaming. Hating for no reason. You a demon. Leeching. Uh, he yeah. Wishing you could be. Yeah. I told you I'ma do this, don't forget this shit a marathon You make a move but stay in the same place, your ass a Peloton Make a hundred dollars for phone call, now that's a telethon Benjamin's, Jefferson, YOLO to a ghetto spread Yeah, you know I've been it there, who's been like a Trinidad I'm moving like a president, can kill me like a Kennedy I'm trying to be a better me, but they just keep on tapping me Release the demon, set them free, he come back, bring me 50 G's Nowadays it's hella small, kid game like I'm from Babylon My capital got stamina, I wrap it up in lemon Talking in new blabbering, but I'm not understanding, bro You hating and complaining, but you still watching the channel I do this for the real ones, but the hate is still involved I just closed another building, I'ma give it to my bros It just took a little patience and it took a little hoe Yeah, the faith is never wasted if you reach it for a goal Do this for the real ones, but the hate is still involved I just closed another building, I'ma give it to my bros It just took a little patience and it took a little hoe Yeah, the faith is never wasted if you reach it for a goal It's a cop, 2020, baby Who the fuck you? <laughs> I, I did what they said I wanted though And where the fuck is y'all now, who the fuck are yo? They was at the bar, I was chilling in my room Now they wanna call like the soccer back to move Said I take it far, but I ain't take it up with yo Man, get up out my way, I ain't trying to be real Been hated on before, what you really wanna do? That ain't stop me getting more, couldn't stop me making moves I, I look around and see you, now I ain't see you in the gym You back down, but ass had the reason was you quit I'm back now, now back down, got got up in my shit I'm a cold, I ain't a crib, ain't a blood, but got the drip I got brothers in the streets, I got brothers in the banks I got houses on the beach, properties in other states Get the knowledge back for free, while I be screaming God is great I believe and I create, and see the need to replicate Lost a lot of shit, but I guess that's part the plan I had loved ones up in dip, got some people in the can People try to steal my shit, now they reaching for my hand I feel bad they ain't around, but they ain't holding, let me down She lose a 100k, the next day I get it back I made millions with some trades, I made millions with these tracks Playing like just like a game in the bank, showing my stats Shit, you say I'm calling cap, you could play, but you was mad Did what they didn't want to do Now I'm buying cribs when I ain't even need them all I was just a kid, they said I didn't have a clue But they saw just what I did, now they trying to do it too Trying to go to heaven, I like living with a view So I'm trying to build a building, maybe cop a belly toe I guess you see I'm mean, but still want a lot of food I guess the harvest plenty and the work is always few Bitch Hey man, it's a cop, baby. <clears throat> 2020. God bless y'all. Uh, yeah. They say I'm different if I was some chance. That's a percent is a regular day. That's in the hate me some regular shit. Spitting that knowledge from back in the day. I know I'm making fit some type of way. Give me my money, get out of my way. Lately, you see that I'm done with the gangs. Fit that my mad and I broke out the chains. They say I'm different if I was a chain. That's a percent is a regular day. That's in the hate me some regular shit. Spitting that knowledge from back in the day. I know I'm making fit some type of way. Give me my money, get out of my way. Lately, you see that I'm done with the gangs. Fit that my mad. And I broke out the chains It lifted me up, I'm holding it down Pass it around, started with nothing but went for the land They said I'm crazy, but that was the plan Mama, she raised me one hell of a man She said, don't get it if you won't get back I gonna ask you what you do with that I know he's smiling, but he looking down I, They think I'm crazy, but I think they boring Remember the days that I couldn't afford it So I got some dollars, I had to go flaunt it No wonder I lost it, but I kept on seeking it I kept on calling, so now when I'm eating I'm no longer starving, I shoot like I'm hardened But pass it like starting Think got money like Wall Street, but loving like Gandhi. Ayy, <laughs> you can keep your head on great, I'm chillin'. I ain't hop up in the rave here. I say, made a play on a building. I can play with your feelings, throw a hundred in your face. Everything says this is ten to five to a fifty, but I ain't a magician. But you saw it on the net. Now I'm talking my positions like the video was hitting the quad car switch and made a thousand off a play. Watch your Facebook, be it's like they say I'm different. I fuck with some chains. That's a percent, it's a regular day. That's in the hate me some regular shit. Spitting that knowledge from back in the day. I know I'm making fit some type of way. Skimming my money, get out of my way. Lately you see that I'm done with the gangs Fit that my mad and I broke out the chains They say I'm different, I fought with some chains That's a percent, it's a regular day That's in that hate me some regular shit Spitting that knowledge from back in the day I know I make a fit some type of way Give me my money, get out of my way Lately you see that I'm done with the gangs
things Picked up my man and I broke all the chains 60 for growth, 40 for slow Step in the mold, heavy rest by the fire I think they go, higher rim, higher So I'm buying slow, I don't like Oh, if he is below four, got me beyond Cause it didn't taste gross, I bought into Disney Cause Frozen was dope, it's really that simple I've done this before, hey, I kept it simple so they thought it stupid I'd rather do that cause nothing feel more clueless They wasting their time trying to decide while I do it But do what you do, and my talking is fluent You talking is stupid, I'm teaching some game but your attitude true with they judging like Judy, they rate me like booties, they trading like movies, but paying to do it. <laughs> Stay up in your lane, I'm trying, I'll kill her. Don't make me get your case, my name ain't shit. Like, I got better shit for change. Watch it change to a man, you ain't gotta see my face, cause the plays made me. I ain't do this in a day, but I wasn't that patient. Started with a long turn, hit a play, I take. Every time I bet it out, confident the market take it. Then I play the spot on my own, then I started begging. <laughs> Come, baby. God bless ya. Hey man, it's a cop. <laughs> bitch, I'm popping every quarter, bitch, it's the season. Like I'm chewing on the mic, I know you heard we eating. I don't do the pretty lines, I trade a different reason. You don't like what's on my mind, you can mute your TV. They buying TAC, we buying TLT. I could go and change your life before 9 30. You should go and change your mind about ACB. You should do the right steps, it's the ABC. Hey, talking AKs and 22s. What? I'm talking AKs and 10 Qs. Hey, or the best play the slow move. Hey, want my whole life for damn school. <laughs> so sit your ass down, why you ass to quit the speed? You gon' get your ass clapped cause you confuse a one with me. When they think I'm bad down is when I'm rising to my feet. You saw me do this shit for free and still make a hundred G's. I'ma pull up in a Jeep, one that's made by Mercedes. I'ma buy it when it's cheap and sell it for a premium. Know that water kinda D, so I'm so mad while I think. You gon' probably need a team if you gon' run it up on me. Don't bring a crew to a cold fight better buy some more time hold it till there's no time meet me at the goal line dropping this like oh now the devil on my phone line but haters kiss the decline i'm buying contracts at the money they said that i'm stupid if you really think that you should short it you won't do it there's a fine line between affording and stupid anything i say please don't do it <laughs> i'm just trying to be professional living through recession bro kind of feel depressing huh you should watch the estimates company consensus is earn the season set it up i'm to hit yeah. consecutive. Bitch, I'm popping every quarter, bitch, it's earn the season. Like I'm chewing on the mic, I know you heard we eating. I don't do the pretty lines, I trade a different reason. You don't like what's on my mind, you can mute your TV. They buying TAC, we buying TLT. You could go and change your life before, not 30. Hey, you should go and change your mind about up, ACB. <laughs> you should do the right steps, it's the ABC. Right. Got a house up in the hills, but I don't really like LA. You know, I got a couple mil, but still it's 20 on a play. I break it down a hundred ways. I'm talking 50 different plays, assume a a lot of them go miss, but one go keep me in the game. Damn, now can you get up off my back? They say they making lots of money, but they talking now a gap. Never thought I'd make a million, now that's what I pay in tax. You ain't really gotta feel me, cause I know God got my back. Don't talk much, if it's a done deal. Plays I make are unreal, but the money's so real. You could hate and uphill, but the plays ain't conceal. I know you heard my mouth swear, you crackhead, you got no chill. <laughs> I'ma never get this up like the girls I went to church with. Maybe y'all retire when I hostile take Berkshire. Don't fuck with your retire, I got Mivga on my shirt, bitch. But I didn't need an image, put a thumbs up on the Forbes list. Ha. Check a knee and thank the man, then I get back to the trade Seeing houses in the evening, they go to LA Brought a tear to mama's eyes, we should see how far we came Now the prayer in the evening, ain't promised a day So there's money that I'm saving, and some money on the way Another day, another season, bitch I ain't afraid Cause the Lord can give a lie, and the Lord can take away I, yeah. On my job, feeling joke, caught a million for the whip Twenty dollars for the clothes, so I don't forget the days that I barely stay the flow Hope you picking up the game, I ain't saying this shit to glow Don't trust him, don't eat don't matter if you're dining with the king Cause your weapon take could kill you before you blink That's a pride and it's talking about the great Crazy but I'm diligent, contrary in the dissident I keep the peace, don't be naive, I'm moving like a militant I translated transitory, there was no equivalent Everything 
everything except the president is unprecedented. Damn, <laughs> you might get that in a minute. We're on a second listen, I son him, that's repetition. The father got all the knowledge and granted me with the wisdom. The truth is still how to swallow, ain't following what I'm spitting. Belly of the death, I be walking, chilling. Seeing what I see, yeah, caught in vision. Got a lot of skies, but they taught me lessons. We gon' take it far if that's what God's willing. Morning, I be eating. Money still my back, take a knee and thank the man Then I get back to the church, see houses in the evening They go to LA, by the tear to mama's eyes You should see how far we came, wait, wait Ain't got time to even finish hooks I'm busy making plays and just waiting to get the puts And caught up in what they talking Cause often they overlook the progress we making Often and focus on what we can You don't bring now, don't eat That's reality, that shit ain't up to me You can look but that don't mean you really see Price inflated, but still the land of the free. Fuck you, you ain't feeling it. Me and you, no semblance. Mama was an immigrant, and look at what we did with it. You look like you thinking quit, but nobody gon' give a shit. That's between the future, you. I hope that you could deal with it. Damn, <laughs> I should cool it for a minute. Cause I ain't really tripping. It's different to feel it, and I deal with the dealer different. And wholesaling for the difference. I got a tree planting trees, and it's feeding my children. Wait children in the morning, I be eating. Money still my back, take a knee and thank the man. Then I get back to the track, seeing houses in the evening. They go to LA, by the tear to mama's eyes. We should see how far we came. Another prayer in the evening. Ain't promised a day, so there's money that I'm saving. There's some money on the way. Another day, another season. Bitch, I ain't afraid, cause the Lord can give a lie and the Lord can take away. Yeah. I got me a strap, I played on both. I always watch candles, come get the smoke. Yeah, hey, this is the realest shit. Reminiscent, feel 0607, switching, then we dip. They said the Fed ahead of this, invest the sentiment with shit, but they only just seen a blip. They thought it'd be relieved real quick. You smart, you buy with fear resist. <laughs> I'm breaking it down and I'm kicking the facts. I love when they laugh when I say it'll crash. Just give me a minute, I'll take you to class. Like, 2014, saw oil's first dip. Cheap energy made China in the emerging markets rip, but oil you had to dip cause Russia's really on some shit They paved the way to take Ukraine and said they gonna annex it like whoa That was the first sanction Hundred dollar barrels down the 80 started tanking But as it got cheaper more producers started cranking Output kept raising lower futures kept on trading Same time China bubble raising We should've known it's trailing but nobody was caring How could that affect us? By the dips effective For money was the medicine And healing wrote the scriptures <laughs> But let's go back to Shanghai Let's talk them central bank guys The market's down 60 So they had to move swiftly Devalued in a day more than they have In a whole quarter century But nobody thought that's fishy <laughs> Okay, three years Currency, even weaker EM growth, even bleaker Where it goes, they don't know But need a leader LTR, not talking leaders Long-term rates is what I mean, or invert the curve and set the theater Once it turns, they'll be believers, they see near I saw from meters, now it's here, so now they hear it And I don't need it, <laughs> Y'all don't feel me Y'all lucky this my favorite <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Senses. Call me Lil Buffett, been a decade since I made a meal, y'all still haven't done it Money come with problems and I love the repercussions You an Instagram preneur, a nice piss, but don't do nothing Pull up dripping, I ain't got the time, I had to slide You too high, remind me of the market and no fire They like to creep a lot, I like to trade the spy And I know they don't believe in God, but feel him in my vibe Really rich, I pull up Millie in the parking lot They tell me that they listening, so why you think I talk a lot? I'm making money on the market, trading on phenomenas I beat the market every year, come meet me in the octagon I'm on my Babylon, you lucky I got cameras Get knowledge like I'm Santa Claus, got millionaires in Canada I'm buying gold in Africa, I weigh it, I don't count it up The fact they're in the tax enough, you asking me, I'ma laugh it up <laughs> mm, <I. clears throat> me, man Can you play your position? Uh, it's a call, baby 2020 Please, can you listen? Can you play your position? Have some faith in the vision while you all in your feelings. Everything is all chilling. I know we all gon' get it. It's a long, long mission. Can you wait? Can you listen? 
How that talk you gon' miss it? Get a chest, stop trippin'. Get a chest, stop trippin'. <laughs> uh, yeah. This could be a philosophy, a Descartes and the Socrates I know the truth and fallacies, I've been the abnormalities Since I was probably two or three, been getting chest since puberty The money not eluding me, but actually pursuing me You was nothing new to me, I seen the haters foolishly Try to take the cool for me, but I only can boost the peace Even under scrutiny, my politics is neutrally Common sense of humanly, coasts and communities I blow and spend it frugally, they sound like opportunity Like long-term health securities, the equities maturities What's happening historically, place me categorically The media is boring me, promising the sureties But that's not like some gold to me, but Have some faith in the vision while you all in your feelings. Everything is all chilling. I know we all go get it. It's a long, long mission. Can you wait? Can you listen? All that talk, you go miss it. Get a check. Stop tripping. Get a check. Stop tripping. <laughs> What's up, baby? Oh, what's up, baby? What's up, baby? I don't know. I don't know if you want. I don't know if you want. It's Friday, bro. It's Friday. Let's. I oh, was Friday, Chad. Uh, oh man, man, bro. It's Friday. I love Friday after hours, man. It's good. I feel good. I want to sleep. That's it. We made it through it. And I'm so glad it's a three day. I'm just gonna sleep, dog. I'm telling you. I had different plans. I thought I was gonna go. I thought I was gonna go hit up Vegas. I thought I was not gonna go to Vegas. Then go to Vegas. I thought this. I still got to do stuff with my niece and nephew tonight. But I'm still like, oh my gosh, bro. Yeah, I'm feeling kind of better. I don't. My mom made me some food yesterday though, so that was that was hype, bro. That was hype though. That's so. Uh, I'm, I'm chilling, but I'm just going to sleep, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to sleep, bro. Get out in the sun. I could do the sun, maybe. We could do that. Come to Charleston. I, I could not get, go to South Carolina right now, dude. I can't. I can't. You know what I'm saying? I can't hit up South Carolina, man. You know what I'm saying? What you mean, bro? Mm-hmm. I got a little one for you. Just a little one. You know that? Chad. Chad. Oh, that, that wasn't that wasn't supposed to be a voice crack. It wasn't supposed to be a voice crack, but it was. What's up, man? You feeling good? I hope you're feeling good. I got a little one. It's a very little philo. It's not. I I hate to disappoint you again. You know what I'm saying? I know. You know. Actually, I could even start with uh, you know, one of our one of our favorite ones. If you'd like, maybe maybe you need a refresh here. I know how we could start it. Hold on, just let me. I didn't think I didn't think about it till I said I'm gonna hit y'all with a mini philo, and I hate to disappoint you, but. Ooh. It's a beautiful day. Oh, man. That's, so that's how I get started, but that's a good one. Amen, bro. I love it. Seriously, it's funny, though, because I was even talking to my mom, and I even told my mom the thankful philo, you know, and I was just saying, and I hope for real, like, I don't know, like, even coming in a lot of everything, bro, like, I hope you are all thankful no matter what, and don't underestimate how important that really is. Okay, Chad? That's the that's the first thing I'm going to tell you. Like, for real. Because it goes a long, long way. Um, before you get hyped up, before you get hyped on anything, before you get sad. Like, I hope you know, like, fear for real, bro. Like, it, I, like be thankful. It's weird, bro. I'm telling, bro, I'm praying and I'm saying, thank you, God, that I got sick. Yes, I know. It's wild. It's wild. 
And I know everybody goes through different things, man, but for real, it's the attitude. It's an attitude you get to choose. I mean, it's, you know, that's all. It's, I mean, don't mean you're going to love everything and be all hyped up on it, but, like, for real, I'm just saying, like, I really hope you are thankful no matter what. I don't care how any trade ends up. I don't care where the market goes, up or down, like, seriously, because if you can't be thankful for all of it, then, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, for real, because life is trippy without it. Like, so that's... That's the first thing, but I just, I don't know. I'm about to hit y'all with some pro noia today. That's because I was talking with my mom, and my mom hit me with some pro noia. You know, you you guys remember pro noia? You know how there's like paranoia, and you worry, you know, like how people think you always worry that something bad is going to happen, you know, and you always worry. Like pro noia is like it's saying no matter what happens, I know it's going to work out in my favor. It's a, it's a, it's a disorder. Actually, it's a that's is literally a disorder. It's pro noia. So that's why it's like, oh man, the worst thing just happened, but it's gonna happen in my favor. It's it's crazy. It's wicked if you think about it. It's very very hard. Some it's crazy though, cause you can see some people be getting pro noia. It's like some it gets like real crazy sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But that's we were we were talking, and it sucks because I can't find the Bible verse of what she shared with me. I think it's because she read it. I think it's because it's in Arabic. I think she was reading the Bible in Arabic, and I think it's just, I don't know if she meant to say it how she said it, but she shared a verse with me. We were talking about being thankful. Like, we were talking about all, oh, we were talking about getting sick. She was, she's gotten sick. She's got to go through a lot of stuff, too, and we were just talking, and we were just like, it's just weird how just being thankful no matter what. We were talking about the world. She was saying how things are like this and that. And we we're just like it all. We we're all just like, yeah, well, God's in control. I'm just thankful to be here. I'm thankful no matter what. Like, I don't know. We were just we were talking. We were getting on some real thankful vibes no matter what it looks like, what it looks like is going to be anything. And like, oh, man, it's been a it's been a wild one. And she shared this verse with me and I asked her. She said it was in Habakkuk and I read it, but it was it didn't come out how she said it. And that's why I'm like, I'm going to find it for you. I'm going to try to find it. But she was telling me there was a story in the Bible. And she said in the story, she just said, no matter what, the famine, no matter what happened or this and that. She said, the Lord, the Lord forced me to climb the mountain and look over everything and dance. And I was like, what? And I, I said, I said, what's this verse? And I try to find it. And it didn't, I, she gave it to me, but it didn't read the same way at all. And I said, what? I don't know. Do you guys hear what I just said? It's something I, you know, and li- for real, I wish I could give it to you with the authority of, of what it deserves. But it's like, listen, I hope you are thankful and I hope you understand you stay on a good path and you work, you work good for a, for a good path. It said that you are, you will be forced to climb the mountain. And you will be forced and you will be dancing at the top of it. I don't think y'all feel me on that. So, Chad. I feel like I I feel like this. I know a lot. I feel like this is Chad worthy. Because you are going to go through a lot. It doesn't, I told you, you got a chance. It don't mean it's going to be a good year. But you may very well look back. And even in the middle of it now, we may all be, you are going to be forced to climb the mountain so you could dance on top of it. And it's dancing, saying praise, it's finger to the sky. You know what I'm saying? But for real, I just want you to think about it because that painted a whole different picture for me. That's why I'm like, I need to find this verse. I need to find this. I, I want more context to this. I want to read this like, and I'm like, I was mind blown because it's just a different way to look at things. And I, I don't know what you're going through, but you may very well realize you are being forced to climb the mountain. And then while things all around you, even in famine, my friend, and you're going to look at it and you're going, but hey, we will be on top of that mountain dancing. Singing praise, singing finger to the sky, baby. I don't know how this, it was looking like this, and it was tired, and this and that, but you go get to the top of the mountain. You will be forced to climb it, baby. So let's go. (laughs) 
Oh, that's your feel over Friday, man. That's it. You're going to be forced to climb the mountain so you can dance on top of it. Uh-huh. That's all it is. So I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready and I hope you have that love and peace and thankfulness in your heart for real. Is that it'll make the climb a little easier. And I don't know. There's something about being forced to climb the mountain. It's like, bro, even if you don't want to do good, you're going to end up doing good. Oh, stop playing with me. <laughs> Y'all don't force to climb the mountain. Do you understand? Oh, come on. So I love it. And you know, I'll leave it there for you. And maybe you could envision that this weekend. And I hope you realize that you got a lot of time too. Some more than others, but this life is a journey, my friends. And that's why, you know, think about honestly, like even think about the last three years. Think about all the times you were super happy and all the times you got super sad. Right. You thought you were you weren't going to make it. Then you thought it would never end. <laughs> and now guess what? You're here right now. That was all in three years and it felt like yesterday. But it was actually three years longer for some of you. That's just like being here. That's just me talking since like COVID and like all the things that like, come on. Come on. So this too shall pass. And just really think about that. Because no matter what you felt, whether you were happy, sad, got happy, got sad, got happy, got sad, you're here right now. And that was three years. So I don't know what to tell you. Everybody's going to have their moments. But that's why, man, let's keep going. We got a journey ahead of us. And we are still, we are still climbing the mountain. You will be forced to climb the mountain so you can dance on top of it, baby. Oh, God bless you, Lori. 35 months. See, look at that. 35 months. Imagine that's three years. <laughs> How crazy is that? 35 months right in front of you. Right in front of you. Every one of those ponies, that's 30, dude, that's 36 months, 35, that's three years. Wow. Wow. Oh, Chad, I hope you're ready for it, man. I hope you're ready for it. And it's good, man. We got, you got each other in here. Let's go. You got God above all else. But we got to keep going, man. And that's it. We're going we gonna to see how it plays out. But even then, I, I feel like you're going to get forced to climb the man. Look at that. 30 months, 31, 35. Dude, look at that. So I'm telling you, bro, imagine what's happened in three years. And then it's all to be right here, right now. And you still got to deal with whatever you got to deal with. But it's not the same worry you had a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. And it's not the same thing you're happy about one year ago, two years ago, three. Stop playing with me. So you feel me, Chad? So it'll be beautiful. And let's keep going. And I hope you stick to it and understand the power of the long term and little by little. And you see, you have time to refine and get better. You got time to climb the mountains. So again, some you never know. You should live like you don't got time. But still, now little by little goes a long way, my friends. But Chad, that is your philo. I hope you take that one to the bank, but that's it. That's it. That's it. That's the feel. That's your little mini feel for Friday, baby. That's your little mini feel for Friday. Aggressive patience. Amen. 10% baby. Oh. I hope they feel me. 10% man. Let's go. Let's go. I so high, bro. That's so wild now. Even 
after even just saying three years and then just looking at all the three years right there. That's insane, actually. That's insane. That's insane. That's why I hope you feel isn't it weird. It felt like yesterday. And how come you're not happy or sad about the same things? And then you still now you're still and you're still in the same spot looking ahead. You're not in the same spot per se, but you're still like looking ahead, though. But then already three years has gone by. Like what? Oh, come on. I don't want to act all high and mighty because tomorrow I might fall down on my face. So I thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. Thank you for joy. Thank you for pain. It's a beautiful day. Eh, 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 eh. Oh, seven left. I know. Double that. Double it. Double it, and we'll get to 2030. So let's go, man. Let's go. Let's make the most of it, and that's why, man. You've already seen enough. You've been through enough to know. Let's keep climbing. Let's keep working. Little by little, you make some mistakes along the way, a couple of successes too, but let's go. We still, we still going. Life still keep moving. The world keep turning, and you still here, so I guess it's for a reason, baby. Oh, man. And month one is just that. I hope they feel you, bro. Amen. Still climbing. Oh, Chad. That that being said, how you living? How you living? We got new. We got asked to worry. What's up, baby? On Friday, good good evening, afternoon. Uh huh. Uh, ten percent the whole time. Ten, please, ten percent the whole time. That's it. Ten percent the whole time. That's all we need. That's all we need, baby. That's all we need. So tell me this, Jared. What you got for the weekend? What's your plan? What's the plan for the weekend? Huh? What you got? What are you doing on the second week of the year? The second, the second weekend of the year. Mm -mm. About my brother-in-law to get married at the marriage court place. There you go. Tell him happy wedding from the cult. Happy wedding in union. Working on a new building. Let's go, baby. Congrats again. LA Fit Expo. Nada. And it filled playoff. Girlfriend's B-Day, give her a hug, and then give her a long-term. Say, here you go. I bought you one share of Redfin for your birthday. She'd be like, it's six bucks. I say, so not, then just give it time. And then tell her the time, Philo. No kidding. <laughs> Traveling to Bali. Oh, wow. Be careful out there. And just actually have fun. I don't know why I said be careful. I'm just scared of everything. Working the soil, planting seeds with the little one. Let's go. God and answer Prepare for Mexico trip and first we oh yeah, it's a lot of people about to go back to school, huh? You at winter break? Oh man, my birthday on Monday. Let's go. Hard. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. I won't be here on Monday, so happy birthday today, my friend. And let's go. Another year of the long term. Working, studying, better in myself. Let's go, baby. Amen. Amen. I've not watched Avatar yet. Nah. Chest and biceps today. Man, I'm sad. I want to. I want to, bro. I really, really want to. I really, really, really want to work. I, I, if you want to be my long term, you got to save 10%. It's the minimum, so it's easy. The long term never ends. What was your birthday? Happy birthday, lateral. <laughs> Amen. I know I'm, I'm sad I'm going to miss the Monday birthdays. But let's go, man. Another year for the long term. School already started, applying first job for the post-grad. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I watched Glass Onion. That one hit. I liked it a lot. Last semester of accounting, celebrating all weaker, Niners and fishing. <laughs> hey, man, man. Investing more in the long term. Bank earnings already came out in the morning, and you're getting more through next week. In Funtucky, looking for the next 10 to 15-year lease. Oh, wow, Funtucky, is that, the, is that where the fun club is? Is that what he said? What did they call it? The fun fun club? I forgot what he said. Working my Habibi accent. Coming Tuesday. Full Habibi Habibi. It's very simple. Very, very simple, man. I grew up listening to it every day. Every day. Mm-hmm. 
Tyler Roycky got my client approved, baby. Time to start looking for some house. Damn, already? Oh, you making moves, moves, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Amen. We're covering. You have robbed him. Whoa, auto I mean, You doing good, bro? I hope you're doing good. Oh, yeah, and pray for the chads out there. That was a loud horn. Oh, my bad. It's, I think it's... I just, maybe I'm not talking loud. Fantucky. Is it Fontana? I thought it's Kentucky. Is it... Is it what the hell is... Is Fontucky a real place? Got to finish the master's program. Wow. They switching it on. Oh, you going to get it, baby. And you're going to be running the Airbnb. I'll let it. Amen. 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 There you go. School and Airbnb. God bless you. Let's go, Jamar. Let's go. Fun bunch. That's what it is. The fun bunch. That's so weird. I would be. I wouldn't. I don't. If someone said, "Okay, yo, can you be a part of the fun bunch?" I say, "I'm. I gotta go." I wouldn't accept that at all. I say this sounds suspicious. Glass onions, good, bro. Bro. Telling you, Glass Onion, very good Netflix movie. I I loved it. Good cast, good movie, mysterious. Oh, it was great. I think I'm outside the age limit. I hope there's not an age limit. That'd be even weirder, too. They're like, you can only be 14 to join the fun bunch. Oh, hell no, dog. Hell nah. I get this Virginia banker out, out of the nah, dog. Oh, good day. Start, baby. Let's go. Hey, man, bro. That's hype, man. Congrats again, Najee. Can't go wrong with Edward Norton. I know, right? I think I just like Edward Norton a lot. I'm a big uh, Fight Club fan. No, that one's good on Netflix. The Glass Onion, that one. Don't watch the one with, oh, what was it? It's called like White Noise. Just save yourself the 30 minutes before you realize it's the stupidest movie ever. I couldn't do that one. That one, I tried to put it on. I was like, dude, this is the stupidest thing I've ever watched. It was like, I understand how, like, artsy it could be and all of that, but no. Oh, shit, that was loud. But, yeah, don't, nah. Mm -mm. The Recruit, that's another one. That's a good, I need to watch White Lotus. My sister's even been telling me to watch it. I haven't been on that. I'm one of my best friends. I grew up pre-approved. You're giving me, let's go, baby. Like, getting in the house is not, love it. Love it. No, the recruit is good, bro. The recruit's fire. I'm trying to think. There was another net good Netflix movie. If you haven't watched Wednesday, I liked it. Lending Tips hated it. My girlfriend liked it. And then that's it. Echoes. That was a good one. It took me a while to get to. Like, I watched that from time to time. It's too true. It's like you can't, like, watch it in the background. It's, like, real intense. I need to watch White Lotus. I just don't have... I like I only have the HBO on like one of my TVs because it's not my HBO Max. It's somebody else's. So like I don't want to watch it on the TV that it's on because I'm just trying to like lay down. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of sucks. And then I could get it on Amazon. But I'm like, why am I going to pay two ninety nine dollars an episode if I already have HBO Max? Everything everywhere. All I will know I have not. Coach changed my life. Let's go, man. Here's to another three. Another seven, baby. Toast. Oh, shit. Oh. Soft horn. Soft horn for you, Dr. Suede. The Shack Doc. Oh, I had. Is that on Netflix? What else? There's another good movie on Netflix I watched. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. 8.9 out of 10. Wow. And we got new Chad Rotten Tomatoes. There you go. Y'all basically saying Netflix earnings will be nah. Just because I just I've always been on that. I don't care. This is I've been on Netflix forever. Everyone's like, how do you watch it? It's awful. I because I just that's the only thing I low key watch. I got all the other ones, but like when it's all said and done, I just watch it. There's no correlation to the stock. That's just is it. And then have you ever seen television? Bruh, I watched the TV the other day. And it's just commercial after commercial. And it's just like, buy this now. Do you have this? 
Go eat some beets. Maybe you want beets. Act now. Buy copper fit. Do you need copper fit? Moment there. Hey, are you trying to sell your home? How you sell your home? Buy this now. You're short. You're ugly. Hair loss. Hair loss. Hair loss. Buy, 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 buy. Bye, bye, bye. Would you like to donate to animals that have been beaten? You awful human being. Look at these sad animals. Donate right now or you're awful. Awful, awful. Bye, 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 bye. Brought to you by Burger King. And then it goes back to the movie and then it does that again. It's crazy. It feels so surreal, bro. I don't know how to describe it. And then it just like, bro, it goes right back to the movie and then it go and then it just, bro, it just like cycles into like just buy, 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 buy. Then the my pillow guy shows up and then another my pillow guy and then all this other shit. Then like 17 Abbey Vi commercials. And I'm like, maybe I will. Maybe I should get some Rinvoc and some of this acne medication because they look happy now that they've got that. What buy, 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 buy. And I'm like, what the? It's crazy. It's actually crazy. Ads are nuts, dude. On TV, it's nuts. I've never really, like, what? Because you know why, right? Bro, you know my mom don't use any streaming service at all? Bro, to this day, you know what my mom's most... They, and the cable company hates her because they're trying to get her to switch over from it. Bro, she's still using the whole, like, DVR forward thing. She loves it. She's like, what? I just forward through the ads. She won't use Netflix. She won't use Amazon. She still have a cable box and the thing that gets skip ahead. And that's it. She be watching Shark Tank. She watch any other show on. And that's it. That's all she bro. And I'm like, dude, this is so we I was seeing watching TV with her. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. And then all the commercials. And then like, if you forget to skip it. They're just commercials after commercial. And it's nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not my job. I mute the ads. Makes me feel like I'm winning. I don't know. It's just I just I feel so surreal. And I'm like, man, no wonder we got to this point. And we're like, I can't believe the world is like this. Go watch the fucking cable television for 30 minutes. And it will all make sense. And on my bed. Oh, I thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. Yeah, mama ain't with it. Man, but yeah, hi. That's it. I don't know what I'm gonna do this weekend. I'm just sleeping. I think it sucks. I want to. Uh, I want to go to. Uh, I want to go to a rage room. My girlfriend b had this idea. I think she saw like a TikTok, and she said they had them in Switzerland. But she was like, "Can we go?" I was like, "If I feel better, but otherwise, I want to sleep." But it's like uh like, you could go into a room and just break a bunch of things. Like, you just, yeah, you just break shit. All day. Mm-hmm. Oh, one AirPod and the death trap of the car. I know exactly what you're talking about. I hate it. Mm -hmm. Different kind of rage. Yeah. Please record if you go. How much is it? I think it's like 20 bucks or like 40 bucks. And then you could just break whatever. Mm -mm. Come to Austin, girlfriend's B-Day. I'll give you the deets. Man, I'm telling y'all, I'm like, yo, guys, I'm sick. I was at the doctor's on Wednesday. I'm on antibiotics. And then y'all are like, yo, Josh, you trying to come to South Carolina, Austin, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Vegas, we could hit up Idaho and Ohio in the meantime, and maybe we'll end it with Miami. You know, you got a long weekend, man. You know, it's, that's crazy, bro. I wish, man. You guys caught me on a bad weekend. It's good, though. It's like it's a bad weekend, but now I'm like, hey, 
I get to go. I was supposed to go to Vegas. I was. I just now I can't. I just don't. I don't even want to anymore. I'm like fuck that. I got sick last time in Vegas too. But it's good. I'm allowed to go to Vegas now. Like I can't. Like my girlfriend, she'll let me go to Vegas now. She don't trip anymore. She's gotten over that. That's it. I just had to buy her a car. No I'm kidding. <laughs> but it was. Uh, but then I can't. Ex- like my mom is always gonna judge me, and my mom's gonna give me the speech. If I go to, so I can't be, I can't tell my mom I'm sick and then be like, yo, I'm going to Vegas. That would, she'd be like, what? She would, I, cause I can't even do that. I can't even do that. It's kind of dead here in Vegas. Man, I don't care. I just want the Italian food. I said, you went to Vegas the first time. It's like both exciting and sad at the same time. And you're like, how does, how do people live like this? Is this real? They do this every day. This is wild. Wow, you've never been to Vegas? Well, Danny, you let me know. You let me know. We'll get you. As Daniel, have you been to Vegas, Daniel? Mr. Garcia? If both Dannys have never been to Vegas, oh, I got to take y'all. Am I trying to go ice skating with you? I mean, honestly, I'm kind of used to these questions from you. If anybody ever asked me that, I just stare at them. I don't even think my girlfriend has asked me to go ice skating with her. Why would you think a Middle Eastern would be able to ice skate? That's you want to go. You want to go sled setting, sledding. I get sand sled. You know what I'm saying? You want to go? I can ride to a camel on the desert. I can't skate on ice. The hell you mean, bro? I've only watched like a quarter of a hockey game in my life. He said, "One day they'll hit." Yeah, one day. One day they will. Go ice skate in Coronado. I'll teach you to skate. I play hockey. I actually like hockey, though. That's cool, bro. Even my little nephew was was watching hockey. This guy loves any sort of sport. I'm going three years. You're the best man. Cheers from Middle East, Dubai. I'm Arab German. Habibi. Skodak, man. Happy Friday. You better enjoy it. The be on the list of people who've never been to Vegas. I would, I of course, every I think honestly, I would love to take all the Chads for their first Vegas trip. But then honestly, I don't think that's really responsible. Cause then you guys are gonna be like, Josh is insane. Uh, first of all, and then you're gonna be like, what? Like, hold on. That's it. All that risk management shit goes out the window. I mean, I still got a budget and all, but you're going to be, I remember the first Chad, when I saw the first Chad at Vegas, I I could just, I saw the look in his eyes. I'm pretty good at reading people. And I could just tell he was just mind blown. Like, that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll throw down like a $50 bet, lose it, throw down a $50 bet, lose it, double it up to 100 lose it, throw like 500 down, win it all back, and he would just be looking at me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. He, he was, I could just tell he was he was not expecting that. Like, he thought I was going to be like, put like $5 bets, like think about it for a second, take a step back, try to calculate. And I told him, I was like, it's gambling strategy, sir. I said there is some statistics behind it, but it's mainly chance. We don't have an edge. That's it, man. Mm-hmm. He was mad confused. And I'm like, here, come to this slot machine. I said, watch this. You just throw $100 in and just start t- hitting the button. He's like, what happens? What are the odds? I said, there ain't no fucking odds. Just hit it. Are you feeling lucky or not? How you feel today? This is all about how you felt today. This is okay. And then in like 30 seconds, it's all gone. And, he's, and then you just walk away and just start smiling. And he's like, what? He was so, I'm telling you, he was mad confused, bro. He was mad confused. That's why I was like, just hit it, bro. Let's go. And see, I was like, I came here. You, I set my gambling budget. I'm here to gamble. I said, you're going you're gonna to be mad confused. So, what the? Do. Oh, Bible verse. So be careful how you live. It just showed up on don't my phone. Live like fools, but like reading me the Bible. Amen. Amen. So be careful how you live. As I'm talking about just fucking going ham in Vegas. But I just, I know basic gambling strategy, but I'm over it now. I just don't. I say I just go with whatever cash I have, and then that's it. Crap, I do like craps a lot. That's why I met him. I met him at the craps table. 
He was like, this is not Josh. No, he knew it was me. No, he definitely knew it was Josh, but I know he was like, oh, he's, you know, what this, I forgot that Chad bro is the funniest thing ever, right? I was like getting bored of gambling and we were playing blackjack. I was with the Chad, my other homie, and this is in Vegas. And then <laughs> I'm like, okay, last hand, last hand of blackjack. I throw a hundred dollars, right? And then guess what happens? I get, it's like, I think it was nines. I got another nine and then I, I, I had to split it. The dealer was showing like a, the dealer was showing a five or something. I was like, oh yeah. And then I get nines and I, I, I only had, I put a hundred dollars. I said, this is my last hand. And then it's split nines. I'm like, okay, shit. I pull out another hundred. I still had cash. I was like, okay, split it. Right. Then guess what happens? Another nine. And then I split this Chad, the same Chad watched me do five splits or it was like four splits. It was like a four, five, 100, my last hundred dollar hand turned into the same card over and over. I had to split it four times. And he was just like, what the hell? And then we won it, baby. And then I won. I was like, oh yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Time to go to bed. Got to go home now. So yeah, but you'll be, so I don't know. I, I would love to take, I, would, I think I would show you a great Vegas time, but I don't know if I would, I feel like, you would all just, you would just judge me hardcore. You'd be confused. You'd be like, this isn't Josh. This can't be Josh. There's no way this is Josh. This is no way this is Josh. How did he just, I've seen this guy trade less with the option and then wait, why did he, how come it's not? But then you'll kind of realize it's kind of the same way with trading though in a weird way. So then I don't know, but I would hate to, and then, then you, and then you're going to, and then if you do really good, you're going to be like, I love this. I'm never trading stocks again. Bro. Like what? Do you stop loss in poker? Nah. I go to the casino to lose everything or make a bag. That's it. Until I get bored. Or if I get bored and it's just like boring, I just leave. That's it. Even at even at the Aria, bro. Like, that's all. Like, I straight up just, nah, I don't care. I love it. Even at the, I played at the Aria poker house thingy. And then that's it. The, the other table, bro. I, I, I was getting tired of getting laughed at by these nerds, bro. <laughs> there's like fucking there's all these nerds with like fifty thousand dollars and i'm over here i'm thinking i'm balling and i'm like wait a minute hold up and then they're all like me laughing at me and then they're all like using their little terminology bro i was like what the f uh, and then i was like this i didn't like i got i got sick of it i lost like five six hundred bucks i cleaned out one guy on the last hand i was like oh, i'm over this bro and then i went to the other table like a couple hours later and then I just, I had fun there. And then I, that was good though. I like the smaller tables, but mm -hmm. yeah, no, poker is boring. Like boring as shit. Like for someone with as much ADD as I have, like, come on, bro. We trade in stocks. I'm like going over news. We're going over plays, financial decisions, all of this. And even then we got time to rant. Imagine sitting at a poker table and these dudes just like with cards and you just sit there. And then you're just sitting there in this room and everything around you. This is in Vegas. Like everyone's partying. Like you, there's, it seems so lively. And then you're just sitting at this table, like packed in with a bunch of other people. And you're just like. You wear sunglasses? Nah, I don't wear shit. I just look at them wide eyed. And that's it. And I tell you, I just tell everybody what I have. They don't know what to do. I'm telling you, I tell, I just tell them. I'm like, I have a really good hand. I'm like, I don't have a good hand. And the guy didn't believe me, bro. I had a full house. I got a full house and he thought, and then he had, I think he had uh, three of a kind and he was feeling hype, bro. It was off the, uh, right off the flop. I got it. I got a full house right off the flop. And then he was like, oh, I got, he was like, uh-huh. And he was like, I'm gonna go off. I said, I was like, I have a really good hand, sir. And he, he didn't, <laughs> and then he put down $1,800. I said, call. <laughs> and I, I won. I was like, come on, bro. I said, I told you. And then he left. I felt bad. I really did feel bad. I felt, I genuinely felt bad. But he had a Louis Vuitton backpack on, so I didn't feel that bad. You know what I'm saying? That's why I was like, it's fire. fair enough. Fair enough, man. But, you know, he had a Rolex and a Louis Vuitton backpack. I could get it, but I cleaned him out that day. And I was like, damn it, bro. I told you. I said, don't do it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Capping. But yeah, I haven't done that in a while, but it's just so much.
poker is fun. They assume you're a crazy Asian gambler when I play super conservative. So many calls when I three raise. I don't even know what three raise means. Does that mean you raised on like, I don't get any of the terminology, bro. I don't get any of it. Mm hmm. Possible drug. No, he was a cool guy, bro. He was a really, really cool guy. He was a really, really nice guy. I felt I felt bad. He even like left disappointed. Like I could tell it was like, and I was like, I didn't even want to do this, bro. I was going to give it to him back, but I said, fuck that. That's not how this works. Ain't nobody offered me my money back ever. So I'm like, damn it, the human condition. I said, I tried to warn you. Like, no, I don't think, look at you. You're like, he's either a drug dealer or a soccer player. What kind of spectrum is that, sir? Kind of, what do you mean? He couldn't have been a doctor, a lawyer. He could. What if he worked at Louis Vuitton? What if he worked in, like, you were like, nah, either drug dealer or soccer. That's crazy. Because if I ever met a drug dealer, I wouldn't be like, yeah, he plays soccer. And then if I ever met a soccer player, I wouldn't be like, yeah, he probably sells drugs. <laughs> Hold on, bro. That's a, that's a wild jump, man. That's a wild jump. Mm-hmm. Kind of dudes that buy Vuitton. Nah, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce you to my my Asian friends. Then you're going to be, there's a lot of Asian drug dealers and soccer players then, too. Now I'm going to take you to my Middle Eastern friends. You'll be like, I did not know these Middle Eastern sold that many drugs. I knew they played soccer, but hold on. <laughs> When Tulum, I want to go to Tulum, but it's a far flight, bro. I can't even believe I went the first time. That's it, but I do. I want to go back to Tulum. That was hype. Vegas, we got Memorial Day off. When Wait, was that May? When's Memorial Day? I don't know when the day of Memorial is. You know, I'm always thankful, but, you know. The Burberry shirt. I don't think I've worn it since that video, so I don't know. Maybe. I might be able to sneak it over to you. I just know one day my girlfriend will be like, where's the shirt? I'll be like, oh, hola, Bob. Mm -mm. And also every drug dealer. Okay, you're sticking to this. You're sticking to this. Okay. <laughs> Alex is fully convinced, bro. I can feel like a movie and then Alex gets involved. And then Alex finally meets like a drug dealer. And then he's so confused they don't have Louis Vuitton. And he's like, wait a minute. And then his his earth is shattered as he tries to figure it out. He's like, you're a narc. Doesn't make sense. Where's your Louis Vuitton backpack? It's three times the original guy's bet. Oh. So it's not betting three times? So a three bet is if you go three. So if I bet a hundred and you do three and then the next person does 300, that's a three bet. So then if I do not, if I do, if I do 3000, is that a 10? Is that a 10 bet? Hmm. Is it? So if I bet 10, is, it, is there a 10 bet? I've figured out what limping means. So there's a three bet. What's the other term? I don't know. There's another term they said and like the little like. They were like cover or option. And then I was like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> I do know how to play chess, but I'm really bad at it. I'm only good at the uh, at the computer version. If you tell me what the players can do. Going to a future concert. You go, King. You go. Yeah, I think like straddle. They said a bunch of sh a bunch of different things at the table, and I was I didn't know half of it. And then they were like, then they just then they just look at you with their beady eyes, and they just all stare at you, waiting. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, sure, bet. Yeah, whatever. I'm like, nah. And then they hate me because every time they're like, do you want to run it twice? I'm like, hell no, a more fati. <laughs> and he, I, on one of them, the guy, he's like, you want to run it twice? And I said, hell no, I don't want to run it twice. 
Why would I run it twice? Let the card. I said, I'm like, let's go. I love fate. You have no idea. We get one time, one card, bro. What are you saying? That bloom. I didn't know they do that. Why would anybody want to run it twice? I'm not about that life at all. At all. But yeah, I need to, I need to go. I kind of want to play poker now. And most people play on strats, run it multiple times, smooth out variants. <laughs> that sounds like way too much homework for me, bro. Hell nah. Amor Fati. That's my strategy. Fate is a game of cards. <laughs> I do get the strategy, but no, nah, I always do it. Break even. You should do a poker tourney. We did it that one time. Remember we played? It was good. The Madoff documentary. Yeah, I'm almost done with it. I got some. It's a good one. It's a good one. You'll find out the NASDAQ was built off of fraud, man. What? A more dos fatis? Nah, it's too much. What is that? Sound like a beer. Yo, man, you got any dos fatis? Gotta no, we got no. This is nah, no sir. It's Tulum in Mexico. Nah, it's in Iraq, actually. And then all the Kardashians head out there. They love it, bro. It's crazy. It's like kind of like it's in between Iraq and Dubai. I don't even know if they're close to each other, but yeah. Nah, yeah, Tulum is in Mexico. <laughs> Be dope if it was in Iraq, you know. We need to bring some more culture to the Middle East. That'd be nice. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Really appreciate you do start reading the Bible and you share why. Hey man, that's good, bro. May you be blessed. May your may may your pursuit of wisdom reward you, my friend, and I know it will. Amen. I think I can still I don't have Bavada. We use that cheap one. Mm. You want to go live in Mexico with me for a while? Nope, that one's not going to hit either. I did have a weird thought, though, yesterday, bro. I Honestly, I like that song. I was like, if I ever am, if I'm ever going to take a break streaming, bro, like, low-key, I'm either going to go to the Middle East or Africa and just, like, build a school and shit for kids. That's what I was thinking of yesterday. I was like, for real, they know life, bro, like, serious. I like, they, you know, just a real solid appreciation for life. Keep it simple. Like, that's what I would do. I was thinking about that the other day. So if I'm going to live anywhere where it's going to mess up my streaming ability, bro, we going to Africa or we going to Egypt, and I'm we going to build schools for some kids, man, and we going to build and get them some nice things, bro. And, like, that's, that's serious. I was thinking about that. Yeah, I kept listening to that song, bro. I don't want to act all high and mighty. I was like, bro, like seriously, just like, just, I don't know. Get away from all of the modern shit and all of the social media and all of the wealth and luxury we have here and just do something with it, you know? And just be able to be around just like, I don't know, and just help people for real and do it in a in a different way where just life isn't isn't all about what we got here and just different. No, I was like, that's that's what I would do, though. That's what I'd do if I lived anywhere. Syrian refugees. We do stuff like that, too, but, I mean, I would I would want to go there. I usually have done it here with stuff, but I would definitely want to uh, to at least, like, that's what I was thinking. If I'm, almost, if I'm not going to stream, then that's, that's what I would probably do. Like, uh, you know, and it'd be nice, I think. I think it would just be... It'd be good for the world, but then good for me as well, too. And it's just, I don't know. You get to appreciate life and you get to see people who appreciate life even without having nowhere near what we are all blessed with on a daily basis. Don't you think? Oh, the sun, where is it? I don't want to act all high and mighty. Because tomorrow I may fall down on my face. So I thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. Thank you for joy. Thank you for pain. 
It's a beautiful day. Eh, 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 eh. Yes, I love it, bro. Donate to Atlantic Humanitarian. They help Syrian refugees get a couple mission trips. Oh, wow. Nice. That's what I do, man. I'd either go. I'd either go Africa or I'd either go to Egypt, my home country or Africa. That's it. Like Sudan. It's a beautiful day. Eh, eh, eh. I love it, bro. I love it. I've listened to like all there's like remixes of it, bro. I'm telling you, this is what I was doing, dude. I was taking a shower. I was taking a dump. Everything I did, I would just I would just be hitting this because I only had that little Instagram video. There's like a remix, like I was just like Beautiful day. Eh, 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 eh. That's it bro, I've just been running it I love it, it makes me like Amen That's it, all day All day Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even see that game. All day, bro. I see it. It's definitely my song of the year. You know? It just, it just kept going crazy, bro. It just kept going. That's it. That's, a, that's. I love it. I, I, I never. I love it, bro. I love it. Ben, you going to Kenya? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, Benny's all around the globe, bro. I think he's lapping it now this time. I think <laughs> I think he's doing the second lap. It's the second lap around. I love it, bro. I don't know what version. I don't care. I'll listen to any version of it. That's all I've been doing. I've just, I can't, I, bro, I've even around my house. I'm like, thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. And that's it. My girl was like, what song is that? And I was like, here, let me show you. Let me show you. It's good though, bro. I, I vibe with it. Heavy. Heavy. Mad heavy, you know? <sighs> but on that note, Chad, we made it. Week number two. On the way to week number three. I hope you enjoy your weekend. I hope you are peaceful. But it's time we get going. Okay? So I love you. Let's get ready. Get refreshed. Long weekend. Yeah, I know. Please relax. And even then, just remember, bro. Thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. Thank you for joy. Thank you for pain. It's a beautiful day. Eh, eh. That's it, man. You know, just run it. <laughs> but I love you. I'll see you guys soon. And don't forget why we're here. And why we thankful. No matter what. And we're going to be thankful through the rest of the year. And why we go climb the mountain even if we want to or not. And why that faith, hope, and love ain't ever going out of style, baby. Why? Finger to this sky, baby. To God be the glory and to the grace of God alone. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'll see you on Tuesday, even Monday night, bro. I'll get you with the watch list. It's going to be a good week, man. So let's go. You better shake it all off this week. Embrace it. Control the ego. We're going to get it, baby. And let's keep going, okay? But I love you, Chad. All right? Enjoy your weekend, please. Please. Oh, for the skull. There you go. Hit him right at the end, bro. Hey, man, that was a loud horn. Let's go. God bless you, Midwest. God bless you, Midwest. Hey, man, that's what I'm talking about. Nah, man, God bless you, bro. Let's go. Let's go. It's going to be a good year. We're going to climb the mountain. We're going to be forced to climb it so we could dance on top of it. Stop playing with me. But, Chad, for real, I love y'all. Thank you guys again for another awesome week, and I hope you're ready, man. We got 50 more to go. Hey, man. Hey, man. All right, man. I'm out. Peace. Uh, oh, no jazz music. I don't, is it Elmo? I don't know. Okay, I gotta go. <sighs> well, what about Elmo? I'll tell you a story. Before before I get going, I would tell you, it, uh, 
there's a story of Elmo. I remember when I met Elmo, I went down to the street. I was going down, down, down the boulevard, and guess what? I'd made a turn on the boulevard, and then there was a different street. It was a street, a street of Sesame. And I saw him, and then I saw Elmo in a nice Corvette. I said, where's your Hummer? <laughs> okay, you were wonderful, wonderful weekday. You had day, weekend. Goodbye. <laughs> Corvette, Corvette.